It starts with this A person that you miss Mind draws a blank I wanna go back, back to the early days When life was an escape Now I just wait for better days I lost myself in your reality I lost myself
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Dream League Season 23 Qualifiers. It's me, Math Magician, and Ace. And uh, Ace, you said it before, but we got a lot of friends in this lobby. Yeah, a lot of familiar faces coming. This is going to be interesting. I can't really cheer for anyone. <laughs> I can. I'm going to be cheering for FCR all day, every day. Of course, we'll still be the unbiased casters that we're supposed to be because you know, like, we still got some people to celebrate on the other side. Heroic. I have loved watching this team. First off, KJ, fantastic pause five. Maybe the best in SA. It's hard to tell with uh, how many we've gotten in the region for so long here, but... I love this match. team's work. He is. He's really good. And their work ethic on this team is fantastic. I'll still remember uh, during, I think it was Bet Boom, where this team was like, hey, I know it's a, a mirror matchup, but like we want to play on US East. We want to get ready because we're going to be forced to play on US East later. So like we want to get that practice in now. I think they have a fantastic mindset. And of course, K1 being on this team really rounds out like the kind of superstar energy we need from Heroic. Yeah, like the top eight, the top ATI carry, I think he adds a lot mm. to this team. So they got a lot of potential. They keep improving. This is a this is a team the Brazilians can always uh, have some faith in it. <laughs> we got Midas Club coming as well. Another team that we got a lot of familiar faces. <laughs> yeah, old old school players as well, like for DR. So they they really need to show up here today to be able to beat Heroic. It's kind of funny you say, like, this is a team that uh, Brazilians can all celebrate, and then we have, like, a, a damn near all-Brazilian team on Midas mode. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. I think I know who they're going to be rooting for, but yeah, no, something for everybody here in this uh, heroic lineup. I will say, though, for K1, something that should be a little interesting is that Wraith King is actually seeing a little bit more of a pick rate here uh, from last patch, and I think he got shadow buffed here uh, in the last patch because the Maelstrom proc rate went down. And Wraith King, hey, that Radiance build is looking better and better each day. Oh, yeah, he's back. Just <laughs> take, take all these Maelstrom procs and Wraith King is back. I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure K1 is saying this. He's always trying <laughs> right. to make a case, make up a case to bring yeah. back the Wraith King. So I think that's just how that's it, it is. This is it. Anytime you have a hero spammer and you see something like as many skills can be, you'll be like, dude. My hero's broken now. Especially when you have a patch that was like almost all nerfs. I think like I don't think there was any positive change in the patch uh for heroes except for like Weaver and Void Spirit, I think, got both buffs. But it's uh yeah, no, I, I think if you're K1, you're definitely looking to bring back your uh Wraith King if you if you're feeling comfy on it. They even buffed it in the patch previous with uh technically just the the Radiance Mist chance. Uh, and the Talisman missed chance, so it, it's it's definitely a good hero, I think, to pick up. And if you're able to do Armlet Radiance on Life Stealer, surely you can do Armlet Radiance on Wraith King too. On oh, Alchemist too. Ah, that, I don't know how many people go Armlet, but yeah, you, <laughs> you do go Radiance. <laughs> you don't buy the Armlet on this hero. Uh, Not anymore, unless you're getting Dazzle instead of... Right. I yeah. mean, the, the, you don't get Dazzle on the Alchemist. I, think, I was thinking of Life Stealer. Uh, I see, I see. Yeah, no, I mean, the, the builds have been similar uh, kind of around, like, the Radiance Builders. Alchemist is the only one who kind of skips the armlet for some reason, just because, you know, he, he has a massive amount of gold and more farm equals, you know, better win. But I, I still think that uh, for K1, I think we might see either a Respect Ban out for his Wraith King, or we're just going to see, like, them not touch him at all and be like, look, the guy's got a ton of heroes in pool. Uh, both the Sven and the Life Stealer are also prepared by him, so... The hero pool for K1 is looking mighty fine uh, in the current meta. I think he still has to show us what he can do with the Wraith King now. Mm. I, I don't, I'm not sure if it's worth it a ban for now. I think mm. you let him pick it once and you see That's what fair. he can do. If it's yeah. unplayable because he's too good with the hero, then you ban the hero on the next game. That makes sense. It looks like uh, for his previous match, he played the Weaver, which I, I, again, so they did get buffed in the previous match, and the uh, Faceless Void. So we'll see. Standard. Uh, hmm? Standard. Standard, yeah. I think the, the Weaver's the only one that's like a little bit out there, yeah. but he had played that before too. He actually played it uh, versus OG, it looks like, in just straight up Dream League uh, 22. So uh, I do believe that this Weaver hero is. Still good. I think the only thing we don't like, the only reason we don't see him as much anymore is because Grimstroke stopped getting picked as a pause five. So, like, 
it used to be really nice to pick that duo into the brewmaster it was uh during ti but now it's like do you really have a huge reason to pick weaver or grim together Mm, I don't think don't so. Have I don't to think pick any... them together. I mean, we've got buffed <laughs> slightly. That's true. That's it. Slightly That's the reason. Five damage, you know. Uh -huh. I mean, even the Timbersog, Timbersog got nerfed, so I don't think you really have to like super counter him with that. I wonder if that lane would be good versus like still Centaur and Mars. I don't know. I think so. Hmm. I think you can still play the Mars. You can still play the Centaur. They provide a lot. That this is not just the lane. Oh, okay. You think it's even a uh, a good game combo together? Make it work. Yeah, yeah, of course. I, I think at that point you're worrying about uh, what your carry matchups are, because uh, if you're a Weaver, you're probably playing against like you know Life Stealers, Fen, Gyro, Luna. Uh, I don't think you can play against Faces Void. I think the Faces Void one is probably unplayable, but the other ones. I think it's good to have something that can kite away from the Sven during his BKB timing with his uh, with his God Strength. Kind of same with the Rage from Life Sealer. I think it's harder versus Gyro and Luna, but versus those first two, maybe that is a, a sleeper pick versus those carries. Yeah, you, you want to have something that can catch them during BKB, or at least yeah. you can try to uh, control them and prevent them from using the BKB. You get a lot of burst damage, a lot of stuns then they don't have the chance to click BKB or Rage at all. Oh, well, yeah, no, I mean, uh, the, the kite ability, it's always, it's always a good one. Do you believe in this whole uh, carry Pudge thing getting picked up since the, the Pudge win rate went up? We saw, I think, Arteezy playing it, right? Oh, I saw, I saw, I saw him doing Arteezy a little bit. Pudge. We saw it in uh, NA, actually, I believe, yeah. uh, Apex Genesis, they were the ones to pick it up. So I don't know. I don't think the hero got like, he didn't get <laughs> buffed at all, right? It's just like the pick rate went up. So people are able to practice it more. That's it. I think so. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, the hero was not dead. We still saw some pudges against Naga here and there. Mm, but yeah, not that's true. as much as we used to, to see. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the hero is still around. It's true. Always hiding. You never know whenever you're going to get hit by a, a phantom carry pudge. Uh, it looks like... Midas yeah, mode do in. know that the game, yeah, they do actually know there is a game to be played. They are joining the lobby now. So guys, uh, promise it is not the casters holding up the lobby this time. Uh, we will get a game to you very shortly. Uh, I think the flip will be happening soon as well. We're just waiting on the, the plus one here from Heroic, but I, I or not Heroic, uh, from Midas mode. From I am Midas. still very, very excited to see this team play as well. We talked a little about it with the other carries, but Costabile. As a carry yeah. we've seen from the Keith star size, I believe all three of these cores on Midas Club uh, have played with Keith stars at some point together. And then Hiko and Weege, they're the only two that float around other SA teams beforehand. I loved how they built this team with Weege. He's a very good player as well, strong, plus five in SA, has a lot of MMR. Ooh. As a plus five, that's impressive. I mean, I think KJ is still the the biggest one in SA, oh. but we just is around there. And Hiko is always a, a player there. I always thought that he just needed the the correct mix to shine because we saw a lot of good performances for him with some teams he was on in the past. But I think with these guys, a lot of experienced players. A lot of TI players caliber here mm. as well. So I think they have a lot to improve with this squad. So I really hope they stick together. Mm. Yeah, no, I mean, it's always nice to see that sort of thing where we have a lot of stacks. Even after DPC, where stacks are still staying together, still trying to get better together, even through all these quals. Um, I, I like I like that continual improvement. It's very easy, especially since I've watched so much NA Dota. Like these stacks change all the time. You see people who are like, oh, you know, we didn't get it to one qualifier. That's rough. All right, let's kick two or three of these guys and try to run it back. So I like teams that actually stick together. Don't do that and uh, try to improve as a team before uh, we start going into this uh, uh, kind of remake with each team. I mean, this is not DPC anymore. This is one million dollars tournaments every month. So you really need to keep working with your team. You can't be switching teams every time you lose a qualifier. So 
really need to improve to get consistent during the year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. And the, the practice does make perfect. Figuring out how each other likes to play together. Uh, figuring out, you know, maybe even what lane combos you guys like to do. That sort of small stuff is sometimes what can separate you from a team that made it through open qualifiers and a team uh, that got invited to the closed qualifiers. And speaking of which, uh, this Midas Club team, they did make it through open qualifier one. I have to tell you, anytime you have a team that makes it through open qual one, you cannot just dismiss them as an open qual team. Open qual two, yeah, maybe maybe if they were better, they would have made it through qual one, whatever it is. But uh, Midas Club did already take down one of our invited teams. They took down a Katsuki. Uh, to make it into this upper bracket semifinals. And uh, Heroic, they were invited. They took down Infinity, who made it through open calls too. Uh, but it wasn't, like, neither side here had, I'd say, crazy decisive games. You know, we've seen some 20-minute games in the other close qualifiers uh, top two, but, like, we have a 50-minute, 40-minute game, 50-minute, 40-minute game for both teams. So it's not yeah. like either of them are, like, super stopping the competition right now. Yeah, the, the region got in strong with time. It's mm. just always these late games, game, these late games. We saw some EGs in the past winning, like stomping the enemies. But this is not how it goes right now. No. We, we, I, I'm checking the other games. Actually, Beast Coast had one stomp against a Starbucks, a 24 minutes game. But this That's is it. not uh. the, the, the common thing here. No, and, and honestly, I was looking around because I was like, ah, you know, what other teams actually played in these open quals uh, one and two? And like, I think this is one of the first times I've seen that like Chris Luck hasn't actually made it through uh, to a qualifier, uh, to a close qualifier like this. This has got to be one of the first times I've seen him out of it, which is crazy. Uh, there's so many other teams like Lelatroni is, isn't actually in it, neither slot in or Excel. Like I'm looking across with these names of people that didn't actually make it through and it's like wild to me. Universitario didn't make it through. Yo Leo Sound, DCMC, like there's so many great names in this region now that I think are quite talented and it almost feels like we need eight more slots to see all of them play. Yeah. It's just weird to not see the to not see see Smile playing on this tournament. A disqualifier. Yeah, no. I mean, he's a He's a staple. I'm, I'm surprised and almost confused to not see him, but instead, we still get to see the players we want to see, man. We love Midas Club. We love Divine Llama. We'll see with Midas Club versus Heroic who will take this game number one. As again, neither team really uh, was overpowering in their first series, so I'm expecting this one to be pretty close for us. Yeah, I hope this is a close series. Three games, you know, a lot of crazy team fights. I'm not here to see a stomp. Ten seconds. All we ever want are those good close games. Never want to stomp. Five seconds remaining. Do they ban out the lone druid, by the way? This is an FCR stack. Not yet. Not yet. Radiant team the hero is definitely not like. Too. I didn't know if that hero is like good enough to first pick still. We we actually saw like I think it was you and I where we we kept calling these like lone druid picks from a. Uh, from FCR stacks and they like it would constantly get banned out it wasn't looking like he was playing it in pubs we had no idea why and like the first time it wasn't banned they actually didn't pick it on first pick and they picked it on like 24 they like destroyed the game and then after that everybody went back to banning it <laughs> so like only one stack was like I wonder if he'd actually pick it or not but I will say though yeah. in this patch like you have these heroes like Timbersaw, Centaur, DK, Mars can you even shove in a lone druid? I don't know, you can try, you can at least pretend the hero is not that good, so you don't first pick it, so the enemy is not banning it, and then you pick it later if the game is good Ooh. enough for the loan. Yeah, I mean, so I think it's actually more viable if you are second pick like Midas Club was, but all you do is ban out all four of the good offlaters, and then you're like, oh no, they're all gone, I have to pick Lone Druid, he's the only one left. Left me with no choice. Mm hmm. But they, oh, they actually banned out the Omni Knight versus uh, FCA. That is crazy. I knew that the Primal Beast was, people are still picking that one up, even though he did get nerfed uh, on his W. Uh, it's very hard to CS with that W spell now on level one, but they still took it out. Even the Doom. Now we're starting to target things that do well versus the Timbersaw. 
Uh, and with that change to Timber Chain, I don't think that the Timber is really an immortal hero anymore. Yeah, he's not, but he's still a good hero. I actually mm -hmm. can't believe he's he was picked for respect. Uh, I can't believe mm. Midas Club didn't ban it. Uh, we'll see. I mean, uh, for Midas Club, there's still uh, the Chen has been overlooked. I don't know if that was on purpose, but the Gyrocopter, I think, is a fantastic hero. We've actually seen it beat the Timbers on lane, right? Yeah, there's a lot of magic damage. Some it has a stun, which is valuable against the Timber. So they would need more. That's true. In case that's like a Gyro 5. Ooh, okay. So I think at this point we're committing to the Gyro carry, which is weird to say so early, but I don't think you want to Gyro 5. I think Gyro is usually a better 4 position, but I suppose they could still flex it out to 5 if they wanted to. You can definitely play, play as a five against the gyro. I mean, I mean, against the timber. Oh, yeah, just, yeah maybe the timber changes. You need a hero that. as a uh, for the carry position that has at least a slow. Yeah, I agree with that. Here you go, Chen. Okay, heroic. This is kind back. of insane. That hero, I don't. Again, like I said, I don't think this hero got super nerfed. Like, yeah, you you tuned some numbers down. I don't think those were the reasons really that Chen was feeling like such a great hero. So I. I have to imagine this hero is still good, still sending creeps into other lanes, still winning lanes, you know, from the depths. So I think that this is still a fantastic opener. I mean, can you ask for anything more in the current patch? Um, get Mirana yourself, maybe the enemy. Oh, <laughs> that's true. Mirana uh, is that next one. Mirana kind of heralded as the best pause for right now. Hoodwink is also up there, though. That's... Still a great pick. Yeah, two diff very different heroes and what they provide. Mm -hmm. At least this one provides people, like... Has a yeah. lot of damage. Mm -hmm. That's kind of my thing too. Like uh, the Marana, you need to set up. It's very hard to catch people yourself, but the Hoodwin can do it all by herself. Yeah. Five seconds remaining. Marana can use to kite on the late game when the mm. carries do not have dust. <laughs> yeah. But so right now, you see, you probably see a lane here with Timber yeah. and the Hoodwing. You know, there is a lot of damage. So you need to be careful with your carry pick. Yeah. They took out the Undying themselves. I actually maybe would have wanted that on Midas Club, but of course, you don't want to give that over their KJ. I don't know what they want to do. Maybe just pick up their offlaner here. Oh no, they go for the Tiny. Mm -hmm. Could be a mid laner. Uh, there's still some, like, tiny punishers in the pool. Heroic could 18 pick a mid laner that forces this tiny into the pause 4 roll. I think you still have to leave that open then for yourself. Or even the offlane roll. I'm not sure. 4DR is playing very, very well with this tiny. I doubt mm. they're just not picking it for him. Okay. So they're Zero, going to be... He, he can play against almost anything. Of course, there's some matchups that he starts from behind, but he comes back when he gets his blink dagger, mm. and it's a lot of magic damage against the timber. You can ju you just move the techies and the tiny and get a kill very easily. Yeah, of course uh, they can use it as a flex pick, but it's very strong for my desk club if they get if they pick it as a mid laner. I wonder, does this does it that mean that it's a Techies five? I think it's Techies four and Gyro five. That's what I'm getting so far. But they can pick an, an offlane hero here and decide it later. Hmm. Yeah, I, I do think they were missing that for sure offlane. I think we've seen some tiny in the three roll, but as you said, they're probably not going to switch that over. I can definitely see FCR playing time if you need it, but now I have the mm. Batch Rider. This is more confusion because you can play Batch Rider as a 5, as a 3, as a 4. There's a lot of flex heroes there. Uh huh. I. Goodness. Okay. In the current draft, I kind of want him to be a 5 because he does well versus the Timber. I wouldn't mind yeah. him being a 4. He also does well versus the Chen. But I, I think overall, maybe pause four would be better because currently you do have the hoodwink in the lane with the timber, so it's going to be slightly harder 
to get on top of these guys with that bushwhack in the mix. But you, okay, so you're to decide if you if you want to play like Timber against the Techies five or against the Batch Rider five, which one is the best one? Because if you if you have a gyro carry, this hero can farm, then he goes jungle, and you have this tiny mm. that can go mid or off lane. So now that you see the lash, your ADR is gonna decide. Oh, I wanna play tiny against lash? It's okay. He's gonna start ahead, but I, I get I get I come back later. Or if they have a better hero for ADR, then you put the tiny off lane. He's very good with both techies and bat rider. So you're still happy if you're a Midas club and you have the last pick. So it's it's good for them the state of the draft right now. Unless they can't address this lash pick. Well, that's the thing. This is a much more standard setup for heroic. Like. I think Lushrak might also be the mid laner that you want right now, overall. Even versus the Tiny, I think this is a really nice pick for them. Uh, everything just, like, Heroic seems to get everything that they want. The way that they play the game seems normal. You're just standing behind your Timber, let your Timber and Lush run down towers. You can fit any carry into this draft. It does not matter what you do. There isn't some specific lane combo with Chen. You don't need something to help out with what the Timbersaw is doing. You have stuns on Hoodwink Lash. I don't think there's anything that you're actually trying to fill here. Maybe Sven is just the best one available, but I don't know. What cannot go wrong here for them is that if they pick a hero for the carry roll that gets stomped on the lane, mm, they are okay. never able to close the game because the enemy carry beats the Lash. So... That's the only thing they need to be careful here because we see a lot of these lashes just being carry of the game because mm. it, it's just a so fast paced hero that your carry doesn't have the time to join the game with a lot of items. So something that's fast paced but plays versus the gyrocopter. I like this the life sealer bend then. Anything that gets in the face of the gyrocopter seems good. I would typically say you're looking for a Factor then, but I think the lane stomping would be too bad. You get worked in the lanes. Yeah, you, your, your, your care here for Midas Club can't lose the lane. Yeah. Uh, what is... You don't help that... him. Because is it just Luna? There's a Luna. I mean, you, you can't beat the Luna on the lane if you move, if you rotate with the Chen and the Grips. That means you have to be paying attention on what Chen is doing. Mm -hmm. That adds more pressure in your game plan. Oh, so classic K1. I bet them carry. K1. They didn't go for the Raytheon. I think that would have been a funny pick. They they did not end up doing what we thought. Abba's still very good. Another hero that's going to go for a Radiance pretty early. And you can't play Zark against the Abaddon because Ooh. there's a Lash there. There's a Timber there. A lot of AoE damage. Yeah. No, I mean, I love Slark versus the ABBA. Uh, I would agree, though. Like, Timber, already you don't want to. Like, that lane is actually abysmal. Plus, you add in the last rack in the game. Pure damage. You can't even BKB to get out of it, so... Ah, that, that does not leave many heroes left in the pool uh, that take out an ABBA. They don't, they don't have a lot of time. I think you have to last... Or, uh... Razor. You need to come up with a good hero. Razor is okay, I think, because it's, it's okay. an early BKB hero. I think every hero is just okay. I don't know if there's a great pick. Okay, yeah, all right. Uh, that's going to be my pick. I don't think there's anything else you can do that's, like, okay. Uh, I do like that they're sticking the, the gyrocopter on carry. I think that's a fantastic move. FCR is going to be playing the Razor off lane. I like this move. I like this move a lot. Yeah, now you have like two win conditions here on Midas Club. This Razor can get big. Gyro, he has to get big here. Mm -hmm. There's no other way. He can no. get like Satanic later to offset the lack of a BKB on a fight. If you mm -hmm. have to press BKB early, then you, you have to be able to fight the Lash later. So you, need, you might need Satanic. And they have this Tiny as well. There's a lot of win conditions here on Midas yeah. Club. That makes it a, a, a greedy pick in a sense because mm. all the lanes they have to go well. For heroic, it's hard to not have the lanes because you have the lash against the tiny matchup on your side. Yeah. 
you have Abaddon and Chan. It usually is a good lane if you have the Chan. That's what they can do with this Dekis Razor lane. Mm -hmm. It's tricky. And on the other side, you have Hoodwing Timber, just a strong lane. They need to work on Midas Club to not lose the lane. They need to work. They need to work hard. I think that Heroic has this draft on lock. I think something that we didn't even talk about yet is that ABBA, you have a Dispel versus the Batrider Lasso. This is a hero that just will not get lassoed ever in this game. If you try to lasso one of his friends, he'll just save them with his shield. I mean, this was a really nice setup. And even though I do like the fact that we are switching the Gyro to carry, I think Gyro is a hero in this patch that can itemize for every situation. Even in this game, you're able to go for your crit stick, your Agonim Scepter. As you said, Satanic is fantastic in this game. Scotty, very good in this one too. Maybe even a Disperser to help you kite away from this timing of the Abaddon. But uh, even with all that, even with the BKB also in the mix, I think that you have to be six slotted on this gyro in order to answer every single hero in this game because your heroes on your side don't. I don't think Tiny's going to be bursting this Chen. I think he's maybe able to burst the... Hoodwink, but then he's going to get jumped on. And your Batrider can't save you. Your Razor needs BKB to get on in. Like, I don't see this draft really working for Midas Club. Yeah, only problem here is, like, you need to jump the Lash when he goes for a tower, but that mm -hmm. means the, uh, you need to go on the Abaddon uh, at the same time because yep. you can't lasso the, the Lash with the Abaddon close. You can mm -hmm. try to toss the Lash... Oh, the back line, okay. stun everyone yeah. with the techies. You have a lot of ways to defend towers on this Midas Club draft. I don't think it's a one-sided match if you are considering the drafts. I think it's like 60 to 40 on Heroic side. I, I would agree towards that, yeah. I think in my in my bias towards the left track hero, I might give it slightly more, but I think 60-40 is fair. Lanes mean a lot. And I know you already harped on this too, but like lanes mean so much in this one. Uh, if the Razor can get off the ground quickly, Yasha BKB, it's going to be hard. It actually will be hard to kill them because uh, BKB does so much for your game in this one. No more damage from the Timber Saw. No more damage from the Lesh Rack. So I do... I do like everything that they have for the Razor hero. I just don't know how they enable him so hard. Yeah, I don't think they can destroy this Razor on the lane with Chen Abaddon. Mm. It's like Penitence kind of huge. a passive lane. If you get early boots on the Razor, I think you can always outrun them, mm. them on the lane. You just need to make sure you get some CS. I don't know if they plan on taking the Razor Tower, bringing the Lash and the Chen. Yeah. Totally that good. would be terrible for FCR. <laughs> yeah. I think so, yeah. a silver lining as well is that like the BKB BKB timings are so huge on Midas Club. Uh Leshrak won't do any damage to you. Timberstone won't do any damage to you. You can get on top of the Chen creeps consistently. Like that will work for them. Like getting there will be slightly difficult, I think. How's this lane go? I mean I feel like Leshrak completely dominates a tiny in this lane. I don't see him destroying the tiny, but I, I see him with an advantage here. That's for sure. Thankfully, nobody got first blood, so it's not a Leshrac coming out with bottle. <laughs> I think yeah. the last time we saw this matchup, it was with like a huge first blood on the Leshrac, which just made it like really hard for them to play. But uh, really well done from Analog actually getting that range creep versus the tiny. That's sometimes like where the lane starts to go horribly for uh, for either side. So well done. Oh my goodness. You, the Lightning actually got three of those CS, and he was able to harass each time with it. Incredibly well done from Analog. Skill matters a lot on this lane. You see Analog making slightly better decisions on the first wave. Mm -hmm. He Look pushed at him, it yeah. onto oh the Tiny so he can just right-click him a lot. He doesn't have <gasps> no. bottle yet, so... Oh my goodness. No! What happened? Oh, that's rough. The, uh, the Avalanche missed the range creep, he didn't get the CS on it. He also uh, got a deny on one of the melee creeps there as the left track. I mean, that's maybe one of the best lanes I've ever seen from a left track level one. I was I was watching the career kill. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm a fiend My for the bad. mid lane. 
Every time that I do my own cast on, on my channel, I'm like constantly just staring at the mid lane for a while. It's just so fascinating to me. Since I don't play the lane, I think it's really hard. Yeah, but you're you're right. Hmm. I'm interested in the skill, but actually, what, what is Gustable? What did he go for? Gustable? Oh, so he... Interesting. Interesting, interesting. I think this is a really hard lane to go for that uh, second level flat cannon. And I dragged my observer away as they killed SDR. That's my bad, guys. My bad. Uh, they do get the kill on KJ. That's going to do wonders for the SDR game because that shouldn't happen. I mean, Razor Techies is a very strong lane. I think Chen was just overconfident in there. Mm. He should just wait for level 3, I think. Mm, okay. But as long as Abaddon is farming, it's okay, but he's... He's got seven yeah. CS, not the best at the moment. Five denies. Razor has on SCR. five denies, yeah. Holy moly. Wow, that's right, well done from FCR. That's my boy, but damn. That's great. You can't underestimate this player. Mm-mm. Oh, but yeah, the, what I wanted to say about the gyro is that uh oftentimes that level one and flat cannon uh will just get your range creeps denied. So the fact that he went for it instead of like the the rockets or even I mean, yeah, just the rocket is kind of insane to me versus the timber lane. Yeah, it always depends on the read you have for the lane. If you if you feel like you need to prevent them from getting early CS, mm. so just push them away with the flag. Sometimes you don't get some CS yourself doing that, but it's okay if that that's part of your plan. Mm, that's true. God's plan. God's plan. I do like the uh, the two points in the rocket barrage. Though. That. Definitely was going to happen no matter what, and it's absolutely the right play. There's just so much damage at level 2 with that spike, and you love getting on top of the Timber Saw and just melting that out. And what the Flat Cannon will now enable is that you can clear these waves, and then you can uh, just get the free Rocket Barrage on someone. And FCR. Man, yeah, putting in a lot of work in this lane on top, holy. Yeah, he's doing a lot with the Razor. He doesn't have boots yet, I think, right? No. Yeah, yeah he's just yet. going for the Falcon Blade, which is a, a really good build, right? I mean gonna work yeah he's finishing the the boots first which is coming on the career mm. he needs to be able to outrun them then uh, you're yeah. never dying on this lane true absolutely true and he has the uh the wraith band as well for that extra physical a lot of what the abba and the chen will do early on is all physical damage so nice pickup for him as well okay jay has to be careful razor has boots mm. They have three on the techies, that's a lot of damage. Oh yeah. A lot of these uh like very offensive pause fours, pause fives, uh have like huge level three power spikes. Uh gyro when we saw it support, again another one with the two points in your rocket barrage. Techies with two points in the bomb. Very good. Yeah, he oh. was being trying to spam some spells on Abaddon but K1 knows what to do. Oh, does he have the last hit with the flat cannon? Oh my goodness, now they're actually gonna turn back on Weege. I think the Llama will burn to it, but it does mean that Gyro gets that solo XP, gets himself another point in the flat cannon, could choose to go all in on it if he wants. Uh, but honestly, Weege, you got tip for it. I think that was uh, the best way that could have ended for you. You still get the kill and your Gyro gets all the XP. Opa. Abaddon? Ooh, he didn't die there. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I mean, yes. they're still trying for it. They will yet. KJ with the double. Let's go, Chen. But uh, FCR does get the return there. Still Bro, this fantastic is double play from KJ. Harpies. Oh, no. The damage no, was not the double real harpies. there. My captain, my captain. That's <laughs> illegal. How did it hey, do that? I feel like uh, typically we see people like block all the camps, but you can still go find others. It looks like bot side. It's still just a lot of gaming down here. Schofield and Weege will trade lives, but uh, this time it does look like Divine Llama is the one to pick up the solo XP. Bot rune, we had a DD spawn, so Tiny's actually going to pick that one up for himself. Uh, well needed, because I don't think this lane is going... Oh no, he's... Okay, he's doing much better than I thought. He's only 200 gold down. He's up in CS. What? Tiny is a very strong laner. Depending I, on your know-how on the matchup, you can do just fine. 
He had to come back from that first wave as well. You said that 4DR was owning on Tiny. I didn't think you meant this hard. This is really well done from him. This is his hero at the moment. Interesting. I don't know why it did not got banned. Uh, it's a really nice flex pick as well. I know that you're telling me that it's not going to anyone else, but you can at least pretend it's a pause four. Uh, as they did with the gyrocopter already, right? Had that flex going. Looks like they're going to trade out for wisdom runes, but so far this gyrocopter, overall first pick, overall Ooh, first net worth. Oh, in danger. Chain away. The residual burn is not enough. He will live for now, but... Oh, Kasabale. Really want to drone forward for more. Yeah, that was actually so went... close. He went for another point in that rocket barrage. Good for him. Good for him on gyrocopter. Is and he going for a... Uh, the message. <laughs> I think so. He wants war. That's the message he's sending. Yeah. It's just Davai Lama. Now he knows that he can't just dive the gyro every time. Mm. Until he ah, gets six. <laughs> that's a fair point. It's like skilling your ulti so you can be a little bit more protected on other heroes. That's a... Uh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, if he had the one point at least on the missile, right. he could get a kill on the on the chamber. Yeah. It's really hard though. Like, uh, because of a point you don't even want to be that offensive sometimes. Analog. Gonna get gone on here. They do have the toss backwards, but it looks like he's still living all the way through on analog. They don't oh have the God. damage. They'll just get the kill. They even bring in the timber saw to help out. It still won't be enough though. The analog will live. Tiny, unfortunately, dropping. Yeah, nice TP. He didn't do a lot of damage on the tiny there, but every every point of damage there. Would definitely oh. help secure the kill. Okay, I had no idea. First off, congratulations, Chen. You are very farmed. Bad news, you're almost as farmed as your timber saw. It's been a rough lane for Divine Llama. I mean, he got a double kill. That's true, dude. He's rolling in cash. They're trying again. It's the poor beating the poor as 40R roams down to the bot lane and kills the timber saw once again. They don't have the damage to take down the tower, but Castable is pretty happy about this one. He's got four points in the rocket barrage and all the mana to sustain it here with the Falcon Blade. Yeah, that way he can get involved if he wants to. He can like TP mid as Timber did on the other rotation just to add some damage. That's gonna help him farming mm -hmm. as well. Has the Falcon Blade, so he can just spam the rocket barrage Ooh. if he wants to. They have a really he deep ward here. Arcane ring. Oh, God. Oh, he got Arcane Ring on Gyrocopter. Interesting. Well, up here, Hiko does die. They had a really deep ward to find stacks, but uh, Midas Club oh, expertly don't stack. Easy game. <laughs> so, they are really trying to take the Razor Tower. That was my concern. Mm, yeah. At least Razor got something out of the lane. Oh, yeah. No, well, well farmed right now for FCR. He's doing a good job, but tower was toast. Never stood a chance. I wonder if they will try to go and take the Abaddon Tower. Mm. I mean, uh, it's weird sometimes. Are you doing it just for the revenge, or is it actually the right move to make on the map right now? I feel like your uh, Jaro is farming up pretty well here. Dodging around on Weege, Sharpshooter, it does connect. But Divine Llama actually gonna walk into the bombs of the Gyrocopter, but they don't commit, <laughs> and in fact, they don't commit for the kill on Batrider either. Yeah, your huh. Weege is alive. He's trying to get six on this batch. That's so important mm. to them. Yeah. The dagger on the tiny. Still 1k to get the item. Yeah, they need this yeah. dagger to make some moves. If they are planning on getting the Abaddon Tower, you need your dagger because Heroic, they will defend it, so you know that you have to fight them. FCR making some stacks for herself up here. They do have stacks for the last track they just made. No wards on it from Radiant right now. They may have actually beaten out the Batrider so he couldn't see it. Analog's about to propel his net worth once again. And uh, as you said, Leshrac kind of turns into a carry at some point. What's his build? Surely he's got the four Diabolic Edict points. Yeah. Him and Divide Lama are going to farm this very fast. Yeah. 
And he's getting the Ulti Scepter. That's good to help kiting the Razor. Mm, yeah. Surviving when you get jumped. You have the Chen heal, so if you get jumped, you can just use yourself, get healed by the Chen. And be ready to fight. Uh, and uh, these 15 minute, 20 minute timings. Yeah, right? Like, that's gonna be running down your towers in about five minutes. So, for Midas Club, what are you doing to prevent yourself from this? What a heroic uh, doing to all in for it as well. You need I mean, to bring everyone, even the gyro. Yeah. He's gonna be farmed up. He's gonna have a lot of magic to offer. Divine Llama is farming up these ancient camps for himself. He's actually climbing back up on the net worth slightly, but still. Uh, very hard for him right now. We just have a lot of farmed people in this game, to be honest. Yeah. Even the supports it's at 2k too. net worth at this point of the game is pretty good. Bro, look at this Chan. So farmed, man. I mean, this is the power of that hero. It's just gonna continue. He's like, okay, look, it's if you're not ancients. taking these camps, I'm taking these camps, all right? You had 12 minutes to buy, they're mine now. Isn't that a greedy move? He's level oh, yes. eight, he got the stack. They he knows, like, Timber is clicking on his Chen's items and he's going, wait a second, how much gold do you have? How much CS have you been taking? I'm sitting here still trying to finish my first item, what are you doing? Oh, Costable, nice read. Huge, huge read. Literally got as much as he could in this bot lane before keeping out at the very last second. They'll still lose their tower, but again, such as life versus an Ava, Leshrac, and a Chen. So they're taking the tower and they are keeping mid to defend their own tower. Mm. When and is somehow, Midas playing? With all of this happening, with all the sacks they've taken on Heroic, with all the towers they've taken, still Gyrocopter is top net worth in the game. He's been just farming. Got only one kill on the lane, but mm. he's farming a lot. This hero farm is so fast. Oh, yeah. Avalanche they have the damage. takes down some of the creeps, sending him back in. And well, with the Yule's Dagger, he'll make some time, but can they still get the kill? They will. Hiko drops the bombs right on top of the last rack, and they'll get themselves a very, very wealthy kill on that last rack. This is why you go four points on Rocket Barrage. You just bring your mm -hmm. gyro, you cure their lash. You're very, very strong. Mm -hmm. Working on your Aghanims, and you got your first tower out yeah. of this. He, Gyro can win this game, man. Gyro can build whatever items he needs to inevitably take this one. Weege once again dodging the sharpshooter, getting the bump away. Divine Llama will still keep on the chase here. He thinks he can still get it, trying to dodge around the timber lasso. chain, but now he's turning back around. Oh no, the acorn will take him out. But now with the link up from Razor, FCR will get some all needed damage. A huge heal from the Chen, actually protecting him for now, giving him some extra armor as well with the boys surrounding him. The army will keep chasing Come after back, FCR, right? but yeah, no, I know. I feel like he can still take this. Yeah, he has no info to getting there. Yeah, but that was Abaddon uh, being involved on a fight, and they just pop haste run and run. They forced the uh, Chen OT as well. Hmm. Yeah. Which is another reason this hero is fantastic. I mean, you get 20 heal per second plus the 150 at base. I mean, this is insane spell. Insane spell. Ooh, look at that! Oh, what a nice net worth grab! There. Holy moly! <laughs> It's all over. Nice Thankfully, numbers. I mean, the lead is, is it's literally less than a thousand, right? So it's just continually going back and forth between, like, who has the 500 net worth lead. Incredibly close game. I only see this gyro farming a lot, man. Uncontested. Mm. He, he can just, build to win this game. He growing. Look. Once he gets out of Scepter, like, what does he go next? I feel like... Satanic is a pretty fine option. Maybe even just like a Morbid Mask into SNY could also be good. Maybe Beaky Bee could be good. Like he needs like almost all of those items. It's just in what order he gets them. Weege going down. Not a lot of kills in this game also. It has been a lot of farming. Yeah, that's only because Midas Club, they're not making crazy movements, forcing nah. anything. They've been just farming. If it's your free kill and the tinies there with the techies, they go. But they're not going for the top tower, they're not going for the bottom tower. Actually, Gyro is hitting there. 
He forced the glyph. Yeah. And they're going into Roshan right now, so they're going to take Roche. Gyro is maybe going to take this tower if they know what's going on. They still have yet to use, lose their mid-tier 1, by the way, even though they have been playing against this Leshrac and Chant. But this is got the Roshan cover goes down from very the fast. Tiny. Or oh. is invisible but on the bottom lane, waiting for it. Nenswerf on heroic side, but they don't know. Roche. This is, is gonna happening. be a big spike. Yeah. This is gonna be really well done. Give it over to Analog. Let's track probably the best hero to have an Aegis on, like in the game. So probably losing mid now. Yeah, that will make sure that he doesn't die again on the next tiny jump. But yeah. Lash is still not that strong. Still needs at least one more item. He needs to finish he his right Kaya. He only got gold <laughs> after the Yo Scepter. I see, okay. So he's got this uh, little bit of protection mag oh, the from magic with the cloak. And then, yeah, I don't know. We've we just been just like sidestepping these sharpshooters. I I think only one has hit. Schofield's uh, he's a he's starting to feel it maybe a bit. He's got the moves. He's Got the Nikes. Are we sponsored by a shoe brand yet for, for Dream League? That could be the next one. Just watch a, a bunch of like compilations of sidesteps from stuns. Be nice. So Ad Abaddon is going to have his Manta style. I think that's the power spike on Heroic. But Midas Club, they're not afraid. They're smoking. Mm. They want to find an angle. The dagger on the on the bat rider, but they decided to not go because there's the use scepter and that on analog that could buy some time. <laughs> you could just get it on out of there. I mean, the, the map hasn't really closed up much for this being an Aegis with a Chen and a Leshrac. Uh, I think the the Timber Song being down and out after this lane stage really put uh, a wrench in the plan from Heroic on how they wanted to play this map, but he's coming back now. He has the Blink Dagger, as you mentioned. He's going for the Eternal Shroud. Eternal Shroud is still a fantastic item on this hero, and a lot of what the Gyro does is going to be nullified once uh, he gets that finish. So it's going to be up to the physical damage that they have afterwards on the Razor, on the Gyro, uh, that'll be carrying this next fight. So they're pushing this tower without the Abaddon. Hmm. Interesting. Midas Club, are they allowing it to happen? Hmm. It seems so. Actually, Heroic, they gave up on the idea. I... I feel like so much more could be happening on this map right now with these heroes. Another pretty good TP out from the 10. They do see that the star is going down, no fortification, so he's just gonna take the wave. So they really don't want to fight against this Aegis Lash. They want to hit their timings on Midas Club. They want to get BKB on Gyro. <gasps> no! Analog was TPing out and the Wisdom Room auto popped, canceling his TP. Which means whatever move they were making has now been nullified uh, thanks to that rune timer. What can you do? What can you do? Still, so, uh, Gyro looks like he did commit for the BKB. You literally take away two sources of damage the Leshrac and the Timber Saw. So it looks like uh, he's about 2,000 gold, 2,400 gold away from it. Yeah, question now is, does he have enough damage to kill heroes during BKB? That's fair. That's really it's fair. It's always the question with the gyro. Especially I mean, against the, the Lash and Timber. Yeah. Lash, thankfully, doesn't have lifesteal up now, so if you're not crazy hurt. Timber Saw is going to have the Eternal Shroud. That one might not happen at all. We haven't even talked about the ABBA, who, by the way, has Echo Manta. He's been farming quite well himself. I don't think no, he no. deserves this tower. And the, with the rune, finally a sharpshooter will connect, but the Seas of Serenity will not be enough to save that Bat Rider. Yeah, they're, they are really avoiding fights before Gyro BKB. Roik is taking advantage of this. Mm-hmm. This is exactly what their lineup needs to do. I'm uh, proud of them for making the decision, getting those uh, early moves out. A lot of pressure's on Kasabale now. Looking like 600 gold away from the BKB now. Once he gets this, as you said, they may not have enough damage to fight. 
The items are going to carry the game on Gyrocopter, but he's got to get there. We've got to see a Daedalus, I think. We probably need to see a Scotty. Maybe we need to see again a disperser or something to kind of cut yourself away from the spikes. But yeah, maybe just you do go just go the whole way. Panic, Daedalus, and you hope the crates are there. No. And you hope you are tiny scales as well, with the Kanda. Now they're going for a play. That's true. AKB I mean, is coming is, on Gyro. This is not a no damage hero. Tiny will wreck you. Even some strong carries in the game will die. Look at this. Have it in. Haven't committed the toss just yet. They'll do it afterwards. A nice ulti in from the Chen, but they're still keeping going with the Gyrocopter. Kostabale putting in the work versus this. Timbersaw gets the kill in on Analog, but yeah, you gotta get away now. It was his first BKB. They're gonna toss up K1. He already used his ulti. They could commit for more. Hiko's providing some vision on the backside. They're chasing through with SCR now. Clipped with the Phantom oh, though. Hit. He didn't get the plasma lens, but yo, the toss from downtown. Tiny finds K1 with the BKB from FCR now. What a timing from Midas. They'll get the kill on KJ as well. FCR, run him down, baby. It's a double for the Razor and a team wipe for Midas Club. Yeah, that was some Patrick Mahomes stars on there with 4DR. And Razor mm -hmm. was not even there at the start. He was just, so just farming top. And they connected the quick smoke, getting Heroic out of guard on their triangle. They just waited for the Aegis to run out. They waited for the BKB on the gyro. And they knew they had their timing. They knew they were they were stronger. Mm-hmm. No, this is a huge look with the BKB. I sure hope they don't throw it away now. He's got a rocket down. They're TPing people in. Okay, yeah. Protect this gyro, man. Any death for the gyrocopter could spell disaster because now he's worth a ton of gold. It'll get somebody back into this game on heroic, but also like he needs to stay on the map and keep farming to these next items. The job is not done yet. Not done yet. Still tier one top tower. They can try to use that ops they have on the top lane mm. to yeah. go for another fight. Ooh. Yeah. That was a 4,000 net worth lead. It looks like so much, but it's only like a 4k net. <laughs> so. The form distribution in this game is very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nobody's really uh, like climbing up and over. Gyro is still farmed. Like, he's got, yeah, Diffusal now on K1. Yeah, I think Analog just... He got caught out of guard there because he didn't have the mm -hmm. Bloodstone to fight. If he had the life still uh, okay. there, he would be able to survive. He'll have the cover from the Abaddon. And they will be Aegis able to fight too. back. Yeah. Next Aegis. I believe we'll still spawn top here. Could be up in about 20 seconds. And this is exactly where you want to play if you are Midas Club. You want to take down this tower. Maybe get some deep rewards in towards the TB spots. But Roshan could actually spawn bottom magically if it's a very short spawn. I doubt let's it. See. You won't matter, but let's see. <laughs> right? Like, it's gonna go top. No matter what, it's gonna head up there. Long, long respawn. Okay. Uh, minute 30. You see? Uh, it's a middle of the road respawn. Yeah, kinda. You see how uh, Costable is approaching this game? He's going straight for the Satanic on the Gyro, not even mm. finishing the Daedalus, so he knows he has to survive on the fight. Mm. Goodbye time for the Razor to dish damage, for your Tiny yeah. to dish damage, because you it's know nice you're not theory. the only carry there. I wonder if he goes in for like a uh, an SNY at some point then. Because he is trying to just live. They're going on to the 10 first. They don't have a chance about the ult. He could buy it back and pop it still. They feel like it's worth it, but Schofield is the one that's going in. Right now, they'll get the kill. Castable not gonna go for anybody else. They actually TP'd out on the ABBA. Two gone instantly, and as you said, man, this tiny, he'll, he'll take you down. Yeah, it's not easy to hit Midas Club's towers if they're willing to defend. Yeah. Uh, the defense, it's, uh, it's weird. They still got the tower that they wanted, so it's not like it was all for naught. But they did end up getting some kills in return. Yeah, but what they are really accomplishing with this tower kill, it doesn't feel like they are winning or farming more a lot more on the map.
Looks like they're going to keep up on this top side. Keep control for Roshan, which if they look in here in about five seconds, they'll have it. So Pico, 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 let's go! We love supports who check Roshan. <laughs> Now they should just go. Right? Instantly. Uh, you're just feeling go. it right now. There isn't a ton of team fight. I think that's what I would be worried about. If the other team still had a lot of team fight to work around the Roshan pit, I would be worried. But look at this guy. He is so thick. Satanic completed. Going for the Daedalus. I like this. I think you have the defensive items you need at this point. You don't need to do anything too crazy now. They are going to lose the Bat Rider. And this is dangerous. Five. There's. You do, but you don't have a way to get back into Roshan very quickly. Yeah, they have he to back out now. Buying back. Oh, they want to see if they can wait because they, they can try to delay the fight. Yeah. It's only a 30, 30 second timer. It's not a ton, but you have to have the vision down to take this fight. Oh, Buying yeah, back now. Taking the fight. The Look two. at the yeah, waves. They need to. Oh, one yeah. One pushing middle, one pushing bottom, and the oh, fight's no. going to start. Schofield's actually trying to find the Batrider. He'll drop a ward up, sees where he's running towards. Divine Llama. Oh, they, Thought that was a real tiny. Yeah, no, it wasn't. Now they have the. Nice jump on Bat Rider. He's getting locked in, but FCR is getting exactly what he wants to know. The Batrider, they're going down on the left track. Second. He's dropping the bombs. He adds the Bloodstone. He's trying to heal up through it. This is the first life, technically, of K1. And they use the Bloodstone on Analog. They're going to buy back on 40R as well. They're sitting on top of the Gyrocopter. His BKB's already out. He's taking so much magic damage. He's even sitting on top of the stuns from left track, but finally, they'll get the team in on top of Kostopoli, heal up their gyro, and go back in for more. The rocket barrage is too much, analog will fall. Oh, it's tiny. a triple avalanche on 40R, and wrapping them up with his big old tree. Divine Lava will try to get away from this one. Barely gets out with the timber chain. KJ, can he find his way through? He will. It's still two gone with two buybacks used from Midas Club. But hey, this could be Roshan for your team. Yeah, but the tiny buyback is expensive. Mm -hmm. They were not in a fighting position there because they, they were spread. If tiny plays with with gyro or the razor, they definitely get kills. Mm -hmm. It was just a nice approach on heroic the first second of the fight. But yeah, they stand not a chance against this BKB satanic gyro. They just don't have enough damage. Mm -hmm. And now he has an Aegis. Getting the Daedalus as well soon. I mean, you can see just barely living in that first round on the uh, the last track. Really only turned around because the ulti was pumping through from K1. But now with the Daedalus completed, I don't think he will live through just that Bloodstone. Yeah, I don't know, man. Cheese and Aegis now. Mm-hmm. They are running out of time on Heroic, it feels like. Yeah, yeah the Lash is very strong on the late game, but... I don't know, it's Gyro, Razor, and Tiny. They've done a great job of pushing the objectives, making sure that the waves are exactly where they needed to be. They had two knocking on the door. Maybe they forced that fight just a little bit too much, I'm not sure. Oh! <laughs> the Lash <laughs> toss gets the hatred for himself on the Tiny. That would be a very good rune on analog. A very, very good rune. If he had that last fight, he would not die. That's true. I don't think they even have like a dispel on Midas Club, right? Like nobody has a Yules on their team? I don't think so. Not yet. Let me check the techies. That's true. Techies good. Yeah, he doesn't have Yule Scepter. They're just gonna keep pressuring this tower now. Stabla, he's got the damage. It's They'll use the force. But they don't have a top tower. Why'd they use the fort? Oh, Schofield in danger. Gonna get lassoed up, but same with the Atos. He's gonna get rooted and murdered on Whis, trying to start something for his team. Yeah, first things first. Whis gotta stop dying like this. <laughs> Last time he had to buy back. Just yeah. to go on the fight. Which, isn't this technically die back for him? Yeah. He got yeah. the timer at least. Yeah. Now. Better now than during a team fight. That's true. Man. 
Butterfly coming up next. Okay, so he is actually worried about that physical damage, huh? I didn't think he was. Like, uh, the ABBA hasn't actually gotten on top of him very often, and he's got multiple dispels. Yeah, him. You don't really buy MKB on the Abaddon. Oh, you might have to now. Yeah, no, force another item. BKB pop from FDR, 40R. They do get sharp shot, but he just eats it. Literally, I, it looked like the tiny just opened his mouth and ate it. I don't think he took any damage from it at all. He doesn't care. The bite bag really hurts on his net. Mm. He's stuck with the BKB Echo Saber timing. Not yeah. really being able to get more. He is a very far and pause for. Unfortunately, he and uh, Divide Llama are in the same boat right now. Uh, the Timber also struggling a bit. What, what does the Timber have? It's been a while since I've uh, I've given him some thoughts. So he's, he's got the Veil. Okay, he's gone in for the armor. Very good versus the Gyrocopter. He had the Shard. I don't know if that was something he bought or was from a uh, Tormentor, though. So Overall, this is still tanky enough items for a Timber. That uh, The finish on the Shivas will provide a lot for his game. A lot of vision, a lot of damage. That anti-heal yeah. versus the gyro as well. It's going to be pretty necessary. It has to be enough. So, one minute for the Aegis to mm. expire. Yeah. And we're not seeing Midas Club going for a lot of plays. They're yeah. just pushing out waves. They got top tower. Now they are probably rotate, rotating towards bottom. I mean, this is still anybody's but, game. Even though we've seen the last few fights go the way of Midas Club, it's not its not a one game by any means. They're not getting good advantage. Not a lot. Has been killed. Oh, they killed the plate mail. That's a big one. Oh, ah, yeah, yeah. What, what was on it? Gyro on the next fight? Yeah, it's for the, the Chimber, actually. Uh. The Chimber's plate mail. Oh, okay, plate mail. So 30 seconds on the Aegis, and we go high ground. Yeah? Oh boy. No fortification available. They can keep pumping wherever they want. 20 seconds for the Aegis. Oh, yo, 40 arm blinks on in, decides to toss out K1. He does put himself in the midst of danger, but they haven't forced the first life of K1 yet. I think he had to force out his ulti. If you wanted this to work, yeah, they have to back out of this. With him still having a second yeah. life, it's not worth it, especially as you lose the second life on Kasabale. He didn't get the read there of just popping BKB to get the toss on the chamber. Mm. Ab Ab Abaddon is not the greatest target of all. Now that was BKB on the tiny. As your Aegis ran out, so Heroic, they're going to smoke up. They know that there is a fight to be had. And 40R, yeah. you got to be careful, man. They want you. They want to find you. And they have a huge war. Oh no. They might not be able to. Gustable. Thankfully, they still have a tower around that they can TP to. Tier 2 is still up. If they do find the Gyro and FCR. It's a big oh. boy. Yeah. He's not going to go down immediately. They managed to dispel the flat cannon, actually. I kind of forgot that was even a thing. They have the rocket on Schofield. He's taking a lot of damage. Actually, the Atos will connect for a second, and they're jumping in on support to the backside. Abba leading the charge here. Hiko likely will fall, but already dropped so many bombs for himself. They'll have the nihilism from Analog. Very hard time hitting him, but FCR, Kasabla, they still have BKBs to use if they want. BKB up from Kasabla. Oh, they'll tiny. drag back Analog. He's taking so much damage. Yeah, this is not where he parked his car. He is very dead, and Heroic, they have to run away from this one. Trading supports for a Chen and a Leshrac, you definitely lose out on that one. This is very big for Midas Club. This was a fight Heroic wanted to take, but it feels like they were, they, they were, I don't know, they wasn't sure if they wanted to go there. They don't have good heroes to start fights like mm. this. You need to jump in with your Lash. Yeah. But Analog doesn't really want to do this. You don't have any stun from Fog until there are Hexes in the mix. That was a, a Yules. And the next one would have been like Atos or Bushwhack maybe if you hit it on time. <laughs> but like, there is still a BKB to you pop from the gyro and he just turns around and kill you. So Scofield was like, I don't want to die. I, I'm, if I die, then like you guys aren't winning this fight. So he had to just run away. Yeah, it doesn't seem like they really thought through like what they wanted to do with that smoke. And who's killing the gyro? He has butterfly, has BKB satanic. Oh, is the butterfly complete? Where's the damage coming oh, from? Oh my lord. What is his? What is he rounding this out with? 
Swift Blink, Hurricane Pike, Disperser. Yeah, I mean, those are got to be the three. To not get kited because they're relying yeah. on this tiny tosses. <gasps> oh my god. Dude, the, the heal even gets a huge Lotus! And now Weege, he'll actually die for this one, trying to get the kill on this Gofield hero. He's still taking so much damage, but they haven't killed it's him incredible. just yet. Oh my goodness, now ulti in from the ABBA, they're still trying to chase down Tiny, jump in from Hiko, drops the bombs right on top, Analog K1, they're taking a lot of damage, Gustavo Lee Bob with the BKB, here comes the Nihilism from Analog, you can't damage him for now, but Divine Llama, he can still be hurt, so Bob with the BKB from 40R, finally has it up again, Analog wants to chase forward for more, but you can't, you just can't do it, you cannot pass the wall of the Gyrocopter. Not kidding, Abaddon there, oh my god. They really need one more catch, one more stun. They, they was a, this was a forced play from the Batrider. Uh, I can't believe that they healed so much the Hoodwink there. Mm -hmm. But they, they need to have the heroes on top of the play. Yeah. Because they, they can't just wait the last waste, the lasso. Yeah. The bongo boots, man. Bongo boots in the hand of God, both very good. Gets him out of any of that slow that the Batrider is doing. They might need Scotty on the gyro. Yeah, so I was thinking about that, but the butterfly, I was not expecting it. I don't think you can go for the Scotty anymore because you don't, like, unless you suck up the axe. If he sucks up the axe, then yes. If you get a good neutral, you can just sell your boots. Uh, I suppose, yeah. Gonna be waiting a while for that one, though. They are going in analog. Popping the Bloodstone once again. Nihilism, I think they kill FCR. They're dragging back Schofield, but he'll once again get away. This is not a huge timing for Analog. He has this up much more often than BKBs here from Midas Club. They're going to Abatoss through. First life of the Abba oh, down the for count, but... Kasable, here comes the BKB. He'll take down Analog. He needs to turn on K1 because his Tiny's in danger, but 40R will just fall. Now the rest of the team here from Heroic feel that they can take down a Gyrocopter by themselves. I feel like that's true, but uh, he is farmed. K1 gets a double kill. Heroic finally turned this one around and made up themselves a gold lead for the first time since I think the laning stage. Yeah, this is so smart that Heroic decided to take the fight now because they knew that the BKBs were, were like 20 seconds on cooldown for Midas mm. Club heroes. So they got the Razor kill, the Gyro. He had to fight there no. just to defend his scores, but this was a disaster. Even mm -hmm. though they got the last kill, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's just math. Bloodstone is a 35 second cooldown. BKBs now are 95 seconds. You're fitting two, almost three Bloodstones in between every single BKB for the enemy team. They only lost the ranged Rex. That's okay. But it's still 36 seconds on the tiny. The rush is available. I wonder if Midas will have a chance to fight here. Oh. Uh, everybody will this be up. This is Rapier time. Whoa. Oh, this game isn't burst, though. Yeah, this so is dangerous to me. You, you can't catch them. You just kill them before they run away, right? I suppose so. In my head, this is rough because uh, you do have like a, a second life always on K1. Are they giving him three lives? No, okay, yeah. So you have two lives on Analog and on K1. This is no longer a burst game. These fights are going to go long no matter what. So like your BKB timing, your Satanic timing, like those are the two things you're working with the Gyro. You don't have a ton of enabling on the rest of your team. Like nobody is... You don't have a Chen on yours that's giving you a ton of heal. Oh, this is hard. They need to find a way to burst this Lash. They're smoking Again, up. Uh, if the Abaddon is closed, it's very hard. Yeah, they, they just got the Raper, so they want to use it now. They don't want to give time to Heroic to buy more, more items. They're going to take a lot of damage to the Tormentor. Supports are a little bit low. He's gonna get the uh, Aghanim Scepter eaten up. Yeah, I see on the uh, on the Abba. Yeah, they're ready that someone is gonna farm the triangle now. Or defend mid. I actually 
Gyro with that Ags will extend these fights, or Abba with these Ags will extend the fights. Gets the lasso in Weege, putting his body on the line for this one. They'll kill the first alive instantly. Look at the and the damage. Is gonna get out of this one has to use this cheese. Now they've added to up K1. He's got to back out of this one. Analog, he doesn't stand a chance. He finally finds the Bloodstone FCR. The BKB is gone. The Nihilism will start to pop through, but Gyrocopter will drop the bombs himself. Force everybody away from this one. This is on their ward. This is their oh fight my God. right now for Midas Club. They'll take KJ. The Rapier from Gyro puts in mad work, and they get one kill on the Chen and the Aegis kill. It felt like a little bit more, but that's still big for them. And the biggest part, he didn't use BKB. Oh no, yeah, still has the BKB available for Kasabale. Tiny will give his life to help his team. Nihilism popped once more from Analog. The bombs will still do damage, but he's kited himself expertly out of this one. And Gyrocopter still lives. Oh, they got it around. Oh, they got it around. They could, unless... JK, unless... Vailama, pushing his luck, won't commit further. Yeah, they, they don't have a second set of stuns after Lasso and Tiny. 4 the is doing a great job of fishing these heroes. Mm, yeah. What are the FCR items right now? They need more. FCR have... Let's see. Satanic. Yeah, just, ah! Kind of like carry build. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the Satanic. I think that's... uh. If you are looking to extend these fights to yourself, everybody, if you are on Midas Club, it's how do we keep the effectiveness of our heroes up for longer in these fights? Because they have many lives to work with. Uh, now, you know, with Aegis Gone, maybe not so much, but look at, yeah, dude, that, that Abomus Coil stuff is no joke. It will extend these fights. It will. They just need to use BKB and, and Satanic properly. That's what Jaro did on the last fight. That's why he didn't die there. It was mm -hmm. still a threat against Heroic. You can just pop both. Yeah. And these Aghanims on the Lash is doing a great job of keeping Analog alive. Didn't do that last fight because he died so fast. <laughs> but on his second life, yeah. Does the, uh, does the Reaper look any different now that it's a toggle ability technically no okay it looks exactly the same huh yeah the difference is that if you are toggling on the magic you don't have the damage yeah but like i would have thought that it looked different in some way like toggle towards damage or toggle towards magic oh the looks the design yeah Oh, okay, so he sucks up the Agonist Scepter, goes for bots. This means that whatever item he picks up here at, at 47 minutes will be all his. He doesn't have to worry about anything weird. But, oh no. The next set of items is yeah. one hour items. Yeah, no, he already has the, the Mind Breaker for himself. Yeah, so with these bots, it's like you can still chase them. You don't have Scotty to slow them down, but you're fast enough to chase them. Especially when you use the the the, um, the humming missile, mm. you can just chase it. Yeah. So, the gyro has decided what his items are. It'll be all that he's working towards. I imagine at this point you probably want to complete like a uh... oh the Avianus right there. Eh? A lot of evasion there from 40R. He, he's thick, man. 4K. It doesn't look like he's got many HP items, but man's got 4,000 HP right now, Tiny. Yeah, this is a big boy, Tiny. Uh, Four strength gain per level. Ooh, the Vailama. Finds Weege. Has to get out of here. I don't think he can though, Aegis won't connect. Now they're forced to take this fight. There goes Schofield, they finally take him down. Support for support, FCR getting on top of Analog and the blast off will connect as well. He'll steal all of his damage, but here comes they the Nihilism. They will the K1 <laughs> through the ulti. He got crit through his ulti. He doesn't have buyback. Please, what? can you please click on his death summary? What on earth was that last tick of damage? He wasn't ready for this. Gyro did 1,200 damage in a single attack. <laughs> oh my.
my goodness. Oh my god, I have so rarely, so rarely ever seen something like that happen. The auto threshold is 400. Or sorry, it's 525. Bro, oh. The way FCR played this fight was so good as well. He was oh just chasing analog, making sure the Lash would never be able to join the fight. That forced a bad on to help the Lash. And that gave a lot of space for the Jared to just click on the enemies. Now it's just go time. He have buyback now. He does have buyback. I I am just flabbergasted. I so rarely have seen. I think I see that from PAs usually. That's hard to see from a gyrocopter. Yeah, man, get flagged. Oh. One minute, and we'll know the uh, the Aegis timing. Next, Roche is the big one. They have nullify, right, on the Razor? Yes. Yeah, he nullified Flash just the Flash to walk him down. Upgraded. And it's a pretty big item. So it does two things. First off, of course, it does everything that you want versus the last track, right? You're allowed to hit him. Do everything quite nice, uh, but also it is a Lincoln's break versus the Abyss. You're always able to link him if you really yep. want to. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Because nihilism, it is dispellable. Like it or not, it is a dispellable ability. Nullifier works well. So what's the plan here for Midas? They just hold and wait for the Roche? Let's see. Ooh. The XP? Oh, nice XP gain there. Yeah. A little bit of something. What it's a, gonna be a Dire see. Roche. Yeah. And Midas already have a very good ward on the lane. Top side. Oh, yeah. Heroic is doing their best to just push the waves and make Midas just come back. Oh, they're actually going to force everything. Fortification available. They'll use it now. Breaking the trees as well. Avalanche through, but the Yule Scepter actually from Scofield will prevent them from tossing back Analog. They dropped bonds with the DD on the Vi Llama. Lasso! Oh, no. It breaks on the Lincolns given to him by K1. Heads up play. Holy. Nice. Now Analog wants to run Roche. Jaro, Jaro um, has bots too, so he can get that. And he needs to use fast. it because he, he has no mana. He's oh, got to get back them. into the base. They found Schofield. Avalanche once. Divine Llama sitting on top of FCR. Still not popping the BKB just yet. They'll both use it as the splitter comes out from the left track here. And here comes Tech. He's actually dumping into the mix of Sabalay. Black Cannon, baby. Let's see who survives. Divine Llama trying to run away from this one. He's disarmed now thanks to the Nihilism, but the Rocket Barrage was still going. Avalanche up with the Nullifier. They could kill the left track, but Analog, he's still healing up off the play. The, Stone, so they're still going through. Castable. He has to turn this around. No BKB. They're back on him. He's he just gets run through from the Llama. They kited him. He's got buyback. Abba now with a rapier. He has to use it. The way Heroic managed the resources on this fight was insane. Mm -hmm. They just kited the gyro during BKB, during Satanic. They didn't have Lasso. Toss up, buy back on the gyrocopter. K1 getting dragged on through. Lincoln's has already popped, taking a lot of damage, but now the heal is out. This is the first life now. He's they used up. They already killed the FDR, 40 r He's trying to get back in now. K1, can he get out of this? Toss back as well. They want to keep him in. The gyro gets his rapier back on in. <laughs> oh my god. 40 r is putting in buyback. overtime. Holy. Does he buy here for the Roche fight or not? Ah, I mean, you've lost two significant core buybacks on Midas Club. Gustavo is back where he wants to be. He was actually pretending to finish out another crit stick. So. Yeah, because he, he didn't have the, the Rapier, so he bought back uh, and bought the Crystalis just to be able to fight. Nah. Yeah, the thing is, oh. two buybacks forced on Midas, so Tiny and Gyro cannot die. They are not allowed to. Mm -hmm. And if you are not forcing K1's buyback here, 
Heroic has the advantage for the next fights. Yeah. And they'll have this they'll get the Aegis now, but it's not quite the same of having buyback. <laughs> the fact that Tiny is dying just to get in there and toss people is insane. Yeah. Has to BKB before. Razor crash. SCR. Crash. Don't do this to me, SCR. Let's refresh your shard. The razor, we all know that it is a very good item. Being able to have second round of spells and items. We, see that, we know that Gyro would use a second BKB mm -hmm. very well. Oh, yeah. I guess bots in, throw in the refresher. Yeah. He's also going to have an Aegis, so... It's uh, not even going to get the bots in part of it anymore. Yeah, I think you just drop the BKB first. I see. To, to wear the Aegis. Did we pick up an MKV on the Abba yet? Did you even think about that? No, okay. I don't think so. Maybe it's still rough. I mean, Gyro is still taking much more than just Abba damage. That, uh... Yeah, just need to kite him during BKB and Satanic. Then you kill him mm -hmm. quite easily. He's gonna go in. This is a pretty big Aegis. Roshan will give... A second life to the gyrocopter. What else is on that uh that Roshan right now? I think this is like the, the third one. Yeah, there's the brush shard and the banner. At that point. Okay, yeah, they're gonna be the refresher to razor. Re refresher BKB used to be like the always razor thing to do, but now he'll uh, have one for free from Roshan. Yeah, Jairo uh, just bought one as well. I, I am... Refresher. They don't have any regen degen from Midas Club, right? Like, this Razor Bloodstone, yeah, they or not Razor really, Shark Bloodstone, is just putting in insane work in all these fights. I don't see... Like, you have to have some way to mitigate that regen if you want to kill him in the burst with the Gyrocopter. Your damage is so big that you don't even need it. Problem is that he's pressing nihilism direct time. Yeah. Kiting uh, with the Wind Waker. Oh no, he's got a refresher on that as well. Get to hit him, it doesn't matter. Hmm. They need to find a good lasso or a very good toss back. They are still losing the objective game right now from Midas Club. Right now, not even a tier 3 down from Heroic. Midas Club have a hemorrhaged base. Between top and mid. Zager, Zager is going to buy time for the buybacks to come up online. But th there's a small window. Heroic can just take advantage of the Aegis, Aegis expired, expiring and just just go for a smoke play and get them without buybacks. It's like one minute and a half window. I mean, you That's gotta get something out of this Aegis. Smoking. You've gotta, gotta, gotta get at least top racks evened up. You're constantly having to worry about this wave. Your mid wave is, wave is still being pressed in. You don't feel comfortable enough to go for both. And heroic. I don't think they're coming back. <laughs> oh, Gyro is. Gyro is actually going to show in the mid wave, but thankfully everybody else from heroic is bottom right now. He's Isn't got bots he too. brave enough to get. One more. Uh, what on earth are these drawings on the map? Someone is going crazy. Just testing the mouse. <laughs> mouse works, guys. They still have some time to find fights on Midas Club side. But at the same time, it feels like they're trapped because they don't have buybacks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, they, so they also don't they have really easiest waves to push down waves, right? Like, you have illusions on K1. I think you even have, like, the 10 creeps going down waves. 
for Midas mode, like your body has to be pretty much on a wave. Yeah, they could just run down one lane. I'd say they go top. They can definitely threaten their high ground. Problem is they they will fight against buybacks on heroic, and, and they have the eggs and cheese, so they they want to have their buybacks. Hmm. Yeah, Gyro won't have buyback for another three minutes. I think he'll get the gold. That won't be an issue. Chen is finishing AC now. <laughs> yeah, man. What, he, he's got pen penitence. Let's uh, let's get him with an MKB. He'll hit pretty fast. He should buy MKB, right? Yeah, send him. Buy B Bloodthorn. Done. Time to go on the front lines. Then we'll ride in. Dragonlance, Bloodthorn. Mm-hmm. He, he can pump, man. He can pump. BKB. You sell everything? You sell everything. <laughs> Guys, I know the bongo boots have been working out for us, but I need treads, alright? I need, I need more. So Analog uh, has shard on the, the left track, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, with the blood but stun and the talent. These, like... They hard. You need BKB for sure on the gyrocopter. Things are getting to the point where... Because he was forced to go in for this butterfly, I don't know if he actually has all the item slots that he needs. Uh, the rapier was also slightly unexpected because they were super far behind. But, like, the anti-heal from the Scotty, not actually able to get that. Somebody else on this team needs to do that. Uh, the extra, I think, Sash Resistance from SMY also would have been pretty nice. Can't get that. So... This game is uh, decently hard for the gyrocopter. I mean, your tiny has to essentially eliminate someone for this game. I think just to be. He's a enabled on a fight. He can shine, but he really needs his tiny to finding the toss. The, he need murder. Rider to find the lasso. Yeah. Because he has the damage. So this is the window. No buybacks for one minute. And mm -hmm. the Aegis, now yeah. Hero, they are just comfortable pushing waves, but they are not smoking to fight. No, if they wait literally one minute, most buybacks will be back up. The <laughs> What did the Batrider buy? But he's down a th thousand on buyback. Stop BKB. Uh, I see, so he bought a BKB. I mean, that will keep you alive, to be honest. Let's see if he'll find a lasso now. Uh, this time K1 outplayed him. Board down. 30 more seconds before the buybacks will be available from Midas Club. And two more minutes and a half to get 60 minute items. Let's go! <laughs> That's looking like what is going to happen. I think we're going to have a, a magical moment where we'll have all buybacks. 60 minute items, and a Roche fight coming on up. They may fight before that. Tiny. Gotta be careful, man. This is not your map anymore. You do not have Aegis on the... Ooh, Gyro was hit by that? And he walked forward? <laughs> Sable, you got some balls, man. Couldn't be me. This guy is not afraid of anything. He has buyback now, so he's confident. Mm-hmm. Who's, I mean, who's they... by Midas on the Midas Club? Right, like somebody should get it up. Eh. Techies has been getting a lot of gold. I'm sure he could probably afford one. Toss back, yield out. But a jump through from the Vite Llama. That's a pretty big There's commit. He gets out, right, forces the, the BKB from two, but they do toss back K1. Silenced up a little bit more. Watch those flat cannons, <laughs> buddy. No! Mm. Lags. Totally. Yeah. Oh, Razor no. crash? Okay, I see. Because I was wondering, where's the nullifier on the Lash? Yeah. As soon as Tiny decides to jump, Lash needs to be closed. Mm, yeah. There's the only way they kill Analog. And it's, it's still hard. Just been reactive, Taser's been there. I was, I was expecting Hiko actually just kind of jumping on that one. 
He's done a really good job. Now, he only has two mines right now, but he's done a fantastic job of using the blast off in and then just like shift queuing all the mines. They are dropping like yeah. instantly. And he's, oh, he's not so far away from his Aghanim Scepter, actually. Oh, 1,200 gold for him, and he'll have that. That'll make another set of impossible fights. May actually be the missing piece that we're missing on Midas mode right now. I still think they need the Scythe of Ice. I think he could replace these Aghanims with the Scythe of Ice. Because they definitely have damage to kill this chamber if they use hacks on him. <laughs> Oh. He's just chaining away. Oh god, what have they decided? Are we still fighting? It looks like not. Alright, so by, or BKB's used from yep. Midas Club and not as much used at all from Heroic. They are not as BKB reliant. And they're slowly chipping the base. They got the tower. Now they have a good ward on Midas. I don't really see anything for now, but they're trying to. Oh, nice Huge ward on Scofield. Yeah. They all want the one hour items. Second. And we see if we get a Stygian Desolator on our Gyrocopter. Or, I don't even know if that's the one that he wants. Apex is pretty good. Giant's Rune is okay. Bounty Hunter, or er, Bounty Hat is pretty fine. Oh, Sable. Oh, you're giving me a heart attack. He doesn't have a BKB, right? Just get... Oh my god. Yeah. 10 seconds. He has to drop, like, Pirate's Hat. Yeah. All right, that is pretty good, but they do find the Chen. KJ is down for the count now. That's that uh, global rocket putting exactly where it needs to be. FCR will get rooted up once. Bushwhack coming in. We'll connect on him. Same as the sharp shot. Trees from downtown on F40R, but they will not commit just yet. I do believe we got one item on the timber yeah, side. Force here. boots. Yeah, on, okay. On gyro. Oh, we, we got force boots on gyro. Okay. The Timber got Forest Boots as well, mm. I think. Yeah. Pretty big. Does mean that uh, he doesn't have to have the boots in pocket then for Gyrocopter. He could maybe slide in that Butterfly. Dead. Oh, they got the Chan kill and then they're just getting the neutrals. Mm. Roche hard to build up he's alive. <gasps> he doesn't have buyback on Chen. Just kill it. Costabile is not going there. At least for now. I think he will TP to get the Aegis. Uh, let's check the base. Divine Llama is pressuring here. Left track in the base taking out. K1's gonna go on top of FCR. They do get the gyrocopter in now. It's already an ulti pops here from K1. He's got a lot of HP. Disarmed on the gyrocopter. They could keep going. It is a refresher popped from the Abba again. Refresh that life, but they will still lose Schofield. Now it is BKB from Razor getting gone on by K1. Weege here as well. They're gonna buy back on a few. This is a good fight still for Midas Club. This is exactly where they can buy back TP in from. But now the BKB has been kited out from Kasable. A huge bushwhack in from Scofield. Plus the split earth from the Leshrac. Can they keep up this fight? Because right now the Leshrac, it feels unscathed entirely. They're okay, running low on resources. The tree toss! The tree toss, yeah. I mean, 40R just took out the one target they needed to. Now they're looking at more. Forced away on Dubai Lama, running it through. They will buy back on K1, and this is the time now that Midas Club decide to back away. Because Analog, he's just going after their base. He'll get Megas. They need to TP back. He's taking another Can one. Can Roche? Uh, they're not thinking about it. Radiant finally fortifies the structures. He could get Megas here. They can't do both. You cannot deal with both. Yeah, they finally forced one TP back. He blinks away, but on the other side, you are going to lose some heroes for this. 
Pico. I don't think it doesn't. It, it doesn't matter. You just kill K1 again. He doesn't have buyback. If, if he mm. die, if he dies, the game's over. No refresher for 95 seconds. The Lord's work on analog to go back and force the TPs away. Without those TPs, we'd be looking at a gyrocopter Aegis. Instead, Aegis now on ABBA. Yeah, they need a to feel like they're well. getting something out of this. That's why Analog went there. Almost got the Megas. I think Jarrah should buy like a second Raper. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. That's it. Does he not have money for a moon shard as well? What's his what's his expendable gold? Check. It's four thousand. Surely he's going to yeah. buy a moon shard now, right? Oh no! How they do it? They just went there. They just went down. But, okay. Yeah, my does they they don't have the tacky, so they feel that like they don't have to fight now, and they're not afraid of getting mega. Lasso, bringing on back Schofield, gonna get healed up, Yules as well with the Wind Waker, Analog, that means that part of his survivor ability is gone, Gustavoli will step forward in the fight, getting matched off by K1, we'll try to back away for a second because he is silenced up, popping the refresher as well, but he's lost so much of his mana, he doesn't have anything else to give now, behind him are stuns, in front of him are heroes that actually, well, you might not have the tools to defeat anymore, he's got it back into base, he needs to get more mana for himself, four step forward from Weege, he'll recoup, Okay, they didn't lose anyone. Still think they need the sight of Vice? Yeah. They definitely need, they, like, I feel like both teams, a sight would be fantastic for either. The game is, the game is gonna become chaotic now. With the Megas, yeah. Lash always threatening to kill I the team force. This is a big ABBA. This is a big tiny. This giant ring. <laughs> it's so funny. Look like a big <laughs> boss. And they don't have Glyph. Hmm. Avalanche? Not gonna do anything just yet. Tiny does have his own rapier. They could put out a lot of damage. Once again, the Gyrocopter will step forward, allowing his team to be the damage for them. They're gonna link up two heroes with Weege, but not able to drag them back into the welcoming arms of the Gyrocopter. Another stun will connect onto him. He gets <laughs> linked up as well, but a toss up. Maybe they can actually commit on this now. FCR stepping forward. Schofield in danger, could go down. It's the hand of God. It's a lot of heal, but they'll still finally take him down. They'll fire back on to Analog, but K1 is stepping forward. We trying to get something else done but with the BKB. He's still taking too much damage from K1. FCR will actually stop it for a second, getting the link back in onto Vilama. A huge blast off in from Hiko. They'll take the first life of the ABBA, but can you keep it going? A toss back. Get the toss. Keeps it going. K1 onto the high ground. Stunned up by the tiny. A little bit more. The ulti finally popped. They'll force him away. Saving Private Abaddon with the Divine Llama. He will okay, live for now. now. Now just breathe. Kill, uh. kill the, the, the Megas. You lost one tier 4. The other one almost died. They played so well, but it took them some time. With the blast off, it was, it was huge. FCR running in as well. They really need one more sort of stun on their team. Mm -hmm. So what are, what are we looking at for my support? So like Batrider, I don't think he can really afford anything else. Whatever he does is his own thing. Tiny or Techies yeah, he, he does have the Agnus Scepter. A lot of gold. He does it. Uh, isn't he saving for buyback still? Yeah, he's, he still has buyback, so not a whole lot of excess for him, I'm sure. Definitely not hex excess. They need to go up and deward this stuff. They haven't had a map for a while. Largely because of the Megas, but also because of the wards sitting in their base. 4DR. Hey, that man is pretty large. For an Octarine. 62,000 net worth on the Gyrocopter. Man's is built different. Yeah. I think at this point we're getting into uh, maybe buy your, your tiny uh, a moon shard.
is the Roche coming? Oh, still three minutes for us. Mm -hmm. uh, a long time. Oh, long time. So Backrider has 4.4 4 yeah. gold. I think he should farm a site of ice. 1300. Can try to go for something like Aghanim's or Fresher, just to have two BKBs. That could be good. Yeah, I think Refresher is more solid. Just because yeah. they have two BKBs and two Lassos. Hurry! Time to take Tormentor! It doesn't have Shard. Oh, that would That's be just a gold. Yeah. That was rocking the uh, double rapier, by the way. Yeah, at first one he was using the breaker. <laughs> Both for damage. Come on. <laughs> He's hitting hard. He's hitting 1k. Mm hmm. Like we're going for a nullifier on Ava. Uh, pretty decent. I think that's mostly for yeah. the four sass out, maybe even the techies. Yeah, this better rider is just saving Costable with the four staff. Mm. A lot on these fights. They're camping out here on the top side. Still, somehow, we've managed to keep the net worth even for Midas Club. They haven't, uh,. If that you really press Y, you will know why. Is it? I mean, it's surely just the gyrocopter still, right? He's just like up yeah. at like 65,000 net worth or something. The rest of his team is still a little bit behind. Not crazy, but a little bit. I mean, that's damage, but it's not a ton. Uh, techies? Brother? That should not happen. I don't think that should happen. Um, that should not happen. And Abaddon, he has his buyback now available, so yeah. might be go time. Uh, okay, Jaro has to get out of here. We are missing some of the saves that are provided by the techies, so if they do run up before he is respond, then uh, you could technically kill... Never mind, he... I mean, we're just missing the Solar Crest, which is still a lot, but Solar Crest and the Lotus are still enough to keep a Jaro alive sometimes. I you mean, need everything. Blast off is the big one. Mm. <laughs> they really need this stun to fight. Saw that. K1 instantly popped borrowed time when he was facing the gyro. Oh, I see. They're sending in the little Necronomicon units to. Force out the Agonim Scepter from the Techies, Minefield sign, which is uh, that's a pretty decent cooldown. This is my shot. Yeah. Yeah, one minute. We're still waiting on Roshan, it looks like. It is going to respawn in two minutes, which at this point, I think it could spawn in 30 seconds, it could spawn in three minutes. Either way, it's going to Heroic. You have to think about how on earth are we winning this game as Midas Club. You're holding, but you're not really getting opportunities to win. So what is the turnaround for you? Because it's always a heroic, uh, complex thing. Heroic aren't going to come up to your high ground without buybacks on their heroes. That's just where at this point of the game, it's just not going to happen. Yeah, you need to like force BKBs first. Mm. Then you force the glyph. Then you kill someone, you make them buy back, then you go again before it's BKBs, and then you kill the hero that bought back. Or just yeah. rat them without glyph. But like, that's the thing, you need to kill everybody with this Aegis. Then you need to go high ground. You somehow need to force the buybacks, but not like die when they buy back. Yeah. And then you need to do it again. Like, we're talking about a 15. 20 minute plan for them. Should they win this next fight with Aegis on, I'm assuming, the left track again? He has a lot of lotuses on his backpack and a lot. 
Is he planning on the cheese? Creating the big lotus because Chen the has some lotuses as well. Look at Chen. Hey, I'm I'm down for a block of cheese. It's about that time. Never. I believe one. it is a uh, three greater healing lotuses. Yeah. So he's on his way. Like halfway there. Chen has any more than Chen yeah, they will. They just need one more. Oh no, no, literally, yeah, they need one singular lotus. Oh. Uh. What is this? He wanted to try to get the blink away. Trying to go through the trees. Four staff through. A corn will once again prevent his blinks. Okay. Call down from Kristable. We'll stop everything. They will. Four staff complete. Down. Did they force the BKB? Oh, they did force the BKB on Tiny. Mm. Yeah. Now you need to kill the Tiny to force his buyback. Or try to force the Glyph. You can just go Rosh. They know the Rosh is alive. Chen has grips inside the pit. Yeah, nice. Simply the next step. 15,000 net worth lead. Heroic have built up something that is up to them to lose. Huge gyrocopter sitting in that base. A gigantic raid boss. And honestly, not a whole lot of enabling items from his team. He really is rocking with the refresher BKB Satanic on his own. Should be using triple rapiers. You think so? Yeah. Just backpack your refresher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is a that is a dangerous game without having the refresher BKB. But he is like K1 is doing a good job of sending these illusions down on him because Kasabwe has had times where like he's wanted to advance but he couldn't because he didn't have mana for everything. Refresher is 350 mana. You're looking at like 350 there, your two BKBs, which is 100, your satanic, like it's the diffusal is really doing a lot. Here comes Roshan, it goes down, Aegis getting picked up on Analog, Aghanim Scepter for Schofield, KJ gets a cheese. It's fun all around, fun for the whole family. And the block of cheese is created for Analog. First time I think I've seen it in a real game. And he has a 500 damage barrier that refreshes, or uh, I believe it's 100 damage per second. <laughs> that it will regen until it's fully broken down. Yeah. I miss the old Chen eggs. I could just dispel everyone. That used oh, to yeah, be very good against the lasso. Oh. Yeah, but now it's different. The sacrifice grips thing. Oh, I hear sharpshooter. I hear it. Boom! And I jump forward on the Vilama. The huge blink in to start. They will still stun up the gyrocopter. He's actually going on to the ancient as K1. They may not be able to stop him here. They're go trying to drag him into the base. Go They're going to use the nullifier. Yeah, they really want to take it. And gyrocopter says, "Guys, hold up!" Unbelievable. I don't know what yeah? to do. So it's, it feels like everyone's crashing. There is a rapier inside the fountain. Yeah, don't drag him in there. You'll give him a rapier. <laughs> Can you imagine? That would be the best. <laughs> oh my god. He doesn't have OT now. He has to pop refresher. They don't have Avatars ready. They'll have Ava in two seconds. But that's all. They don't have stuns anymore. You have to use Glyph. I think the game might end right here right now. Good. A lot of damage already from the last rack. This they is last with amplified damage. Yeah. I don't think they have a Yules. I mean, you don't have any dispel right now uh, for these okay. runes. How many items analog has? Oh no, Nullifier. Nullifier would dispel it. But I think they used Nullifier on K1. So yeah, he, he used it. Yeah. So he has to refresh it and nullify the last track, I think. They might be talking about this. To be honest. There it comes. 
On to K1, he is going to pop that refresher. They're on top of the Ancient. They're going to pop the fortification once. Can you kill him? By the time the fortification is done, a on top of it. A lot of damage here, still going down. They drop another minefield sign. They're taking the damage. I love it, with the flamethrower on top of it, ripping through, and they'll take the game. Game number one, 77 minutes. All finally comes to an end as Heroic go right in onto the Ancient and take this game for themselves. Uh, what? That is game number one. Guys, that, that is a whole <laughs> lot of series still ahead of us. Yeah, that's only game number one. They, they, just, they just had to bring the fight to the enemy Ancient at the end. And yeah, the, the, the last idea inside the fountain was good and all, but not enough in the end. And they lost with one, one Raper on the ground. They were mm -hmm. not using the third Raper to deal damage. I'm not saying that this is why they lost, but yeah, the damage would help a lot on the defense. Yeah, yeah I mean, there is a, a lot of damage missing, I suppose, at the end there, but still for Heroic, uh, they definitely had the draft to run down and take that Ancient. I mean, Chen is fantastic with the ores he provides to take down some towers. Leshrac, of course, pumping that damage. Abba and Timber even getting on top of it. I mean, they just all end... That's why, uh, I forget which interview it was, but whenever people talk about these large games and like what a captain can do for you, it's theorizing a way that you are actually ending the game and really talking about like, what is our game plan here? It didn't feel like for Midas Club, they really had a solution to win the game, but of course, for Heroic, they figured that out and they come away with this game on victory. I feel like they messed up some items on the supports as well. I think they lacked the Sight of Eyes, to secure kills they lacked uh, -huh. uh i think bat rider going for the agonim scepter was not great i'd rather have refresher so you have uh -huh. sec a second lasso on the target and having a sight of eyes there to kill analog would be just crucial mm -hmm. that would secure the game it would have it would have it would have uh still a very close game of course we, we made it out to 77 minutes uh, looked like definitely anybody's game all throughout there till till the end whenever there was the megas taken by Leshrac. So well done from the team here of Heroic Analog. I think uh, at the end of the day would probably be my MVP for dragging everybody back into the base when they could have been getting those ancient uh, or the, sorry that Roshan. So I think fairly well done from the Leshrac here. Yeah, the the plan was perfect. They just did everything they needed to slow the game to go when needed and. They won after 77 minutes, but they won. Yeah, that's true. They did end up doing it. And guys, we're going to take a break. I have no idea how long it's going to be. I'm assuming probably like a 10 minute break because of how much game we just watched. Uh, but we'll be back eventually with game number two. So stick around. There's much more Dota on the way.
starts with this A person that you miss Mind draws a blank I wanna go back, back to the early days When life was an escape Now I just wait for better days I lost myself in your reality Lost myself everybody and welcome back to dream league season 23 closed qualifiers for sa and uh, also welcome to the draft we've already got one ahead of us uh ace how on earth are we looking at the issues of that last draft because you made it to 78 minutes i mean surely there aren't too many draft issues i mean both teams knew that they could win the last game just went crazy on a 77 minute game both teams could close it earlier, but yes, yeah, some mistakes here and there on doing the team fights. Midas oh Club not having stuns on the late game to stop, to prevent the Lash and the Abaddon to just kill their Ancient. It was so, a problem. They had all the damage they needed, but it wasn't the damage the problem. Before. They ban out the Gyrocopter, and this time their answer, and since they don't have the Gyro available, it'll be the Windrunner. And uh, for anybody who's interested in the rest of the bracket here, uh, we weren't the only ones. Boom Esports versus Beast Coast also went 60 minutes. Not as long as ours. Uh, oh mine is God. longer. Get wrecked. But uh, it was still a 1-0 victory for Boom Esports. So following what they had done in previous qualifiers, where Boom now seems to have the upper hand on Beast Coast. And okay, first pick Wind Ranger on the Midas Club. I, FCR plays it as an off lane. Mm -hmm. He did it at TI. He does it when needed. Dia but it's a, flash, it's a flex pick. Mm -hmm. They can do Probably a lot flex. with the hero. I think uh, with the new way that Timbersaw likes to play, Windrunner actually isn't too bad versus him. You do have largely. Uh, Physical damage that you're going to be harassing him with in lane. I think that's still a little bit uh, support focused. Also, by the way, I don't want to let this sneak through. We banned out Tinker, Nyx Assassin, <laughs> and Oracle versus Heroic. Like, okay, Undying, I get it, KJ plays it, but Oracle? Tinker? I Hello? Mean, Oracle is okay if you decide to ban the hero, but this Tinker ban? Is I don't know. It's confusing me. 
I am, uh, I don't know, man. We, we watched one game where it seems like Heroic got a very meta draft. Minus Club basically picked up Gyro Techies and then completely went off the rails. So, I just, I don't know. I, I feel like one team has a very good handle on what these meta heroes are and what they want to do, and the other team is just completely throwing stuff out there. I am astonished that Midas Club with their draft made it to 78 minutes. They're clearly very talented players. Very, very talented players. Uh, but I, I want to see a little bit more standard from them. Just slightly. Let's see, let's see. There's a Nyx ban there as well. Oh my god, thank god, a Shadow Demon They're ban. banning a lot of supports. We saw that last game. We are seeing this again. Heroic, they respected the Gyro and the Tiny. So uh, we're gonna see a brand new draft on my club side. Thank god. I mean, I, uh, I wish I could have seen the Gyro again. I think that Kasable played a fantastic game with it. He's very good uh, with the hero. Oh, yeah. Hero for the techie. Okay. Okay, so no wind ranger four. Nope. Which again? Unless it's tech is five. Right? Like, that, that's what happened last time, basically. We were like, okay, well, this hero is no longer flexing. Unless they do something weird. So they open up with this flex to start, and then... I don't want to say completely toss it away. Eventually, you're going to have to give away, like, what something is. Because the windrunner was a... One, two, three, four flex. Like you, you can go all the way down with that. So like it's hard to to not start to overlap some there. They go for the Rubik straight up. Makes it feel like they're protecting a Magnus or something, but they're not. They already have a Timber Saw. Uh, Rubik into the Techies isn't the worst thing in the world. You drop those bombs even faster if you do steal the Proximity Mines. See if they uh, what they want around this off with. It's Five nice against the Winged Ranger as well. It's still the Shackles, you feel good. Hmm. I think I pick a five now, right? On oh, I'd like that. Feels like Venge isn't the worst. Windrunner is a very single target heavy hero. Venge does well versus that. Radiant team pick. Enchantress. Oh! Yeah, it's KJ. Well. We can't forget that mm -hmm. it's KJ. You always mm -hmm. try to play the Enchantress, the Nature's Buffet, the Undying, if it's available. 10 was still available, by the way. <laughs> yeah. 10 seconds remaining. But you need some sort of damage on your supports. To have like Chen, Rubik. I don't know. The, the Enchantress provides more. He likes to go uh, uh, Mage Slayer Dragonlance on his Enchantress. Mm. Not sure if he will uh, go for a different item build now. A lot of but people have been doing that. That's his standard. Yeah. I like the build. Uh, I think it's not too far off of what Enchantress was already doing. Originally, she was just going Hurricane Pike. So now it's like, eh, you know, throwing a Mage Slayer there, it's fine. Okay. Oh. So, <laughs> there are some things here that they can do. There's a lot of things that they can do. It's similar to the first draft, right? I have a lot of flex heroes. We know Lina is a core. We're not sure about Marcy. Could be like Lina Marcy lane. Being Lina the carry could be like... Um... Marcy Wind Ranger lane as well. Marcy Techies lane. I think if say. you if you wanted to do something like this, I think you go back to Marcy Razor because that is a lane that is uh, definitely potent. Um, seen work a lot before. Marcy Windrunner isn't the worst in the world. It doesn't have as much synergy together. Uh, you're basically looking to like. Just like punch rebound, people. Back, yeah, like rebound, shackle, hit people. But with Razor, it's like you're bringing them in close proximity, steal their damage. It genuinely amps your damage whenever they get brought closer to you. Windrunner, you can get brought closer, and they're like, "Oh, cool! Now I can kill you." So I don't, I don't think it works the same way. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. 
we see four heroes incredibly weak a lot of output a lot of damage output but incredibly weak uh sven i think you just ban anything that has more than like 2000 hp at 15 minutes and you're happy on heroic life stealer for yeah. example could totally be it uh, the one thing that Minus Club have going for them is that this is a very flexible lineup, very limber. Uh, is my Lena mid or carry? Don't know. It's my oh. Windrunner 1 or 3? Don't know. So they're banning Slarder, so they feel like the carry yeah. is there. They can go for like an offlane ban and a carry ban. Just to make sure. If they feel like there's a an open carry that could out carry them, in a sense. Yeah. You also gotta think about the lanes. What is the dual to lane against Ruby, Timber? What is the best one with what they have? Could I be RC Lena. Be, right? Like, it's, I think it's gotta be Lena in that lane. Uh, a lot of new damage like there. Like, RC Lena. Ten seconds remaining. And Wing Ranger, you decide later if it's from. If it's FCRs or for DRs, I think you put the Windrunner mid, and you go out on comfort. Let me see I that. Think you'll note. wait. So they're making it possible. They are banning the Konka. Yeah. So they want to go with the Wind Ranger mid if needed. Yeah. And I know for DR plays it very well. I'm surprised about the the Mars, but that is another thing when we talk about like the SA specifics. Like SA runs. Mars mid a lot more than everybody else. And yeah, they could go with the Timber mid and pick Mars Rubik. Mars is a great hero to find Alina. Even the Wind Ranger. He breaks the trees. Oh. Death Prophet. Makes me feel like a spirit is coming or a puck. Yeah, because that could be like a DP Marcy lane yeah. on the off lane. I don't know. I feel like we're just... Isn't Puck pretty good here? We don't have, like, Ten seconds any remaining. instant lockdown. Yeah, I think that Five they have remaining. what it needs if they're, they're planning to pick a Puck. That is absolutely not what I expected. But it's B. Beefy boys. Uh-huh. Just pick Viper. Let's go. <laughs> just and, Viper and them. So... Viper into the Rubik is a much different matchup than it used to be, but I still think that Rubik likes it. I can only imagine now a Stinny trying to convince 4 dr that Viper is a good pick here. <laughs> oh, is the Stinny helping them out? He's the owner of the team, so... <laughs> oh, really? On Midascope? I did not yeah, know that. Yeah, he's the owner. Yo. Good, good for him. Could be like Viper off lane, too. Yeah, Viper Med looks interesting, at least. They need burst mm. damage to be able to deal with this DK before he has, like, BKB Aghanims. Because if there's not a threat of him just dying after Blink stunning, they will just play on the map very freely with the Enchantress scouting, with the Timber connecting. They need a red flag on their draft. So DK is like, oh, I'm not sure if I want to go on this fight. Right, yeah. This Rubik is actually throwing a wrench in some of the works too, because I think an Underlord would actually be the... It would be the time to try out Underlord maybe, but... Uh, Rubik loves that matchup also. So I know 4DR plays a very good Lina. Oh, they could really? could go for the Lina mid. And play like. Let's get Lone Druid, man. Winged Ranger. Let's, let's throw Druid. FCR in some comfort. I don't know. The the Dragon Tail against the, the bear you can just kill it with your Sven Chamber. Oh, so, okay. They go for the lane. A lane that can deal with the, the Chamber. Luna yeah. usually is the one. But Luna plus what? Plus Marcy, and you'll play Wind Ranger Techies or Luna plus. Yeah, Luna plus Techies? 
I think everybody on this Midas Club team needs to buy a Reaver first item. You are <laughs> so weak. So it is going to be the the Windrunner Marcy lane. I'm not too hot on. We just just playing Techies with the Luna. A lot of magic damage versus the Timber. That one I can get yeah. behind. Lena mid into the Dragon Knight. That's an okay matchup. I, I like um, it. I like it. He will be this, able to scale. This off lane is the linchpin. You either dominate this off lane on Midas Club or you lose the game because you need to be so aggressive on the map. You cannot be the one that's being initiated on because any single target on your team is a fantastic target to start a fight. So it's Wind Ranger against the Enchantress on the lane. So they address the Wind Run with the Enchant, but they got they got Mars. Mars is good against the Enchantress, but Mars can't do much to protect the Wind Ranger. She can no. like stun someone. We have very good two item timings on this team. Even Hiko, like for example, Marcy just like wants phase BKB, which uh, you're looking at like 5,000 net worth on your pause for. That's not going to take a ton of time. Uh, 40R, by like bots BKB or bots Gleipnir, also not a crazy timing for him. Uh, Luna, ideally you get like Manta BKB. Weege isn't going to need a lot. FCR is going to need basically, you know, Atos BKB. So we have a lot of like really good BKB timings on this Midas Club team. That could definitely help them out. But again, if the lanes go too well for uh, Heroic and your Sven is just like farming up a storm, I don't think you're going to be able to handle him and this Timber and this DK, who are all very thick. They have a similar idea on this Heroic draft. They have this Enchantress to pressure towers. They have this DK to amplify amplify that. Mm -hmm. Very they have well this strength carry. Difficult to kill, but at this time they have a carry the farm is faster. Mm -hmm. We know that at 12 minutes he goes in with Echo Saber, Mask of Madness, level 12 to hit a tower to fight. So it's easier to get Death Bold against Heroic this time. Mm -hmm. Yes. But now they definitely got more potential if the game goes late with the Lina. Uh, that's Especially if fair. they somehow win the lane. I just don't, I, I don't know. I think of Dota sometimes very one-dimensionally, and it is a, an issue that I have. I'm trying to curb it, but I look at this team like, you're Sven, Rubik, DK, whoever it is, they can jump anyone on this team, and they're happy. Meanwhile, for her, like, for Midas Club, it's like, oh, do I really want to start a fight on a Timbersaw? Do I really want to fight, start a fight on a DK? Like, those are two heroes that I feel like I need to dodge whenever I have vision of them. Heroic does not have that weakness at all. The plan here is to be able to kill this timber so if you jump him. That's why you have this Wind Ranger with, uh -huh. that will build a lot of uh, damage. The Lina as well. So if you find a DK or if you find the timber, you need to be able to kill them. And you have a yeah. lot of damage on these two heroes. And That's you have true. Laguna, Taki. So yeah, you need you need to be ready to fight before they get beefy, before they get stronger. Yeah. Yeah, these are not do nothing heroes, thankfully, on Midas Club. They uh they do have damage. They even got a little bit of lockdown. I'm um, expected to see a 202 build from the Luna. We know that Kostable is is not shy to maxing out some of these magic damage spells, uh, versus the Vilama on the Timber Saw. He did it on Gyrocopter, he'll do it again on the Luna. I could actually see the uh the faded double sampler on the Luna. It's a very rare build, but the two two two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he can go like two points, but it, it's different now from the gyro. With the gyro, you can just ulti and see if the fight is good for you to join. With the Luna, if you're putting four points on Lucent beam, beam, it doesn't mean that you can't fight with the Eclipse. Because you get too exposed and you can yeah. die. Really put your body on the line with that, yeah. yeah. You have to have like heals or saves, and unfortunately those are, those are over on the heroic side. <laughs> the Enchantress heal. Even with the uh, the lift back on shard from Rubik. This is a girls team in Techies. That's true. I, I was thinking about that, the, the women in Dota 2. I didn't know what uh, pause 5. They would have needed to snipe the Enchantress, I think. But they got very close. <laughs> yeah. The battle begins. So, 2 for 2. Thanks, now. If 2 split on the runes here. 
even game. Goblins and girls. That's an even better way to describe it, actually. <laughs> Goblins and girls? <laughs> Who said it? You know just, a, just a no, 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 no. A, a, a very good chatter gave that to us. Uh, looks like they are going to try to steal this first range creep from Divine Llama and Schofield. So they're going to let the wave push into the tower of the Luna. In fact, with the blocking, so. She did end up getting her losing beam first. This is going to be a little bit hard to see us. And now with the Fade Bolt minus damage, even harder. He missed one. Oh, that was really close. I think without the uh, Fade Bolt minus damage, he would have had it. Close. But overall, only missed one. Yeah, uh, that was still well done, probably. I think he handled that well. So let's see what these five techies can do here. It's hard, but it's versus a, a Timber Saw. And I even say the matchup into the techies isn't so bad. Yeah, Luna is very good against the Timber on the lane. So she would rather have like a CM, so they have more key potential on the Timber. That's true. Let's see what they can do with the techies. I think you like you right click down a Rubik pretty well on the techies. So like I don't you kinda like both matchups. I think the game is what's the worst part of it. Ooh, drop back. A lot of damage actually taken from the creeps here, but Hiko not able to finish it off. DK is getting worked here in the mid lane, eh? Uh, he's taking <laughs> some damage. Yeah, Lena DK. For DR and his Lena. This is a node story. Mm-hmm. This is the anime. Anime matchup. You know, we have an anime skin for, for Davi and the Dragon Knights and uh, the Murana, but we don't have one for the Lena, right? Not yet. Not true. Could always happen. But then, uh, yo, she is owning this lane. Holy 4DR, my man. Using the aggro as well. Oh! Yeah. Oh, didn't get the deny there, but he might get the solo. No. Mm -hmm. Only go for, going for the sampler. I like it. We've once again distracted our. <laughs> I love watching the mid lane, guys. Oh yeah, so that's just where I want to be. They do end up killing the Rubik down bottom. So first blood for Midas Club. They're still very low, and Divine Llama is not hurt just yet. Yeah, they need to be healthy when the Rubik comes, comes, but. They don't have much resources at the moment. The careers are coming close, so let's see if they have more. Mm. And the wave is pushed up enough. Divine Llama has been playing the aggro really well. Make sure that his team is locked in for the uh, Lotus. He's being able to be farm the timber. Bombs. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. bomb just created a two range deny. Very unfortunate. Okay, so the Vailama is kind of happy. Oh, Sven goes down. Ah, oh, dragged back. It's, uh, I didn't think that this lane would be that good, but now that they've hit level 3, this is another really big timing for the Marcy, and it only like gets better. KJ is not actually able to dispel the, uh, uh, the effect of that tag They're team. They're not, not even leading. Sidekick. Uh... On the Marcy anymore. They're just landing the spells, the power shots. Mm -hmm. It's hard for K1 because he gets right click Ooh. on his lane. Dragging him back again. So the, the powerful part about this is that it's right into a power shot. So he's really slowed up. Thankfully, uh, the Wild Wing Ripper will spin K1 out of this one. But they're not done yet. They're actually still staying on top of KJ. A lot of heal, yes, but a lot of damage from FCR. He loses the damage amp thanks to the kill on the Marcy, but still ends up getting one kill for himself. Still a lot of damage from the Wild Wing. Holy moly. Yeah, I've seen some FCR Wind Ranger games where he just carried the game. He got out of control. And you, you don't feed kills to his Wind Ranger. Uh. Oh, oh almost go. going for it again. That was a long jump. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Man, has the psychic up is deciding that it is not worth giving it to FCR to heal. That's crazy. Double bracers on the Wind Ranger, huh? Interesting. 
Uh, hey, Universal Heroes getting Universal. A lot of extra damage there. The double is probably the interesting part, actually. It feels like you probably only need to commit to one and then go in for like your your Atos if you want that extra health. Yeah, but Ooh, Schofield. So loses the ward. This is bye bye. gets the D ward. Uh, not a lot they of mana on Weege, actually. Going. No, they don't. They don't have much mana on the the techies. Hey, he's actually gonna bring a board down. Forty gets to kill an analog mid lane is actually crazy. It looks like it was with the help of Hiko. Yeah, it was a solo. Let me check. It was. It was a Laguna kill. Mm. And now, yo, a huge fortification in the mid lane here. Towards the tower. Looks like they are going to go bottom on Kasabali, though. He's getting zoned out of the tower. The creeps coming in from KJ really helping out. Plus the heal. He's not able to take down Schofield. So they'll do their own little bit of uh, maneuvering. They won't. Oh, no, they do have a card on the tower. Yeah, they can't. They can't pressure. At least for now. Unless oh, Luna no. decides that it's not a good idea. Go, uh, coming bottom. Dude, it is kills all over. They're just working them hard on Midas Club now. They still have yet to deal with this cart. KJ and Divine Llama have done a fantastic job of keeping this one in range. And once again, they get a creep wave in. They, you're not careful. You might lose the tower here. Yeah. At least Luna is farming a lot here. Mm, that's true. She's not losing the lane and the tower. Yeah. Oh, KJ. Oh, a little bit more damage. <laughs> okay. Sabley takes the kill. The man knows the fogs. Mm-hmm. Wizard Moon going to get handed over to Bai Lama. <laughs> Much better lane than last time. Man, it was a bit disastrous for him. This time it's only slightly disastrous for him and his team as once again Midas Club have a dominant lane victory. They certainly have the numbers on everybody for Heroic. They must have done some big studying for how they like to play the lanes because hey, this doesn't happen two times in a row without some prep. Mm, two ve a very good ward. I think it spotted the smoke usage on Heroic. Mm. Oh yeah, and it's a deep one too, yeah. Very mm. well done. So the 4DR FCR. is playing safe. Let's see if FCR. Yeah. He's playing like, yeah, completely off of it. Yeah, he Thankfully, was trying like, to break it. Yeah, they're just gonna have to walk it back. Bottom tower is they can kill the DK again. And the rune is... Oh. Rune goes top, it's a haste rune. Laguna will take down KJ. Looking at Analog, he's gonna back up, but they did bring in Divine Llama. They see him and they're gonna instantly run back because the Acorn is bouncing around at 4DR. Could be in danger. It's a rip through from the Timber and Analog gets the Breathe Fire to collect that last kill. Now Hiko doesn't want to let anything to go for free, but Divine Llama, this is not the same Timber you had in last game. FCR trying to focus down, but you're playing in the trees and the left to oh stop the my blast God. off. Another rip through with the Chakram. Divine Llama, a double kill. Give him another maybe. Pause on him. That is actually his own team, but still. You can throw games if you play like this. Oh my god. That, that lane let, lead is completely toast. Let me think of a way that I can translate it to you guys. What KJ just said. <laughs> um, he's asking Midas guys to get an investor because they're crashing a lot. I see. I'm not sure if it's like a I PC see, related see. thing. You know? yeah. yeah. But he said in a different way. I'm sure in a way that is only loving and respecting. Yeah, of course. <laughs> With intimacy. Yes, yes, yes. Because they are friends. KJ and FCR are old friends. Oh, I'm Play sure, TI yeah. together. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, there's there's a lot of key stars all over this game. <laughs> on both sides. Yeah. But that so, does, again, like, completely ruins the, the lane need advantage that they had. Divine Llama is having the game of his life now. The, much yeah. different from last time. This Timber ended up putting in some big work in last game. He just needed a lot of time to catch up. Now, with this sort of advantage, I mean, we're going to see a uh, much earlier Blink, much earlier uh, Eternal Shroud. So we're going to be 
pumping damage out over here. Is that he has Kaya coming on the career already? He's mm. four and zero. Got three kills on the last fight. So he is very strong. Has to just be careful to not die. I don't. It's hard to kill him now. He's actually got levels. Like this is something we didn't see before. Okay, he is running around the trees to hide his ward. Very well done. Uh oh. Oh, he ended up on the other side of the trees. So that is still a very long range jump. That uh, taser will not protect him from everything. Oh, man, this is a dodge <laughs> out one, and he's out of there. Well done, techies. Yeah, they are not bringing numbers here to kill this chamber. They are just farming for now. But they are going for the magic build. It's not going Gleipnir. Uh, uh oh. Power shot stolen. This is a big one. Uh, four points. I just uh, one of the best spells to steal, no matter what. It's a huge long range nuke. Long range nuke. The slow that you get from it as well. Very easy to connect with when you're a Rubik. He wants trying to recover. He died to time stop. Now he's on the triangle. That opens the map for Midas to just to the top tower, but... Was, was that all power shot damage? Is that just like like 500 <laughs> just from the power shot? That's crazy if so. Because uh, now he's he's got to watch out like where he's farming with the Rubik around. Because you can still creep from a mile away. He's just playing with his team now. I think you gotta get a. You gotta get this windrunner off the ground. Gotta get a, a power shot on somebody here to get yourself a kill. I don't know if this is the one. They do use the LSA connecting in with the focus fire and the Lagooner. They get the kill. Forty will be supercharged for a little bit, but uh, well done. That's a, a big kill. Somehow, if they are able to keep killing the Timbersaw, they'll keep themselves in this game. Yeah, they they had to rotate a lot of heroes to do that. Mm -hmm. That's buying time for this vent to recover. He's doing a good job. He farmed a lot oh. of the ancients. He just goes down. Yeah. Easy no, I mean, kill. This, Sven is going to be doing a lot in these fights. He gets everything that he wants. He'll be all the damage that they have on Midas mode. Plus, he'll actually be able to take some hits. I don't think I could say as much. Oh. Okay, he won't come. I was wondering okay. if he was going to try to uh, start something on the Luna, but he backs off wisely. Doesn't have OT. Yeah. He just wanted to say hi to his friend. <laughs> oh, they're actually doing well on the tower damage up here, but as you said, they, they have to bring so many people to do this. If two heroes are sitting behind Alina, your supports aren't getting farmed. Meanwhile, like Enchantress is one of the best farming supports. Yeah, KJ is doing a, a good job at farming and not taking space out of his team. Mm, yeah. That's the hard part sometimes. Anytime you can take aggressive camps as a support, even if you're only getting like two or three of them before you die, that is farm that like the enemy carry offlane or whoever is not able to farm themselves. Second game that Miles is trying to force Heroic to Come and defend this bottom tower. They're just bringing some numbers to see if Heroic buys it. I think that's just to open the top tower for them to take. So Heroic is just putting some supports in there. His van goes there, farms one wave, then comes back to the triangle. Mmm, it's a little bit of a different build from the Timber Saw this game. Do you think this is because he actually has a game this time, or is there something that he's reacting to that he thinks just the blink isn't needed? This is the standard timber build if you're having a good game. Mm, the okay. hero was stronger. As soon as Whisper oh. joined OG, <laughs> he was destroying games with his items. Mm. I see, so maybe this is just uh, he actually has the net worth to get the Kaya before the blink. 
That's that's yeah. the only thing that's happening. Okay. With this chill, he's free to do whatever he wants. If you he feels like he needs magic resistance, which is the case, you can go shrouds. If you like you it's a free game, right? you just sky Sanj. The shroud is still like I, I know that the timber nerfs were like something, but the eternal shroud still being like kind of the finishing out the square that the timber needs. The Sierra is still very good. So they are bringing bringing Yasha on the DK. They have the dagger. I wonder who is making the first step. Hmm. I imagine it's going to have to be the DK at some point, but maybe they'll just timber chain in on the, uh, like have the, the timber start everything. He blinks timber chain. Hopefully they get enough. Well, somebody have right Manta now. coming on the courier. They will be able mm. to pressure towers a lot easier. They have a very good ward on this van. There's also something that they were missing last game, but oh, they're going to be missing a techies, I believe. Gustavole trying to help him out. Oh. Uh, uh, click I don't think so. Huh. Thought that were a lot more heroes coming. I suppose so. But oh, uh, yeah, no. I... DK. The enemy triangle. Uh. It was just farming there. Uncontested. Uh, level 2 ulti. You got the splash damage now. KJ is pushing in with his creeps. Bot side is rough. You don't see anybody on Radiant showing on a wave. Wayne, uh, weeb. It's not because they're like hunting, it's just they don't feel safe. Look at this ward. Very, very good. Also, this, uh, this Manta from Luna is going to finish off something that they didn't really have last game. They didn't have any way to push towers without their heroes physically being at the wave. This Manta will actually really help them cut and do a little bit better with their tower defense, I think. Yeah, they can just split the map. Mm -hmm. Make heroic constantly having to fix the waves. So Luna can just shove bottom, TP top, and go for a play. They're probably waiting the eclipse. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. Just mm. to go top. Or go for a smoke play. Because Lina uh, is ready. Lina has the agonims. Oh! She went quick ags. I mean, she is vulnerable, but wow. Dyer's middle tower is under Radiant's top tower. Uh why are we TPing here? Radiant Tower's gone. Yeah, he has Eclipse and the Aghanims. That was the timing. Problem is this ward seeing everything. Oh, by Lama. Gonna get linked on up, dragged back, and this is FCR. This is where he shines. Instant damage onto the timber. Now, again, they lost the tower. They TP'd a few years up to do this. But, hey. But they're not committing to the tower. Right? I think only Costabli is gonna stay there with Illusions, but there, there are two good wards on Heroic. If they find out Costable is alone there, they can try to do something. But it doesn't seem like to be the case. Trying to chase him down. Oh, 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 oh my gosh. goodness! He's gonna get hit. Wait for is it. He? Wait for no, it. Okay. It oh. went back to the base. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. What? Hey, yo? Oh, this is a vibe. Sven has BKB. Can't they contest this? Oh, they certainly can, but Sven ain't coming. You can TP to the outpost. Doesn't feel like they want to. I don't think they know. There was a gender creep around. I'm pretty sure they knew. Huh? Huh? They get the kills. They're going bottom on the Sven. Plus, they can just go. Oh, my lord. Kill one here. Force of the BKB out from K1. He's taking a lot of damage. They didn't think that TP would last so long, but I don't think they're going to kill him, anyways. 
That is BKB ulti out of there, but he did get a lot of damage on that bot tower. Yeah, this is a nine seconds BKB just to escape. What is Midas doing with this? Hmm. Oh. They're keeping it even. Very good for them, but they are about to lose their Tormentor if they don't do something up top side. That could be the, the faded switch. We've seen teams that, like, they're both so good at this timing that they will just, like, both go to the other side and take the enemy's Tormentor, but we already have the bombs dropped, actually, thanks to the Rubik. So this is going to not last very long at all. I think it spawns and instantly dies. Yeah, okay. Yeah, almost. And the Vite got it. Oh, analog and danger. There's not a whole lot of healthy people right now on the dire side, so he's just gonna get lagooned once more on the DK. Everybody else has to run away. They'll only pick up one. Yeah, a DK kill is huge. I'm not gonna downplay that, but you did lose your Tormentor. It's kinda rough. Yeah, and he went to the Timber. That is very good on the hero. He deals a lot of AoE damage now. Even damage towers. But yeah, it was costly. Mm -hmm. I feel like Midas right should now. be getting more out of this Aegis. It's 2k for Heroic for some reason. I think they've had the net worth lead for a while. Ooh, KJ. He surely... Yeah, okay. With yeah, help with my line, I to go there. Map. What's, what is happening? So, is this supposed to be some sort of like farming Aegis? Might discover like, look, if we get items, we win game. Is that true? If you're out farming the enemy, yeah, but... You're not. The advantage was 2k, now it's 3k. And for yeah. Heroic. This is a... Uh... They, they have to know this as well. Like, there's been a Sven that's been damn near like contesting the Luna farm. Down bot side. So, like, they surely know that they are not winning the, the farm area on this map. If I think Lena is bigger than she is, but even then, they have BKB on Luna now in two minutes left on the Aegis. This gotta be go time. At least for you to smoke, kill someone, then you go to the tower close to the fight. What is uh? So we're almost to BKB on Marcy. But I, I say almost. She really has had a hard time farming. Pico, they have not gotten a lot of a good stuff done on the map. Jump in, finds the Rubik, but he's invisible and they do not have any vision. I almost feel right, bad. Right, Pico? No sentries, right? Mm hmm But I'm pretty sure a BKB is coming soon. Radiance top tower is under attack. Huh. Soon, but you need a lot of... Gotta spend some golden farm. sentries as well. Here and there. <laughs> Oh, field. KJ. He has TP. Radiant oh, top side, you mean? Yeah. Oh, but on Sven, Laguna will jump back in on SCR. This is a BKB, and he's actually just turning yeah. around. Uses the Dragon Slave. FCR wants to keep going, but... Oh. Same place. Same place. Why? Okay, FCR just dies, by the way, and now they're jumping back in on 4DR. Divine Llama is unkillable. They'll use the Eclipse, but now it's stolen out by the Rubik. Divine Llama still should die here, but the blast off isn't enough to keep him locked in. One more jump away, Kostabile picks up the kill. Schofield has an Eclipse. Do not walk near that guy. <laughs> he doesn't want the smoke. Mm -mm. But yeah, man, two very good kills for Heroic. That, uh -huh. that, that's basically what, what I was saying. What is Midas doing with these Aegis? Mm -hmm. They're not pushing waves into Heroic Towers. Oh no. They're not <laughs> out farming the enemy. They're losing towers and fights. Oh. Yeah, no, they're they're losing a lot on the map right now. Uh I don't I don't know. I feel like your draft had to be ahead. Your draft is now significantly behind. And this isn't going to get better for you. If you got that Sven Q, okay. I could say that it's it's okay for them to just trade farm here and there, but they tried two times to kill this Sven, failed both attempts. I think they should bring more numbers if they're really trying to commit on this Sven mm. kill, because K1 is just doing the same. 
He goes bottom, he pushes the wave, he farms the jungle, he comes back. Yeah. Look at Scofield. He wants to solo someone. <laughs> uh, oh no. Blinken dragging back into the eclipse. Stun was actually under a creep. Couldn't get close <laughs> enough to FCR. <laughs> he stunned the creep. And they, and they tips it. It was like, good job, buddy. Yeah, misclicks happen sometimes. FC, I tell you what, everybody on this Midas Club item just got a bunch of items added to the wish list that they need. Somehow oh, FCR no. needs BKB and Ags, I believe, to somehow pump in this one. Uh, Lena needs a BKB for sure, maybe even like a Hurricane Pike, something to... May maybe an E-Blade, I don't know. I feel like your magic damage build just isn't going to work as much this time around. She kind of has to wait Luna. for the BKBs to get lower on duration, mm -hmm. or to just instantly blow, blow people. Yeah. When they have to be aggressive on Midas Club, they're not doing a great job as they did on the first game. No, 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 no. I think this game, your, your draft is just so much more fragile. And it has been getting bounced around. It is cracking. It is not holding. And uh, I think in one more fight, you might just break. Look at Scofield. They, they keep pushing this bottom wave. And Midas is not uh, finding a good way to oh stop no. it. I almost feel bad. I almost feel bad. I think they really need to smoke towards their bottom lane. <laughs> okay. That fortification. Oh, it was for up here. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was for the midways. Like, chill, that was the most chill. childish board I've ever seen. That would be a BM board uh. play. Oh, doesn't kill the wave actually. Doesn't kill any creep. Dyer's top tower is under attack. First on Look, K1 is doing the same. Oh, what is he? Time and time again. He comes bottom, he farms the wave, he comes back. Uncontested. Yeah. Where's this basher on Marcy? Twice, man? but they needed like five heroes. Or at least the Luna. Scanning. Almost butterfly. No, no butterfly completed, which means Sven will be a little bit unprepared for this Luna. Uh, yeah, he's going Satanic next. I do think though, for K1, the game is a little bit simple as just like kill everybody else. Luna isn't pumping that much damage just yet, so your your team is still reliant on you killing Lena or maybe killing the. The Windrunner, just anybody else. Radiance middle tower is under Kostable attack. missed the wave. He used the twin gate too, too late. Oh. The illusions are gonna... Uh, K1 teeping into this one, but look at the damage from the Divine Lava. Coming on in by himself, they just murder Hiko here. As the BKB's out, FCR trying to take down the Sven, still a little bit more damage. The last focus iron, the power shot, he'll take him down. This was a buyback on Hiko as well. Now Lena trying to stay in the fight because FCR is well too low. Maybe he gets away from this one. A little bit more time, but a blink forward there it is. LSA is off the mark. And now Hiko, this could be a dieback for the Marcy. Stolen rebound, jumps on forward, and that's going to be three gone, plus the dieback of Marcy, only losing the Sven. I mean, good kill to start off, but the rest of the team is still an issue for you. Yeah, it took so much for them to get the Sven kill. Had to commit the Range Ranger in there. It's, it's hard for them this time, because they rely on these stackies to find a good blast off, or mm -hmm. the Marcy to find a good opening. They don't have the lasso, the blink toss. Also, Lucky this Luna, for them, Rosh is not alive yet. That's true. This Luna just isn't pushing any damage through. I feel like FCR is getting the focus fire. They're trying to take down the Sven. His BKB, he feels damn near unkillable. You need so many items on this Midas Club team. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Yep. Looking for Shun over there. 
you need to just split push. Mm -hmm. Unless you're, you're oh! trying to fight. They TP fight out of the Sven just before Roshan is about to spawn. You can get the twin gates. You can wait for the Rosh bottom. I think that's what they're doing. They're like, look, they're not taking Rosh up here. We don't have to take Rosh up here. So they can just go bottom. I think it's a really nice move here from Heroic. They are not in a rush. They had, they got 11k. It's really on Midas Club. They gotta make something to come back. And two games in a row, I feel like the team fight has been lacking from both teams. They've been much more just like damage, damage, damage. Oh, stunned up. Plus oh, the, the shackle. shackle into the Laguna and the Focus Fire. K1, he's just very, very dead. And no buyback with Roshan spawning. They, aren't they Jack Rosh? Don't they care? Cause I don't care. Just go Rosh. Costable did a great job before going to the fight. He went for the rune. He found the illusion rune. He, he's been cutting the mid wave constantly. Mm. But yeah, focus fire up as well. I mean, this Rosh can definitely get taken down easy. Yeah, they will kill the Rosh. That's for sure. I can't believe that Rosh is yelling. This is a 10,000 net worth lead for Midas Club, and they have gotten both Roches. Holy moly. Yeah, I, well was, done uh, for them to play the map find. like this. Yeah, they just pushed the mid lane with the illusions. They found the perfect target on this mm -hmm. man. Shackles landing. So if we get to the point where we just have three carries on Midas Club, can they win this game? Can they win was the question? Yeah. Um, I think they can. I think they can. It's not easy. Oh, it's not easy. Uh, hopefully get the Agonis up to here for Windrunner. Which, very, very good. Uh, it's actually a really nice initiation tool for them that they're missing in this game. Hirak just needs to survive during BKBs on Midas. Mm. Just to be able to turn back. They're trying to clear these creeps. They actually want to push mid now, but these creeps from AJ. Yeah, come on. This is your BKB fly Luna. You gotta do something now. Mm -hmm. Stolen Lucent Beam. Pretty long range, nice stun from the Rubik. Setting up. I so, thinks he can actually rip through somebody here. Maybe get a good start to the fights for them. Analog's gonna start pushing bot side. They really want to take this tower, but they're clearing the creeps. The Vilama is even pump faking as if he could. If Lina was here, they would be able to kill this tower. Oh, but they're smoking up on the backside. They're gonna take the tower, but at what cost? Fortification. Oh We're pausing. We need to think about it, guys. What Dive Lama is doing really makes Midas Club thing. Okay, what is the plan here? Because this chamber is baiting, clearly. Are they coming for from behind? What angle are they choosing to come? You gotta drop you gotta know that Heroic's coming. around dangerous they're backing out entirely hours not gone yet we just gonna be the first one to show they want to kill him first he's the one who made them pause kill him now he'll drop on the tech he's now luna in danger has the ages but on the other side they are maybe losing their rubik here gotcha at the end lena has to get away from this one the lsa is not in time there's a huge stun in it'll connect but fcr he has the bkb gustavo that's gonna be his first life Focus Fire is still connecting onto the Sven, but without the rest of your team around, FCR, he doesn't want to stay in this one. They'll get a stolen shackle from Rubik. Maybe they can get the kill. It's a huge stun once again. A triple from K1, and you lose everybody on Midas Club. Yeah, they just isolated the Lina. K1 just jumping the techies, then switching targets because Luna was with the Aegis. And Davai Lama just zoning heroes out of the team fight. Very well, very well done, mm -hmm. Heroic. 
This is likely a kill. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, this is at least one side. Oh, uh, yeah. They will have OT on Zvan and BKB in 20 seconds. So they the might fake back here. Oh, you think so? They don't have a smoke quite yet, but they can still far. Oh, they want to just back. <laughs> oh, okay. By the looks of it, KJ just yeah. said the word. I, mean, I, I kind of agree with you. You got the BKB and the God Strength. This isn't an impossible fight if you stay here. In the end, it's all on what KA wants to do. Hmm. If he says, I can still fight, I want to fight, they got to go with him. Yep. And they'll just easily grab a tower. They could go for another one. I think at this point now, they could have gone bottom. They could have continued the push with these heroes dead. Now, with everybody back up, a little bit hard. In order for this Lena to work, you need to keep finding these important kills first. Mm -hmm. She's a very burst heavy so hero. With the Agonist means... Scepter, you're all in on burst. Yeah, that means you need to land a good shackle. You need to land a good strike away from the fog. Or at least a good blast off. Don't walk up that high ground. They're pinging the bottom wave. So they're just gonna cut the wave. They don't have to go back. And start to actually push up towards bot side. A1. Very big. That was A to connect first. Still has a pretty good barrier on him right now. They've almost worked it down. Looks like they finally pushed through the full barrier. Now you can start hitting the hero. <laughs> Yeah, but look at DK. Oh my this goodness. is so annoying. Now the second one. They've taken the tower. Sable is showing pretty far up there. Gotta be careful. Let's go Sable's next item. Oh, it's gonna be Kanda. That makes sense. Yep. Very good damage item. I think any hero that can build Kanda should still build Kanda. Just like your Luna. Your Phantom Lancer, if you're if you're playing that hero and you're bold enough. PA. Wait, did they? What is KJ buying? MKB. Okay. Based. Based. Makes sense. You kill the Wind Ranger. Yeah. You kill the Luna. Looks like they're it's making a move time. back towards bottom again. He's just got an army of creeps plus a few carts. They're just waltzing into the base. What are you going to do about this, Midas Club? No glyph. Solo they Jackal. Just oh, that's a rough one to give away. Jumping on top of this fan here. No Aegis, but no techies by anymore. And now SCR in danger. Has the focus fire on the timber, but how long can he stay here? The fight has exited the base. You can't stay here any longer. Yeah, where where is my Lena? Lena? Oh? She was there, but I think she came late. Oh no. They sell BKB. Turns around with the Satanic. She just took all of her health. Oh man. No BKB, this is no painful Satanic. painful to left. watch. I know. They're just playing with Midas. They're just going when Yuan has OT. They are just struggling them inside the base. And killing them slowly. Mm -hmm. Twenty thousand net worth lead right now for heroic, and uh, I'm not sure where the next step is. Forty R is going for an a Dagon, which very good versus the illusions of the DK. Also pretty good for your burst damage if you're going all in on that magic burst. Uh, but it does mean that Luna is still your frontliner, so she's got the butterfly. I think she's. Got the Satanic as well. Uh, maybe you go Scotty on Luna. Continue to just be somebody who can step in these fights. Not sure. Your damage is coming from Lena and Windrunner, though. Like, awesome. you've got to fill in that gap, I think, if you're SDR. Your hero is the only one that can. You're not dealing a lot of damage on Ranger Ranger at this point. You're relying on your BGB duration. Hmm. 
But they're just kiting you. Look at those Rifters. I mean, he's just allowed to do this because there's no HP on these heroes. They've already used Hocus Fire. Dragging him back. Lifted up, actually, Castabole. K1 looks unscathed. Turns back onto the Luna. And a huge kill for them. And they will continue on through the base. As with no Luna, I don't know if you can defend this any longer. It's Fragility. Almost safe to call it. They might almost be. safe to call it. What stunned Costabile for so long? I think it was a stolen shackle. Oh my god. I think it was. Let me check the... Oh boy. Looking in, they do get the Laguna, but the silence and now the Soul Laguna turn on him, baby! Oh. Schofield with Schofield, the kill, Hiko man. looks at a massacre of his mid laner, they'll call Ooh. GG. Heroic will take game number two, and much at, much like Boom, they'll waltz themselves into the next round of the closed qualifiers here. Uh, they'll be playing each other, looks like, uh, not in the next series, but the series after. Infinity. Midas now plays Infinity on the lower bracket. Uh, no, I think it's a Starbucks. Starbucks? Oh, they go to the second. Yeah. Thing? Okay. Yep, yep. Oh, I see, I see. Because Beast Coast already lost mm -hmm. to Ultra Boom. Yep. So, they're going to play the Starbucks team. Midas Club, unfortunately, again, I, I think this lineup just did not have a whole lot of the HP that it needed to. And uh, Heroic, two times in a row, they do a standard draft and they get a standard game. Uh, it's looking like they have a pretty good understanding of what they need. And Divine Llama also really owned on this Timber Saw. It didn't look like it last game, but this game, he put on a really good performance. Yeah, that triple kill on the bottom lane mm -hmm. really put, put him on the game. He was very strong after that. Had Kaya finished. He, was, uh, he had a lot of gold left to, to go to the Blink Dagger next. So yeah. they... Really could not make the Lina work on Midas Club. You really need to be snowballing with this magic damage on the Lina. Mm -hmm. It's not like Maelstrom, BKB, Lina, Gleipnir, and you're running lanes, killing people. So, yeah, you're really on a timer. Uh, I love the draft from Heroic as well to end it out with the Dragon Knight. I uh, didn't up, end up laning into the Lina well, uh, but in the game, they just did not have the damage for all three heroes. You could not kill a Dragon Knight, a Timbersaw, and a Sven. It was way too hard for them. So, Heroic, we'll see if they stick with this, uh, again, kind of standard drafting with the meta, or if they want to change things up versus uh, Boom. I think they're doing a good job, but for Midas Club, they definitely need to go back and revisit some of these drafts because I think they're just all leaning on one style. You know, in this case, it was ranged burst. You need to diversify that portfolio, man. Don't, don't all in on that sort of stuff. Yeah, they, they were just not able to keep snowballing out of this Lina and mm -hmm. Ranger. They got Aegis with the Luna, but yeah, Heroic just outsmarting them on the team fights. Even fighting against Aegis, finding good angles, good openings. So yeah, yeah they played very well in the second game. Yeah, incredibly hard to execute that for Midas Club and the Vailama and crew. They definitely took advantage of it. Uh, guys, we got a little bit of, bit of a break here. We're going to be coming back uh, with... I believe the next round of lower bracket matchups here in about one hour. Or so uh, get a break, go ahead and uh, get some food, and we'll be back at it again in about one hour with our next round of the lower bracket. So stick around, there is more Dota 2 on the way.
starts with this A person that you miss Mind draws a blank I wanna go back, back to the early days When life was an escape Now I just wait for better days I lost myself in your reality I lost myself
It starts with this A person that you miss Mind draws a blank I wanna go back, back to the early days When life was an escape Now I just wait for better days I lost myself in your reality I lost myself
Everybody and welcome back. It's going to be our second series today of the Dream League Season 23 Closed Qualifiers. Uh, we just got done with a uh, not as tight series as we were expecting. It was a 2-0 going the way of Heroic. They secured themselves upper bracket berth. And for us, Ace, we got Infinity Burst East Coast. Oh, guys, welcome back. It was a little break, you know, after the long first game and mm -hmm. a not so long game too. I think we are ready to watch Beast Coast and Infinity now. I'm not excited for this one. I feel like this, uh, it is do or die. Infinity did 2-0 versus Akatsuki. Only 30 minute games for them each time. Uh, Beast Coast, unfortunately, they, they drew the games out versus Boom, but they still did end up losing. Beast Coast was the, our favorites really to uh, take these sort of games until, uh, I forget what's, what series it was, but Boom finally has gotten the upper hand in, I believe, the last two best of threes that they played versus uh, Beast Coast. And what's two long games? Uh, one 59 minute game and one 44 minutes game. So, yeah, if Beast Coast manages to go late game, late, late game against Boom, I think against Infinity, they should have like more chances of winning, I would say. Mm. Oh, here it is. It was the Elite League qualifiers. Uh, the Elite League closed qualifier uh, for SA. Boom did 3-0 Beast Coast uh, after 2 0 them also in the upper bracket. So they were 5-0 versus Beast Coast that entire tournament. Then we turn to this time. Boom has 2 0 them. They are, at least in the last one's live scene, they're 7-0 versus Beast Coast in the last few games. And has this... Or gone through some sort of, like, did they acquire someone new? Was because is he a recent join? I think Pakaz is the one that is there forever. Oh, so it's just, uh, so it's Slotums. 
on January 5th, Slotum's returned. This is a very yeah. young team, so... He was he was out, then he came back. See. They started with Slotum's, then they kicked him, I think. I see. Then they bought him back. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, they're supposed to be one of the best SA teams. They still need to get on their foot to improve as a team, you know, to be able to beat Heroic, because... Last games against Heroic were not very good for Boom. Mm. Yeah, no. Uh, they actually did get... So it was 3-2 in qualifiers uh, for Birmingham. And then it was 3-0 yeah. for qualifiers. Yeah. Uh, so I believe Dream League 22. So, yeah, no, they still oh, have somebody that's in the face up. Yeah, no, that's true. It was a 3-0 first. Now it's a 3-2. Then it's going to be a 2-3 where they win. <laughs> If they get to the finals. True. If they do. But we still have a ways to go because it is Beast Coast and Infinity on the mark today. Uh, Infinity this time with Parker uh, sitting at the carry slot. So we've seen uh, a lot of Parker. He actually is one of the ones that was starting off with the carry gyro, like, for no reason. Like, there was still Sven, there was still Lifestealer. Those were the top two carries. But, you know, Parker still wanted to play the gyrocopter. So he has laid a lot of ground for the SA region and how to play this hero. Uh, he's got a great supporting cast around him, too. He's a player with personality, so if he wants to play the gyro, just give him the gyro. True. And hope he can carry you. Yeah, no, don't, don't make him upset. He's a great player, and I think that the uh, the gyro is a hero that again can itemize for any situation. I do like seeing those openers with the gyrocopter, and uh, if you are Infinity, you're able to look back at the last few Beast Coast games. Uh, They've actually been pretty diverse in their lineup. Versus Beast Coast, or versus Boom, they played two completely different sets of heroes. Uh, and then versus the Star Backs, looks like a little bit of the same. They didn't really repeat anything. So it looks like this team is able to go multiple different ways with their draft. I would assume that you still want to focus down these offlaners. Uh, Vitaly is a fantastic player. The more and more that I talk to Lil about it, the more and more that I, I watch his games, Vitaly is maybe one of the best offlaners in SA. I mean, he played TI in Singapore, and there he got. I think it was. I mean, he he passed, he go he went past through the the group stage at least, mm. which it was a great result for him yeah. playing his first TI. So this, this this guy he's got potential. Oh yeah, he's not that young. He's twenty five now, but yeah, he has a lot to show. Yeah, I'm gonna be excited to see what they do with him. I've seen a lot of slardars from him, which is. Very good uh, in the current meta. Anytime that you're playing versus a Light Stealer or a Sven starter, it seems like a pretty free matchup for you. You have to be careful. You can't, like, overall first pick it or anything. That hero has a huge weakness uh, to the Troll Warlord, which again, Parker would not be ashamed to take out, or even the TA uh, would both be fine <laughs> things to play against it. Actually, I, I want, I'm kind of interested, TA. right? Like, I wonder if they first ban it for Beast Coast. They just don't want to play against it at all. So... Parker has like a hero pool that consists of Morphlin, TA. He's very good with other heroes, but these two are the special ones. Yeah. You can add Medusa in there, I think, but I think every carry player has to play a good Medusa these days, right? So you can't count this hero. But Morph TA, one of his best heroes. So mm. if you feel like. It's a good TA game. If you feel like it's a good morph game against Parker, you just bend the hero and don't have to worry about it at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wonder what, the, it. wonder what they do then on uh, Beast Coast regarding that. I know that for Infinity, if you do have a great Medusa player, you'll probably leave in the Doom. Doom uh, hates playing against the Medusa hero. You don't actually lose any of your HP. You can still press uh, items, which means you can still press your mana boots, which Medusas have been going for in the carry role. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll see if maybe they want to do some sort of like Bandusa pick the Doom so that there's just nothing else that you really have that you can play against it or they just ignore it entirely. There's a lot of games that you can play with that sort of draft with those offlaners. Because uh, we saw, like, in this D patch, I don't think the demographic of Dota changed much. I don't think these heroes are as stompy as they were before, but I still think that they're the best ones in the pool. Yeah, I was just checking on the lobby who got the priority. And Beast Coast, they want to go with the first pick, and uh, Infinity will go with Radiant side. Mm. We saw uh, Midas Club prior prioritizing the Radiant side as well in the previous series, and they lost 2-0. Oh, wow. 
Yeah, no, I, I really like, uh, I like first. Cool. People have actually been banning the Doom early just so they can pick up something like a Timber Saw uh, straight away. I also think that the 18 pick is very strong. 18 and 23. You have two picks protected by bans. That is very hard to answer both of them sometimes on 24. So a lot of teams have done a great job of like forcing a double response uh, to a hero that just does not exist, you know, on that last pick. So we'll, we'll see if they force uh, East Coast or Infinity into any pickles. You're banning the TA first ban. You're not playing this hero, sir. That's you better crazy. go and practice more heroes. <laughs> yeah, I mean they're uh, they're eliminating the Parker TA. I'm about this it. This is them saying, not me. Yeah. Just clear. No, 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 no. It's the I understand. They definitely don't want to play it against it at all. It's one of the heroes that even when we saw the DPC, I don't think we saw many TA games ever. Because there was always Parker and Picasso who like loved playing this yeah. hero, and so it would just get like insta banned. So the Mars ban, Batch Rider, and Conca. So Infinity really going for the offlaners. Mm -hmm. Um, Biscos got the first pick against Boom. They got first pick on the second game, and they they went with the tiny first pick. Yeah. This is a this is an interesting approach as well. You can play it as a mid laner. You can play it as an off laner. You can play it as a four. Yeah. The off lane tiny is one that's been a little bit surprising to me, because that hero yeah. seems like it's very mobile, and you want to leave the lane, you want to go into the mid lane, but people will just stay in lane and try to dominate a carry with it, which is kind of wild. And get the items. Mm. If this hero gets his items in a good timing, he can just destroy the game. Problem is when you have the tiny offlane, the other, the enemy team, usually they want to kill you <laughs> every time they can. <laughs> Look at the offlane bands. Kanka, Mars, DK, all out of there. They are targeting Vitaly. Beast Coast, what do they have left? They open up with the gyrocopter. They know that Parker wants it. They know that they can flex it. I like the start up here. I'm not sure if there's a hero that directly counters the gyro in the offlane. This is just for the game to be bad for a gyro carry so Parker can play it. Mm. I mean, the <laughs> Lumpy. Mm. Five seconds remaining. Yeah, a lot of flags here. So, Infinity. There's an Undying uh, possibility here. Yes. Um, we saw some Enchantress today as well. Beast Coast's I wonder if they do the scope. Oh, Lena! Whoa. Okay. Okay, so this is the matchup. If it's a gyro carry infinity, they're happy with it already. Interesting. So they're just doing this solely to get a good carry matchup. If the gyro stays carry, they have a hero that will outrange it, that will nuke it down, and they're just going to be happy with this on infinity. Yeah, now I just need to protect the Lena during the game. If there is a carry that cannot carry Lina, you can just end it now. Mm. You'll pick first on the second phase, so you're allowed to do that, I guess. To do that. It's a little bit surprising to me, but what are your... Because I'm thinking of the offlane options versus the gyrocopter bit. Are, are you just like, whatever offlane I get, all he needs to do is get farm. It could be something like, you know, a, a Tidehunter or something, something that's able to team fight for me, but you just don't care anymore. As long as you have the carry matchup, you're fine. Mm. I mean, Lina is just a solid hero when it it is played as a carry, and Infinity plays it as a mid laner as well. Mm. So I don't think they're too worried about it. I see. Now. Okay. Oh, Clockwork banned out. Now that's a respect. I mean, the hero did get buffed. One of the few heroes that got a straight buff in the last patch, <laughs> but I on. believe it is 50% of the damage done by the Cog's pushback. Uh, with their, Sorry, 50% of the mana that is taken away from the Cog's pushback is now yeah, damage yeah, applied. Yeah, whatever. If they really want to buff the Clockwork, they need to do more. Uh, he's very mobile. He's pretty tanky. I like him with the blade mail. What else do you think he needs? Like, just cooldowns or something? I don't think the hero is bad, but there are better options for 
fourth position and five position roll. So. So it has to be like cooldowns and numbers, probably just like yeah, up there, that there, damage. Yeah, there's just no reason to pick a clockwork unless you're trying to counter the primal beast with the hook shot on the Five OT, seconds, something right? like this. Hmm. So no offlaners available, right? <laughs> right? They they're taking out so many, so they even eliminate the faces void. I feel like, uh, what, Doom? Actually, we talked about it ad nauseum, but Doom is still in pool. They go for the Dawnbreaker, yo! I mean, this is a classic combo that we've actually seen from Beast Ghost, where they want to take the Dawnbreaker with the Gyrocopter. Instead, they take it for themselves. Yeah, Dawnbreaker, Lina, this could be a lane, but since we, we are seeing a lack of offlaners, I think you might have to pick the Dawnbreaker as an offlane here. Just... Let the hero be, see how it goes, how it develops on the draft. Yeah, it can I mean, definitely be a, a lane. Don't break Arlena sounds scary. Right now, uh, the, the hero isn't that great, but Nyx Assassin feels almost okay. Tiny gets picked up instead, so that's going to be another flexible hero. Into the Rubik, which is not as flexible. We're probably going to see that at the pause four. Very good versus Alina. LSA is a fantastic stun to steal. Yeah. They still need the matchup for the Lina on the lane and as a carry. Mm. So Beast Coast, they got to solve seconds, two problems remaining. on this draft. Five seconds remaining. And yeah, I like this Rubik pick. I mean, I, I don't really mind it. It's it's okay versus Lina. Let's strike away. Great spell. If you get your hands on this on it. Don't break your spells are, are not great. You can always steal his ot if you have vision mm. but yeah it's not a ravage yeah so you want this dawnbreaker to be in the offlane so we're probably looking at honestly like a hard set pause four pause five maybe coming in from infinity they could just double up supports yeah they don't I mean, they they can that pick right, one. They can pick one core here. And they could, but kind of moves the flex. All right, Techies is in. It's a big damage pause four. If you want to go that way? Hmm. Beast coasts turn to pick. Oh, oh, that was God. not on my list. The yeah, ogre so magi. Is that like ogre Lina lane and Dawnbreaker Techies? I would like that. I kind of like how they wrap this up, too, because we like both of those lane synergies. Plus, if the mid lane matchup, if it does end up being a tiny mid, you can just throw the lane to mid, grab yourself another carry that lanes with the, gy or with the Ogre Magi, which is honestly a lot of them. I really like what they've done here, but I don't think it's up to Beast Coast to try to get a lane versus this Dawn Techies uh, that survives. I think you need a strong pause five here. Undying could be it. But Leaner yeah, is a really good tomb hitter. Yeah, but that's only Lena, right? Yeah. At least for now. That clockwork ban was so smart. Cause they could pick clockwork here and always have a close gap on the Lena, even when she has BKB. I mean hey. they banned the clock or what I'm what I'm saying. It's a pretty good Doom game now, thinking that there is the heal on the Dawnbreaker. They go for the Morphling, though. Another healer stolen away from Parker. The Gyrocopter, the Morphling, the TA, all of them are out. It does commit this to a support Gyrocopter. Uh, but... So it's Gyromorph. Right? That doesn't seem like a... That seems like he could get run over, actually, but... Maybe it's not the strongest lane from Don Techies. Maybe I'm giving it too much power. Radiant team ban. I think Morph will probably be able to farm on this lane. The action will be involving like the other three heroes. Yeah. And Morph joining whenever he can with uh, the shotgun, waveform. All right, you want some base takes? Radiant team ban. All right. This so, isn't going to happen, but I just want it me. to happen anyways. So we throw the Lena carry, all right? Give my man the Ogre Magi offline with the techies. Mid that Dawnbreaker, <laughs> give me an AA, all right? Ruin this would be the dream. 
<laughs> this would be the dream scene. The off lane watching ogre. ogre core. Yeah. I don't think it's gonna happen. I think that like uh people have been playing a lot of just like spirit vessel builders versus the morphling. And nobody has really valued that AA as a hero for a long time. Especially not with a basis void on your team. I'd like to see Dagon Ogre. Mm-hmm. The the pause five ogre is a tricky one. I do think at least in some pubs, I think you can go Mana Boots Midas. I don't think you can go straight Midas. But I do think that you could get a Mana Boots to like make sure you can still cast your spells and then go in for the Midas, but only in a winning game. If you're losing, I don't think it's worth like trying to get that investment in because you end up like <laughs> you're having gloves in your backpack for so long. You never actually finish the Midas. Your team needs a four staff. You have a recipe coming out on Courier. It's just, it's not possible. I hope they don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I would agree. I don't want to see Midas Ogre unless it's off lane Ogre or mid lane Ogre. Oh, Magnus. Ooh, spicy. I like this. It kind of plays into the Dawnbreaker though, right? Like Dawnbreaker, now you know when you're going to art like ulti. Whenever there's an RP skewer back, you're going to use your ulti in. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not only the RP. What's the strong about this? Mo this Magnus empowering morph is great because you give base damage. Mm. The skewer plays you're able to make. You can just RP the Lina when she presses BKB. So she's not hitting, even though there's the Dawnbreaker ulti mitigating all the damage. You don't have to kill the Lina during the RP. You're just preventing Lina from hitting with BKB. So that's yeah. still nice. And the Rubik is on your team. True. No stolen RPs. They could, now that they know that this is likely going to be the uh, tinier mag mid, I think you can definitely just shove the Lena into the carry roll. Or, sorry, into the mid roll and just go for like ABBA. Oh no. They do the exact opposite. They're going for big team fight here. Invoker yeah, coming were... out. Huh. They were lacking team fight. We were really liking team fight, and with the Invoker, we are still not sure if it's Quas, Wax, or Exhort. Oh, that's a fair I'd rather point. go with Quas Wax here because you can get the vessel. Yeah, I'd agree with that. They, they were they were definitely missing this. a vessel builder on their team. Yeah, I like this. I mean, uh, Quas Wax is pretty good. Your team does have damage elsewhere, like Techie's a little bit of damage. The Dawnbreaker, actually, since it is in a core role, will, will deal decent damage, but mostly. Alina, so uh, I like everything that they've done here with this Infinity lineup. I think Beast Coast, the Tiny should have a slightly tough time versus the Voker, but not like the worst thing in the world. A lot of this is going to be lane dependent on how Beast Coast come out and can they get the farm for Morphling and get him involved early. Tiny can deny a lot on this lane. So he can really start ahead here. Hmm. And he got two good supports to gank on runes, Rubik and Gyro, a lot of damage, some stuns. So yeah, if they get rune control, they get early blink dagger on Tiny. That pretty much sets them up for success. Mm -hmm. okay. Tipping out Tips tired to start up. man. Prepare for battle. What'd that guy do? This was a good luck tip. I see, I see. We don't <laughs> see Always that friendly. too often. I almost feel fine. <laughs> Muzito. Oh yeah, we got Mu playing five. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. He's playing four since the beginning. Now he's giving it a shot as a five plus. Just gonna be greedy. That's all it is. Wait, actually, he's playing... Wait, Gyro... So Almisho, he's marked as a 4 on Liquipedia. And I think Moose Almisho. as a 5, but I yeah. think Moose is playing the Rubik. Uh, yeah, no, so. Almisho, we'll see. He's about to die, so I think it could be pause 5 now, yep. Sorry, guys. I guess Moose is going to have to get all the gold. I'll just buy Ward <laughs> since he didn't get first blooded, and they're all tipping out. Demon finding that one first with the sticky, sticky bomb, and uh, 
That's gonna be a hefty amount of gold for the techie since he got that big, big kill. So that is a Rubik 5, I think. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is a Rubik 5. Okay, okay. I was confused. I was, wait. Why is Jiren going bottom? Is it Jiren the 5? No, they're, they're giving it the Rubik 5, and uh, he's going to be playing against a Techies with 1,000 gold to start off. As you can see, that first blood does wonders for their team. And they get three runes to start off, so this isn't sorted by team. Well, obviously, because the Ogre's also down there, but that is the top four net worth to start off the game. All for infinity. Yeah, they, they want the early game. Can we skip? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, go to 10 minutes. Fast forward, please, Observer. <laughs> Oh, the balls. Are they skipping? True. That so we do the time skip. <laughs> so I wonder yeah, how this lane is going to go top. It seems yeah, like it could be sense. very you... bad. You put the Rubik there on the top lane so you can stop the blast off. Mm, I think that, that's I their plan there. The more farms, the Rubik secures the farm. And that's all. You can stop the Starbreaker as well. You would not be able to do that with the Gyro, right? That's a really good point, yeah. actually. Uh, the instant suns are always so very good versus uh, versus techies. We've even seen some liches picked up in that role. But this makes sense. Yeah, let's game. It's EMP Invoker. There you go. Thanks. By the way, I was just checking. Oh! Huge deny from the techies. And yeah, this thing, uh, it's, it's going to be an interesting one. EMP start off is usually what we see, but I think the melee punishing and also if you ever get hit by EMP, Tiny is not known for his gigantic mana pool. He is known for his high base damage, though. Two denies right in a row. Oh, don't yeah, do another. This guy, he goes for the muscles, not the brains. So. Mm. Oh. Oh, my oh, goodness. Again. Three and three already to start off this wave. Oh my god. Told you, man. This hero can just punish the invoker on the CS department. Dude, that's actually wild. I mean, it's it's good, but uh, since he does have just the EMP, it's going to be hard for him. Once he gets this next level, even though it's been pushed away for so long, he'll have Tornado to secure creeps. He is 0-0 zero, zero invoker <laughs> yeah. versus 3-3 three, three tiny. Oh. Yeah, but level 1 Invoker against Tiny, there's nothing you can really do That's to hard. secure less hits. Yeah. You can't Sun Strike. You can't EMP because he can always deny. Yeah, and you don't have Tornado, so. Hope for the best. Try to outplay. But they did disconnect on Oscar here, so we'll be waiting for him to come back in. Our other lanes are, well. Pretty much nothing has happened because it's only been one minute. I think that this uh, top side ace this actually might be a bit stronger than I thought because this poor Moose is not, you know, Rubik is not one of the better pause fives at being defensive. So if they do try to all in on Pike, if they somehow bait off the lift, I think they could definitely get some kills up here. Yeah, they can't use the lift oh. aggressively unless it's a, it's a kill. Which is not the case, I think, most of the times. So yeah, you just need to hold the, the, the telekinesis. But if you use it, then Morph has to play carefully. At least the CS is good for him top here. Pots at home, Misho. Oh, gets the carry. Parker. LSA will connect on to the Magnus here, but he's going to just skewer himself all the way. And Omisho finds himself Alina so very strong. low HP. Ogre pauses and is like, help! Why'd you go after that guy? Oh, man. I, th I think he's fine on the Magnus and he's fine on the Lena. And, uh, yeah. No, I think so. I think he's gonna still chase him down. Oh, the Shockwave. The Shockwave might actually be enough to keep him away. Even though it would drag the Ogre closer. Maybe that's not true. I don't think you do that. I think you just yeah. run. To mm -hmm. the trees and try to juke because it's low CD spells on the ogre at least for the fire blast. Yeah. So if he connects one more, you are dead, sir. Mm hmm If you're an ogre, you you gotta try you gotta chase. Oh yeah. Gotta gotta run him down. He's get sent out. Does he get Just the kill here? 
One second. Yes. Uh, gets it. Okay, sets up. Oh, he's burning. He needs what? at least two right clicks, One I think. One more. One more right click. Oh, that could be enough. Oh, the regen could be enough. Oh, no, the regen. The tango, it's too much. And now El Misho, he's having an even lower cooldown spell. Tiger's going to run back towards the base. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, that's not going to work. Rocket Bra is still yeah, hitting. Yeah, he's dead. Uh, certainly. Oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay, Elvisho finally gets the kill. Topside Rubik is going down. Huge Awake Observer. And we've gotten both of those kills on the camera. Well done, well done. Yeah, Elvisho did a good job securing level 2 before helping the Magnus. Without level 2, he'll, he would not be able to kill the Ogre. Because he had flat cannon on level 1. Oh, he didn't get the... Okay. Dangerous. I thought he wasn't going to get it. So far, Tiny is still owning in the mid lane, by the way. 8 denies, 13 CS, 4 invoker. Maybe be missing a lot of that XP. 4 BB. Mm -hmm. Has to get, like, earn and rotate to come back. Yeah, and the rotations are going to be huge. Not only for his gold, but also we're hoping that he has a... Like a vessel, or at least an urn at some point. So those rotations into the side lanes are the only way he's gonna get some charges. Really take down this morphling demon. He's pop pump faking. Mike also knows it will just never happen, so not worrying yeah. too much. A lot of damage actually taken, and some very high agi. Yeah, he's not allowed to die here on the morph. Rubik oh. is not that strong as a five, but you're still a morph. A yeah. lot of stick charges. They don't have good catch. At least, you know, we have a very nice time for Parker down here. Eight denies on him. There's so much XP missing from this game. Elmisho in danger now, popping the flat cannon. Now, Tiger trying to get this kill by himself, but look at the damage off of that rocket barrage. Now, so gracefully, Tiger does die so that Jim Park is allowed to have all that XP to himself. He's also stepping up to Vitaly, has the LSA, will connect, but he doesn't have vision right now. Shockwave in, Parker gets a double kill. That is double XP solo for him as well. The Selena could pop off. And this is how Lina's go out of control. If she get a lot of kills on the lane and get a lot of solo XP, she can just carry the game. Mm -hmm. This is already I mean, a very annoying hero to lane against. They yeah. don't feed uh, her kills. And they, they have a nice supporting cast for her. Like, we have the Bloodlust that we're going to be able to give her eventually. We have the heal from the Dawnbreaker. It will actually be a little bit hard, I think, for Beast Coast to take her down if she does have all the gold, right? Because we're assuming right now that she won't have something like you know, a decent amount of movement speed, BKB, stuff like that. Oh, nice adaptive strike takes Oscar out of the Starbreaker before he can land. Big one as well with one the more? Agi. Oh, no, no. It only took a little bit more, but Rubik will end up getting the kill moves. Very well done. Yeah. You are never killing this morph here. Don't even try. You can't even cut waves now. Oh, right. Misha, he's pumping some damage, man, on this gyrocopter. That level 2 rocket barrage is filthy. I wonder when the first rotation will be. There's a lot of kill potential on both side lanes. How's the Arnon Invoker? It's ready. I think he yeah, just cool. needs boots. Oh, Dawnbreaker. Dawnbreaker, Dawnbreaker. She's fine. He lives. Oh, he uses the gone. EMP now. Get it. El Misho no more. Okay, no, he has another stick. <laughs> he will cast another rocket barrage. Even coming in here on the madness, a huge centaur stomp will end up killing El Misho. And then they get the kill on Tiger. This is so good for Beast Coast. However, Gyro does not get a TP for his trouble. Yeah. It wasn't terrible because at least the invoker got earned charges. That's true. That could be worse. Yeah. And seven minutes rune. Dawnbreaker died top, so does that mean they're they're gonna steal it? Look at Moose. Yeah, good. Moose running it down here. Lumpy coming over as well. It's the tag team to get this wisdom. He's pinning it out. 
He's he knows exactly what they're doing. It. Invoker trying to get over here. Is he ghost walked yet? Oh no, he's not. Oh, you cannot walk up this high ground. Tornado up. Oh, this oh, is important. My Lord, Pepe. Now he has the cold snap plus the MP drop down. He can get a kill out of this. A little bit more. Trying to find moves in the trees. Oh, the creeps. They're coming over. They do get the kill. Pepe. Not again. Let's go. Yeah, if it wasn't for those earn charges from before. And then Jim Park gets to kill on Vitaly. Holy, what a turn. Stop giving kills to Lina, guys. <laughs> He's always uh, more saying. This is, uh... It's getting harder out there, man. Lina, pretty farmed up. Definitely has the potential to nuke a Morphling from the trees if she's too strong. Uh, I mean, we could turn the idea of this game completely if it's not Beast Ghost being aggressive. Tiger's gonna tank the gank. One more. Ooh. With fact, one, one more, more right click. Trying to block him. Lumpy gets the hill. Kill. Well done. Yeah, he went for a face boots on Tiny, so that means he needs to get more kills. Ah. Uh, the, the blink dagger. Yeah. Sure. He had a fine enough lane. I think he was probably allowed to do that. Yeah, of course. Cool. Nice job with the cold snap. Stops him from getting the lift to cancel the blast off. Fools die. Well done. Okay, okay. Invoker also needs some kills. True. <laughs> Poor Vitaly, man. He yeah. can't catch a break. I mean, we're at this point hoping for the 15 minute blink dagger, I think. This guy's gonna have a really hard time farming. He doesn't have boots finished yet. Look at Ogre Man. He's just scouting the Magnus yeah. every time. Oh, big fire blast, but look at all the damage. Yo, they're going in! With the Dawnbreaker! I don't know if that was worth it. They even used the Laguna Blade. They want more with Oscar, but uh, you can barely get the kill on this Gyro. I don't even know if they will. Okay, with the Tornado, they will. That was a lot for my boy Gyrocopter. I don't know if that's worth it. Uh, I mean, already oh, kills no. for the Invoker. Saying, now this is good. This is good. Oscar with the kill. That just made everything worth it. They get a double kill now in the offlane duo. Propel the Lina even further into her next item. Yeah, meanwhile, the Tiny is just farming the Blink Dagger. So they can just keep doing this place. This is interesting also. So I feel like typically whenever you're playing versus a Rubik, you only get one point in the LSA as Alina. But he's actually, it looks like he's going to be secondary maxing it. Radiance middle tower is under yeah, because you're using it to get kills on the lane. Mm, yeah. More stun. So you can get more right clicks off. <laughs> oh, me showing Lumpy. Try to get this. Yo, EMP oh. down though. Blast off connects on two. Tornado on two. Oh, Pippi, get this right into my veins. The blood grenade connects. They do have the burn from Tiger's Ignite. What beautiful spell casting from Infinity. They're just so disorganized on Beast Coast. Tiny was 200 gold away from the Blink, blink Dagger and going for this steal was risky at the very best. Yeah. Has to just sit down and get there before it's too late. Like? She doesn't know. I don't think he got hit by the slow just yet. Pippi? Full vessel. It's gonna be hard for him to dodge this. He does get the start he wants. Waiting so, for him to go down a little bit more. Yeah. But he won't do it. He's too close to the tower. Has morbid mask, so he won't take a lot of damage. Moves. Yeah, pains. I think there's somebody on top of me. And here he is. Already has the Dawnbreaker all coming in. Will land. And it looks like with the swipes, they'll get the kill. And finally, Tiny has the dagger. Now it's their turn to make plays. Mm -hmm. They just need the six on Gyro. Yeah, that's a pretty big one. They also just used Oscar's ult for, you know, a Rubik. So they're not too disgruntled right now. They could definitely defend the soft tower if they really wanted, but it's a bit risky. 
I'm not sure about defending top tower because you don't see Lina, so yeah. you don't know if Lina is around. But they can definitely go for a smoke play. Radiance middle tower is under yeah, this is one of those times where like just farming in the jungle is actually really good for the Lina because you don't know if she's like at a spot that she can come back in for the fight. Now she's showing mid, just the tower is gone. They'll just murder demon. Yeah, just take mm. what you get. Yeah. Oh, yeah, shame on it. Oh. She's going for the full glide here now on Lena. Yeah, sometimes you get brown boots, then you go glaive near because it brings a lot of kill oh. potential to the hero. A gigantic stack. I mean, this is gonna be full glaive near plus on the mark oh, for the 12. next item. Huh. Probably like bots coming up next after this. It takes yeah. a while because there's actually a lot of magic resist on this camp, but they'll get it eventually. Could be like brown boots BKB as well. Ah, that's true. I wonder what is more important. I feel like the BKB is good versus like Gyro, Rubik, Morph, but like versus the Mag, not as great. Yeah, versus Tiny, I guess. Yeah, no, it, Tiny as well. It's his timing. If you want to respect it, you can get the BKB. So has Gleipnir. And they're prepped to fight. They could definitely do something on the back of this one, especially with the Dawnbreaker ulti, but they just don't feel like that's their move right now. So they really want to smoke here. Tiger has won. I want them to smoke, man. You, you got to get this Invoker some gold, too. He didn't have the greatest lane. He's finally coming back slightly. Parker, Parker, Parker. Missed the flag bearer with three people around him. Shame. <laughs> Shame. Stop looking, man. <laughs> Smoked up. Gonna try to make something happen. They see a tiny illusion. They should know that it is an illusion. So Towards bottom. Tiny. Bottom vision actually down here from Dire. And I just go all in bottom. Nice glyph. Actually, like, I mean, nice glyph. Speeding scans. away. Holy, yeah. Uh, they're actually going to try to fight this one. El Misho, Lumpy, both going to show here. He's still the Ghost Walk, so Lumpy, yeah. This is in Inviz room. They actually don't know that he's around until he walks onto the sentry. Stunned yeah. up. They got to know that something's up now. BP was so lucky because Tiny had two seconds still on cooldown on his, on his Blink Dagger. Mm. That would be an easy kill on the Invoker. Yeah. Just toss into the tower. They're just going to back up he's completely dead. here. Do they want the Morphling? Yeah, they're going to watch the Morphling back away now. Oscar wasn't quick enough. Dyer's middle tower is under and they got a the ward on the triangle. Well mm. done on Beast Coast. Oh, Vitaly. Oh, TP. Bottom. Looks like they are getting the Laguna plus the LSA. Gets one kill, but now they have brought in the boys. Ignite on Tiger. Avatos as well, but the heal in from Dawnbreaker. It's just a bit too late now. They will commit onto Lumpy. LSA connects. Can they get the kill? They will. Bombs drop, but a huge Gleipnir. It's on three. Pike can get away, but the rest of your team, I'm not so sure. Elmisha will fall. Blast off stolen from the Rubik. More of an escape mechanism at this point, but still. Beautiful fight from Infinity. They only lose the Ogre Magi. It is, is a no boots Lina. 5 and 0. Oh. Walking around with Gleipnir and Falcon Blade. Just kidding people. Mm hmm. No boots, man. That's crazy. Now she's bringing Dragonlance and the boots. The Dragonlance is also huge. Even more safety for the Lena. Oh, he is. Ooh, Parker. I'll say. Four will be. <laughs> He's deep, but it's paying off. They'll get the kill. Dyer's middle tower. Yeah, this Lina is a war machine. Radiance top tower. Offside, looking for attack. another kill. Could be dangerous from Pippi here. He is on his lonesome, and there's a tiny around as well. They got the Blink yeah. Dagger and the Magnus now. Let's see if they can make plays with this item. Oh. 
Five. We see him, they're dragging him into the sentry. Vitaly's here as well. Hold snap, plus the vessel, but the Avatos is up already. Gonna drag him in even further, but the tornado is up. Can the Earth's team get here? Gleitnir, it doesn't connect onto the Morphling, but the RP is already used and the LSA is down. Sunstrike actually catches on the Lumpy. The bombs are dropping for the Gyrocopter, but Lumpy has no way to get out of this one. I think the Avalanche, I don't know if it's enough. Needs a little bit more damage. Parker, Dragon oh. Slave, doesn't even commit it. They're just letting the bomb Dang drop. It. That's not enough. So lucky. The execution on the Invoker was perfect as well. Oh yeah, that Just tornado was fantastic. timing the spells properly. I'm surprised they didn't use RP sooner, because I think without yep. that tornado, I don't think the fight goes the way of infinity. That was a mistake. I, I feel like they thought they had the kill. They wanted to like save resources. But I don't think you're in a position to save resources if you see the Invoker. Mm -hmm. No, they just got completely turned around now. Beast Ghosts are in danger. They need to get something done on the map because this next Roshan going to the Lena is exactly what's happening. <laughs> They're gonna get this one pretty easily for Parker now. Oscar can TP back home and get himself refilled. And uh, the rest of the team, I guess, suppose they could just keep on after this top tower. Yeah, since he has Aegis, he doesn't have to go BKB now. Just get travel boots, Lina. Keep playing on the map. Keep getting kills. Mm -hmm. They will make a mistake that allows you to get a tier 2 tower soon, so... Mm. Lumpy is uh, having a little bit of a rougher time at this point. He's trying to finish out this Echo Saber. But that burst at this point, you're looking at techies. <laughs> Anybody else, I don't think you can take them anymore. Another kind of buff to the uh, Ogre Magi pick is that you're not getting bursted by a tiny. Bottom tower is under I mean, attack. techies has max, so you might not even be able to kill him. Mm. Oh, really? Their waves are like so far in. Uh, you definitely know what's happening right now. <laughs> on Beast Coast, uh, we're still gonna stay home. Oh, three lotuses, thank you. <laughs> Where's the Midas kill? Oh, he's there. After the Glimmer Cape, okay? <laughs> That's, that seems fair. Mana Boots yeah, and the Glimmer. I bought a got, support item, guys. If it gets like double, double kill, it's Midas. Mm -hmm. If it Keeps going like this slowly. Yeah, it has to go the Glinger route. He's just doing it for 60 minute items, you know? Once they get there, he'll be able to get them 60 minute items quickly. Yeah. That's the perfect excuse. Oh. Lina. Life near, LSA, Sunstrike, nah. not needed. The Laguna is You are is not more stealing my enough. kill. <laughs> Dude, Invoker needs it, man. Let him steal. Holy moly, seven stacks. Bloodlust behind him. This is a fast hitting Lena. This tower, it's not even gonna last at all. They have a fortification. They have a fortifi- they, they don't use the fort. Okay. I mean, the tower was gonna die, sure, but you waste more time. The glyph was gonna refresh. Interesting. Yeah, they were, they were just not paying attention. It's too much pressure already for them. They need to make the right play, the right move. This is a lower bracket elimination series. Infinity versus Beast Coast. They are going to make a move here. Sentry is down. They're dropping some bombs as well. Gleibnir going to start up on the gyrocopter. No LSA. Oh He'll get forced God. out forward. Rubik. It ain't that great. They're still going to get the kill. Sunstrike does not get any kills. But now they're here for both the Tormentor and... The Wisdom Rune. Tiny is getting some damage done to him. He'll try to Avalanche to steal. Radiant still get the Tormentor, and they'll get themselves a Wisdom Rune for Demon. Unless they just walk up the high ground and they don't need it. Yeah, the, the Wisdom Rune is still there, by the way. <laughs> They're gonna get it now. On Oscar. Hmm? Okay. Back. Skewer That's back as deep. well. 
but here comes the, yeah, no, Oscar with the save. Even using the Laguna on Moon's not able to steal for himself here. The Dawnbreaker is still way so deep. They can't kill him just yet. So they'll have to buy back here on Rubik. Oscar staying strong, but he'll still fall eventually. They already took the first life of Parker. He's going to get out of here with the help of the Bloodlust. And they'll just take the buyback and still hit Rax with the Lena. Parker tipped the Magnus instantly after he misses his RP. Instantly. Oh, man. He was ready for this. And he'll have BKB soon. If you're not killing Parker twice now, I don't think you're doing this later. No, yeah, I mean, BKB is going to be pretty important for him. I think Satanic as well are both going to be on the Jim Parker hit list. I think uh, Oscar made a really great play there. Unfortunately, he does die. I'd like to see him itemize more for living after he lands there. Because <laughs> I think the way that, like, the way that Beast Coast kill your team is by literally Avatos Skewer RP. So, like, you're going to be so far removed from the rest of your team when you go into save Parker. You need to have some survivable items there. It has to be like... Next play. Oh, never mind. Oh, dude, he got rooted by a creep. The creep is playing <laughs> for infinity. God damn. You gotta be a little careful here on infinity because there's the toss back, the skewer back, the telekinesis back. When you see, you are inside the fountain. Yeah. Ooh, man. 93? Oh my goodness. It didn't feel that bad, but hey. 14,000 net worth lead. Wisdom Rune still pending here from the Infinity side. And they just take another tier 2 tower. Only one more left in the mid lane. Infinity are just running down these objectives. And now, oh no. Poor Moose. Hold snap stolen technically from Moose. They're both fighting each other in between stuns, but Moose will yeah. survive. A lot of creeps using code snap and invoker. <laughs> makes it harder. Mm -hmm. Had to like disarm them all. Yeah. does make it out of there alive. Huge net worth, by the way, for Parker. He's about to double up the Morphling as well if it keeps up at this pace. And I don't know, man. This pick is definitely working wonders right now for the Infinity crew. This hero will be a band Ooh. in the second game. I think so. Somebody told me that all he had to do was ban out his TA and Morphling. Now you gotta ban the Lina because he cracks. <laughs> I was practicing. <laughs> yeah, dude, he's been practicing. He's been getting those other heroes on the list. I think, uh, I think this Lena hero definitely has been gaming. I think they had a little bit of a lane issue. But also, if you look at their lineup, like for Beast Coast, you have to be ahead to get on top of this Lena safely. If not, you're risking a lot just to drag her back to you. And I love this pickup with Oscar and Vitaly. <laughs> Vitaly, please. Oh, man, they're just so playing shake. with the food oh, at this okay. point. Moose. Okay. Oh no, the heal? Demon does not live through this, but Oscar trying to get on top of Moose. The bombs are going to drop. It could be a two for one special. There's the backup. Infinity giving away a bit of a sale. However, they do take Pike. Parker? Yeah. What? I think Pike got created a couple of times. Yeah, no, he did. He did, he did, he did. This is 4v3. Do they really want to go? He took... He was at 4k HP almost on the Morphling. He wasn't caught out surprised. This should be a free kill. Yeah, no. Tornado up, though. LSA landing, but the nice 4 staff out. Parker, you're not for free here. Yeah, got to back away now. We lost too many heroes here. That was a decent amount of gold for, for the Ogre kill. I mean, anyone here but from behind, right? Yep. What? Oh, there's smoke. Now it's 5v4. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Find them. Dude, the uh, Oscar went for the right talent at 15. He didn't go for the Solar Guardian cooldown. I could have assumed that you were... He has Dazzle. Ah, uh, yeah, no, I guess he is going on with the support? damage. Yeah, but like... <laughs> don't you just ulti on Parker? <laughs> Isn't that... It's like the no. stupid Rick and Morty, what is your job? You heal my Lena. Oh, Pike, no, 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 don't do that, buddy. 
They do lose Demon on the other side. It wasn't completely for free, but you're still in a heap of danger as Beast Coast right now. Oscar finds the Rubik. He's going to be easy pickings for them. A nice tornado away, but even the burn of the Ignite will take him down. Parker sets his sights on El Misho, and only the core mid laner and off laner will get away from this one as Infinity once again win a decisive fight. Yeah, it was like Morph shows on the wave. They smoke from behind. Oh, buddy. There's a look at that luminosity crit. Oh, that was so big. Oh, come on. <laughs> Don't do this to us. Uh, very well done on the kill from him. Takes, takes one helping. other hero out on the map. So now they're able to go high ground without that kill. I think Jim Park is still a little bit fearful that he gets like tossed into a uh, skewer back. Yeah, it has to be the only way they throw this game. You're saying there's a... They can still wait for the Aegis, so it's harder mm -hmm. for them to throw it. Yo, this, this build from Parker has just been exactly on the mark every single time. He hasn't needed the Satanic yet. So he's been able to go for this raw damage, and each time versus the Morphling versus the Tiny, it's been the exact amount of damage that they needed. They could not have any less to get these kills. The bro thinks he's playing Lima Major. <laughs> it, really, it does feel that way. It feels that powerful right now. 10,000 net, well above the Morphling. I mean, you're two items up, two very big items up against him, and Roshan gonna spawn in about 10 seconds. They have full control from Infinity. Uh, it, it feels as if this... Hero just had no counter in the draft. Oh boy. Oh, bye bye. Dude, there's literally fire from the sky, my god. Rush is up, get the Aegis and the game. This is this is what the captain said. Mm -hmm. No, I mean I think that's correct. As long as you have an Aegis on Parker, you may not even have to commit the ulti from Oscar right away, because Theoretically, you already have BKB for staff. They may not be able to kill Parker even with Avatar Skewer RP. He'll probably use OT just to get into the fight, to damage and help his team. I don't think he should wait long. Mm. Off the mark with oh. Sunstrike. Good four staff away from El Misho. Brother, that rocket is not going to save you. Oh my god. That's a Jail lot of damage. Before the missile. Mm hmm. And that was three hits also on the missile after that death. <laughs> the supercharged effect of the Laguna Blade is quite wild. Not even the creeps are standing their grounds. They they don't have they're not yeah, supposed no. to. They haven't been farming up. They don't have an AC what? on the quick buy. Oh my god. They still have cheese on the Dawnbreaker. Oh wow. Three minutes on the Aegis. I mean, you can definitely just go. Yeah. I think so. I think you at least start to uh, attack the spot side. There is an Agonist Scepter completed on the Tiny. He'll actually get the Glaive near, but a good blink away from Tiny as well. Get him out of there. Look at the damage. And a chance, Rubik. We got to think about it, guys. Okay, how do we win this game, team? Yeah, I'm yeah. He, he got confused. Like, okay, she took the tower already. What's the plan for your <laughs> captain? Oh, I am the captain. Uh, uh, uh. Are you kidding? What do we do? What do we do? Hey, Morph, you are the captain now. <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, wait, he's reassigning captain on the team. G, do you want to call GG? Oh, coming back in. This is going to be one hell of a defense from Beast Coast if they can manage it. It's going to take them clearing the creeps on top of Parker so that you can avatar him back. Pure a lift and RP. It's too obvious what they have oh, to do. Oh, there it is. No BKB on the timey. Gonna get the toss back, and they have the RP, but here comes the heal from Oscar. And look at the swipe, takes out supports instantly. This Lena, she hasn't gone down. Moves will steal the heal. It's pretty cool looking, but it's not gonna get the job done. Pike turns into a Lena, which is, that was his hero for now. 
and he's still just hitting. Parker is unanswered. He'll take another life, a double for him, a double for Oscar, and he's going into the base. I want one more. Mike will stand his ground, takes down the first life of the Lena, but what about second life? Okay, okay. AKB won't get the skewer back. If I had the chance to interview Parker after this match, I would ask, how does it feel to be able to team wipe the enemy without using BKB? <laughs> That's true. Satanic still on cooldown as well. The Ancient will fall, no GG's call, but believe me, it is not up to you. Game number one Don't is going it. to be a decisive victory for Infinity. They're going to swipe down one, try to run into the base for another. A uh, Yule's up in the tornado up into the sky, will get the kill on the Morphling. Moose, he's the only one left. They'll buy back on the Morphling. It's not enough. <laughs> GG is called game number one, and this elimination matchup will go to Infinity. A solid first game. Does Lina just uncontested whole game, just farming, showing on, on fights, getting free kills. Yeah, I think this goes for the next game. They should try to test Parker a little bit more, or at least try to enable he, the, their offline, because Vitaly had no game, died a lot, mm -hmm. and they were kind of relying on, the, on his blink dagger timing to fight, because yeah. we didn't see a lot much happen what happening with uh, Blink Dagger on Tiny? Yeah, no, I mean, it didn't seem like they actually got a lot done with it. Uh, for Infinity, man, this last pick Lena was exactly what they needed. I feel like a lot of teams that I've seen with Parker on it, you just inject gold into him, and your team plays around him, and they're pretty confident that they'll win out of this one. So even though for Beast Coast, you ban the TA, you first picked Gyro, <laughs> the 23rd picked Morphling, you did everything you could to try to take away his heroes, but you still had one left. Uh, I think outside of somehow f like picking the offlane matchup early and then like specifically target banning him so that you can have a good lane, I'm not sure what they need to do because again, you had this overall last pick on Lena that just seemed like the perfect thing to do. I don't think you can commit more bans to him. There's already so many there. Bring the challenge to Infinity. Build a like, good lane against Parker. Mm. Try to pressure him. Try to slow him down. I know. I agree. Make something strong on your own. Don't worry about what he's going to come out with. Make sure that you're confident in whatever you're throwing at them. We'll see if they take that advice, guys. We're going to go to a break here for about five to ten minutes, and then we'll be back with game number two to see if Beast Coast come back with a fire or they roll over here in the lower bracket elimination. So we'll be right back.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Dream League Season 23 SA Closed Qualifiers. And uh, and welcome to the draft, too. We got ourselves, again, a first game domination from Parker Dota. And you can see the respect. Alina, the TA, already taken out there by Beast Coast. Yep. TA, Lina, what's next on the menu? Morphling? Or do you first pick Morphling or Morphling on Beast Coast? <laughs> I suppose you could. Uh... I don't think you need to plan out a Morphling so quick, but I could see them snap picking the Gyro again. I don't think that was such a bad idea. Um, although you do have to wonder, what will be the weapon of choice for Parker game number two if he's going to get targeted? Let's be honest, he was on fire on the first game. Mm -hmm. If he keeps the spirit, I think he can play whatever. Whatever. I think this would also open up a little bit of goodness for the other air position. Of course, not being so banned out. There's the gyrocopter. Uh, honestly, still a Chen in pull for Infinity. Not sure if they play it. They do. That feels like the correct pick. Uh, even though there is a gyrocopter, I think the Chen hero is just too good sometimes to pass up on. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, I don't think they play the Chen. Mm -hmm. Five seconds remaining. Yeah, that, there is an Enchantress. True, Enchant well. Enchant does the same amount of stuff. The Shadow Demon, oh, okay. A rare one. Usually this hero is just banned. This enables you to pick, like, Lash, DP. Mm-hmm. And it takes away so much from the carry pool. Faceless Void is one of the notable ones. PA is also someone that really hates that uh, purge on themselves, especially with the uh, possibility of a break later. Windrunner, out of pool completely. There's a lot of uh, good stuff about the Shadow Demon. I know Parker likes PA, so they might use the Shadow Demon to get their hands on some of the some of the heroes these hero counters, like PA. But let's see, let's see. It's too early on the draft. Still need to see some offlaners. You know, Infinity, they love to ban a lot of offlaners. Mm-hmm. DK, Mars, Tunka. Once again going right at the tally here. They even respect band out the uh the Oscar Dawnbreaker. That is not a hero we see very often in contention. I am yeah. astonished that they actually respect band that one. And he played well, but no, not really. Man. Yeah, he connected with the invoker very well. Had like Vlads and was roaming around with the invoker, helping. They were baiting supports on Dawnbreaker OT. They just know how to play with the hero. Hmm. So... Viscos can try again with the Magnus, but this yeah. time they would need to make sure that Magnus will have a lane. I think, uh... Depending on what you do from Beast Coast, I would love to see a... You know, Centaur Marana. You know, something that Marana plays with the Shadow Demon, and then something that uh, lanes well with the Marana. I think you could just double up on that. Radiant team. They will have first pick out of this one, though, so maybe they could just get Marana and be happy with that for now. Wait to see what they want to do uh, with the offlane. I think picking offlane here is nice as well, because we don't have a, a lot of options open. So just secure one of the best that's left. Yeah. They could also go tiny here and just have flex. But, oh, they option number three. Yeah. As you said, you know, offlane is pretty good. I uh, like the centaur. Not a whole lot in the pool. However, we have seen the gyrocopter be one of the heroes that lanes well into the centaur. I think especially with the crystal maiden still being in pool, Beast Coast could just pick up the CM, remaining. play that lane out. It is very strong. I don't know if the centaur would actually be able to play into it. Five seconds remaining. Mm. Yeah, Shadow Demon helps a lot. But yeah, that will definitely be a good option for Beast Coast. They will pick two heroes now. They could go for like CM, but what? What is the off lane you pick? Beast uh, I don't think they wanna pick carry here because hey. they, they wanna make the gyro flex for as long as they can. Oh, I like that one, and yeah, I think I'd like picking an off laner as well. Uh, I don't think you want to doom 
seconds remaining. Uh, timbers and pull. Five seconds remaining. You could theoretically do that, but the Shadow Demon. Uh, I don't know. I don't think you mind playing against Shadow Demon as much actually anymore. Team pick. Lion. Problem. Lion. Oh. Is that they don't have uh, good ways to start fights right now. They have this lion that we have Blink Dagger at some point, but they have Centaur, the enemy team. They have Stampede. You need to be able to Ten face that. Remaining. You know, thinking Five into the future, I really like this lineup pick, lion pickup, even though you show that the Styrocopter is 100% your carry. I like it because... You want to pick Puck into this lineup so far. You see the Centaur, you see the Shadow Demon. Fantastic Puck game. And with this line, you made it so Infinity could not pick up Puck at all. You can pick it up here if you'd like. And it still plays pretty well into the Sven Centaurs. I really like the pick in general. We'll see if that's what they want to do on Beast Coast here. It does mean that they are still saving their offlaner for 23. And there's already a lot of offlaners out of the pool. So if there's one that you see now, such as the Doom, if you really wanted to... Uh, it, you kind of have to pick it. Yeah, I know that they like some spirits, like Void Spirit. They like they like Lash as well. I think they are kind of prepping to get Lash here on Infinity. Mm. Lash with armor from Sven, with Stampede, with the Shadow Demon to cover, and by time for him to pop the Bloodstone if needed. Ten seconds. I really like this Timber and, pick. Yeah. Very strong against Santor and the and the Sven. Mm -hmm. I think it was either that or the uh, Slardar, but playing Slardar into Shadow Demon Crystal Maiden would have been pretty pretty rough. Radiant team ban. So no oh. lash. Yeah, good call on that one. Want to take it out? I actually feel this is a mid timber from Infinity or from Beast Coast. So they ban out the Doom once again. I don't know. I. It, Am I wrong? I feel like this is still a great puck game if you want to go for it. You just ban out DP Ten seconds on 22. Pick puck on 23. Yeah, it's not bad. But if the game goes real late... I don't know, this Gyro Chamber duel... When Sven doesn't have BKB... Sounds scary. This is a very good chamber game, so I think they gotta have like Void Spirit on the mid lane, something like this. Void Spirit did get a nominal buff last patch. <laughs> I think it was 20 damage. I think it was. These guys aren't sure what direction they're going. They have fantastic lockdown. They've got damage. They've got heal, sustain. I think they're missing some tower damage. If they really want to round something out. But oh as you said, no! Ooh, what a pickup there, Ace! Void Spirit out the gate! Um, I don't it's know. hard to pick a spirit to counter him, right? You don't want to pick Ember, there's a lion in the game. I mean, I think you can play the, the Ember Spirit. It's not the best. You have the Cobra of Shadow Demon if needed. Um, what I like about the Ember here is that it helps with the Chen Crips, provides some catch for the Timber, for the Void Spirit, can bait some BKBs on the Gyro. You could technically Tiny as well, but that one doesn't do as well with things you said. Dealing with yeah, the you don't, you don't want to play a Tricor that is bad against the Timber. Yeah, that's also... Hey, it's kind of weird though with the Tiny, because it's like... Yes, Tiny is a strength hero, but he's also a big magical nerd. Uh, yeah, nuke damage. Timber doesn't really love playing again. If it wasn't for the Lion, the Storm would be a very good pick for them. Right? This Lion pick has denied so much that you want to do for Infinity on the last pick. Do they play, I don't know, Huskar? <laughs> oh, wait. That's Prophet is still in pool, right? Versus Void Spirit? Oh, yeah. I think DP is a good pick. Yeah. That puts them on a position that they can only fight with Exo and Sven OT for a portion of the game. Later, the Sven will have a lot of damage, but they went with the Shaker. Interesting. Yeah, I don't really mind it. I think it's an okay pick. It has a lot of potential. But yeah, we'll see.
You're going all in on this mid lane matchup, though. Like, you're doing this because it dumpsters a Void Spirit. I don't know if the rest of his... Him. Oh, wait, well... Okay, so you echo Chen Creeps, which is cool. But also those Chen Creeps typically have, like, a lot of magic resist in them. Hopefully your team isn't, like, creeping around them anyways. But it does make it a, a more difficult game for Chen to play. Because if you do ma manage to, like, somehow get those Creeps, like, all next to the Void Spirit or something, he he's going to die. He will just die. Yeah, I see this is Van against Chen. I can see Jim Park always killing the Chen Creeps, so... This might not be a big problem for them. Um, yeah, as for this mid lane, I think Shaker, he can just deny a lot of creeps, apply Harass on the lane, has good support to rotate on runes, but Biscos, they have a chance. They need to be creative with the hero. They need to apply pressure on the side lanes. Even on the mid lane, if they have the, the, uh, the opportunity to go and contest runes, they can always send a creep on the 4 minute water rune just to mess with the shaker. There's a lot of things you can do with the champ, but I still favor this Sven on this game. Even though he's against the timber, I think. He'll have a good time. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna be a lane thing, right? You're gonna be hoping that you win the lane pretty heavily on Vitaly. But after that, if the Sven can get the farm that he needs, he will burst down the timber. So a lot of tips and not much chatting. <laughs> I pity your meager perspective. But at least the supports respect each other. They both, you know, yeah. Lena or CM line, they know what each other is about to go through. So they're frontlining their Shadow Demon with a ward. So they can use the disruption into stuns, mm -hmm. into a kill. Deep ward. It's pretty deep for someone Lumpy. who doesn't have a Monkey King on their team. Lumpy doesn't have a ward. So they won't find him. They won't find his ward. I think, because it's far on the right side. Mm. Really far on the right side. Oh my what God. is happening? There was a storm hammer. Storm uh -huh. hammer. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, runes are gonna be split. Two for two. Oh, they are they really doing this? <laughs> okay. This is unbelievable. This is not good. I, maybe this is I don't know. I don't want to be okay. This is not this good. This is so funny. No bueno, baby. This is so funny. So I'm pretty sure you have to get that kill for that to be worth it for your Sven. Your Sven just used another storm hammer and another TP. He has no mana for this lane. I mean, yeah, but he's not planning on King's chamber during the early stages of the lane phase, so... It's kind I think of it's okay. just your, it's your prevention from getting burst like this. Vitaly can play up on this wave as much as he wants. There's only one stun the Sen will ever get to pull out for this. He just ha has to make sure that he has mana for one stun. Which he's not, but... He's farming at least. Oh. And I can feed him mangoes. Through. He just did. How's the mid lane going? Eh, not as bad as other heroes in the same position. Now, at first, Lumpy made a fantastic use of his first kill. No one in their right mind would have taken the first? dissimilate, but he did take the dissimilate and uh, he's making it work out. He's getting some creep secured with it. His resonant pulse is very good versus the Earth Shaker because it is a physical damage barrier. So you're essentially taking out one of those hits. Not a lot of heroes have that ability, so he's still, still pretty happy about that. Yeah, there's two ways that you lose the lane to a Shaker. One is getting low and dying. The other one is not getting CS, because yeah. he's denying a lot. I think he'll have to go with the second one. And some of the first one. <laughs> it might not be up to still him. Still does a lot. Nice job, Lumpy. 
to the hard lane to CS in. He's still making it work. Man, they really read what Infinity was planning to pick on the mid lane. The band Lash and the and pick the Void Spirit. Mm hmm. And not a whole lot of those lanes are playable by any means. If they weren't careful, they could have also gotten like Sniper last pick and it would have been fine. The sniper? Did you say he's a sniper, sir? Yeah, they could have. If they picked up the puck, I'll admit. Could have been a sniper last pick. That hero dominates I am a fan. puck. Yeah. I would sit all day watching the Ooh, sniper line. games. Tell me show. Oh, the ravage! Oh. Actually, no timber chain or timber. Whoa. He's only level two. Yeah, but. I mean, people will go timber level one. They'll go for timber level two with no points in the passive. Yeah, I guess this van, you you want the first spell. Huh. Oh yeah, no, I definitely am in for the first spell, but I'm just surprised that the he got the passive. Oh, nice deny. This is a crazy. Yeah, all right. There's a lot of good denies. I like his spells. Unfortunately, the CS still slightly in favor for the Timber, although he is getting kind of bullied in the lane right. Yeah, he's getting bullied, but he's getting some CS at least. That's what he wants to do. Four minutes rune, and of course the Chen Crip denying the water rune. That's insane. Yeah. It is like four minutes. Pretty much always the right thing to do. Them. Yeah. I thought for a second of going for the bounty rune, but he's not sure that it's there. Oh, dude. This enchant totem. I will say, I love watching. Oh, Lumpy. <laughs> you had no business doing that. What a huge deny in the flag bearer. Oh, my God. This is the best he can do. Mm hmm. That was, that was well done, well done. Timber is actually getting mighty out CS for this one. For a Sven that had to go into the mid lane and throw a stun on their Void Spear before this started, he is having a very good time. Oh! Almost yeah, the wanted shield. to get the First blood goes down, Oscar gets taken out by Pike here. Uh, what's Pike's skill build? Is he a 2 one or 202? Oh, wait, now let's go to the mid lane. 2 2 1. 2 1. 2 2 1. 2 2 1. 2 1 1. Oh, 2 1 1. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Hey, good for him. Hold on to that kill. Already has a Falcon Blade. Again, whenever you see this hero picked up, because you go Falcon Blade, you are going to have tons of mana. It is well worth it to skill up that first Rocket Barrage. Uh, and plus, if you do get yourself like a, uh, a Cold Bracelet, you'll be able to use that to keep farming up. He might die. Stun, stun, Rocket Barrage, trying to dodge out the Centaur Stomp, but Oscar does a good job of laying it down. He'll get out of here. Neither offlaner is having a great time. You can see the Timber already at very low HP bottom as well. He's just like struggling to survive here under tower versus Sven. He's trying his best. He's level four. He's not getting a lot of CS, but at least he's getting some XP. Six minutes rune, denied again by the champ. Mm-hmm. There is an echo up on Pippi, by the way. You got a very early level stick. Yeah, very hard to use. <laughs> Dude, Moose is just farming up like crazy. <laughs> we, we literally saw this in the first game, where the Sven just got, like, super farmed. And he had a Timber on his team, and he was as farmed as a Timber. We might actually get to see the exact run back of that scenario. Yeah, we are not close to that quite just yet. No, that's true. Chan needs to farm a little bit more. For this to happen, they need to move the, the Void Spirit top as well. Mm. As we saw on the Heroic Midas series. When they took the Razor Tower. Dude. 
I think, uh, again, second carry I've seen on the gyrocopter today. Go really all in on this rocket barrage. Omisho stunned up first with the hex as well, but a nice save from Demon. They're even bringing in Pippi. Don't get too close for the echo. Just skip chase and then oh. make sure you have the Fisher to cancel the TP. Ah, uh, this is... I didn't what think he was going path? this way. Pike oh, is taking a them for boy. a ride. Holy moly. Oh god, the block. This is just, uh... You, you went the wrong way. He's making a lot of space, but he still went the wrong way. Like, you couldn't have done this. I think you needed to run back to your fountain. He did make space for his team, sure, but like, you died, you're having a great game. Your Sven is getting farm on the other side. Not the best move there from Pike. Yeah, there were, there were a lot of heroes from Infinity, so it was hard to escape. It didn't feel like they, they, they were going to chase him. And Void Spirit, at least, he dealt a lot of damage to the tower, look. Mm-hmm. Almisha spotted the ward, so he had to walk back. Mm. The tower got a, a hit on him. Both these off are having a rough time. Of course, yeah, since they know, since they know the wards on the right side, they just smoke to the left side. Oh lord, he's forced to use the ulti. At least he has level six. Double dive from Lumpy he connects onto the centaur plus the rocket. We'll get the kill. He'll pop the illusion rune and we'll try to take down the top tower. Radiant yep, now with the Void Spirit, you might be able to. <laughs> to try and... oh. Dude, he could just echo these stacks. Oh, this... He could totally just, like, drag them all forward. You gotta start farming the stack. If they come, you just echo everyone. Oh, yeah. You cannot fight this. They have a word up. They want to fight this. I just don't think you can. It's just, it's just hard. Who is going in? They're at least gonna get some XP from it. Pike, waiting. Drop, dude, they've stunned up the air. So you gotta kill this guy before he gets the button. Oh. Don't press the button. Oh, he's too slow. Oh, oh no. no damage on the wire. Oh, oh he goes down. <laughs> the demon buys back. He'll get locked on up. Beast Coast. Oh no. Huge turnaround. That Echo was just. He wanted it too badly. I really wanted it too, but he <laughs> wanted it even more. It was too obvious. Beast Coast just guided him. So many slows. Dive through again. Beast Coast. They are obliterating Infinity in this early game. We've hit the 10 minute mark. We've gotten the Air Shaker. Not a whole lot of gold. Gyro is just feasting off these stacks. This is big. Oh, it feels good for Beast Coast. Mm -hmm. They got the tower, they got the kill on the Shaker. Stole a lot of, of, of stacks. <laughs> that XP, there's so many denies from Infinity, they were like dominating the leading stage. Uh, all the way back now for the Void Spirit. He's actually well on top of the Earth Shaker in net. And uh, this is exactly what they needed after that horrifying game one loss. This is exactly the energy that we expect from Beast Coast to come back and give us a game. We have a game. <laughs> Let's go. So what is Shaker buying? Mm. So he's getting dagger. Okay. Is 300 gold away from the item? Yeah, not too much gold away from the Earth Shaker. I mean, this will be nice for them. Unfortunately, we have two heroes that are sitting in the jungle farming it up. Quite unfortunate. Bumpy's gonna start trying to find someone with his four level five lion. Even after all They're those trying. ancient creeps, he didn't get enough uh, XP for his level six. Bumpy They're walking to the high ground. Find his van. Uh, he breaks on Tiger. Tiger's just gonna run away. Knows that that was a smoke. Get on out. Yeah, they can. They could save CM if Beast Coast jumped on, on her. 
dive in. Tiger, tiger. Very, very dead after the arcane rune, and that's a 3,000 net worth lead still. Keeping it up there. And Chen, just farming up aggressively in their jungle now. We talked about it a little bit. You gotta be an aggressive farmer on Chen to really make this work without hindering your team. They got the dagger on the shaker. Now, Infinity can go for the revenge place. Mm hmm. But it's hard when you're playing on your own map. Yeah, on your the enemy side. Enemy will always be there, breaking smokes, putting some obs. And you don't want this Chen kill. Moose is farming next to a tier two. He just does not care. Tiger could walk up and actually die to the army. It feels like gonna drop two wards down. Echo in with the blink dagger, newly acquired. Plus a jump in from Infinity. They get the kill, Parker with a double, and now Moose in danger. He just blocked himself in from the creeps. He's trying to shove everybody <laughs> away. It was a nice try with the Wild Wing Ripper, but Dim Park, a triple kill for the Sven, and they are back on the board. They have popped the pinata of the Void Spirit. Yeah, good thing of fighting on your own jungle is that Sven doesn't have to stop farming to mm. go to a fight. It's like walking from a camp to another. And he got a triple kill. Mm-hmm. Oh, and anyway, this is exactly where Parker needs to be now. We saw him carry last game quite handily, and this time he is going in for the BKB next. Yeah, you need to be able to fight against this chamber. Yep. No, the BKB is going to do exactly that. Probably going to see that plus uh, maybe a Daedalus? Maybe an Axe? Axe isn't so bad versus the Void Spirit since it does dispel his, uh, his barrier. I think you still go eggs. Yeah. It'll be nice. I, his items are pretty straightforward in this game. I think the only thing that could pop up that is unexpected is like a uh, an MKB. If the gyro does get farmed enough to get a butterfly. Harry is doing a great job at holding the top tower. Yeah. This no. is just securing him a lot of farm. Yeah, he's been doing a fantastic Also, the Chan playing on the enemy side, so there is not much time for Infinity to go there and punish the Gyro. Mm -hmm. yeah. Pike hasn't been gifted a triple kill, so his net worth not being too far off of the uh, Sven isn't, isn't so bad. It's not like he's 2k behind, he's 1k and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Ryan, <laughs> only one point in the mana drain. Doesn't he know? Much more fun to just take the mana away. He doesn't care. They want the damage. Uh, where's Crystal Maiden ulti? Wait, what? Is that what I heard? It's not me. <laughs> okay, well, that's fine. Maybe it was a misclick. Maybe. By the way, uh, we only have that down for a few seconds. Pike is uh, almost over to his Agonist Scepter. We're looking at about a thousand more gold. A bit of a stall in the game. I like the smoke up from Infinity. Want to use the Echo for something meaningful this time. Last it was pretty good to get themselves a kill on Lumpy. They do purge him and then they get the Echo in online. This stage of the game, those solo kills with the Echo, that's not so bad. Could get them a tower here, but Lumpy, having kited out that Shadow Demon purge, it could go back in for a fight. <laughs> that's nice because you're delay you delaying the Lion Blink Dagger. Mm. He was like 100 gold away. He's still 100 yeah. gold away, but... You can count the death timer. Had to TP to farm. And you're really you are waiting for this van. Mm -hmm. He's bringing BKB, and if he decides to go top, you have to go top with him. He's hiding the BKB under on, on the trees. Look. Or is it just he's hiding? Okay. Okay. He's like, hey guys, I'm hitting the tower without BKB. Now you smoke with the BKB. Hmm. Or you just farm. Ah, it's hard. I mean, he, he didn't have to disassemble the Echo for it, so he's still got a good amount of damage with that BKB now. 
I'd like to see him just go for the Agon Scepter, I think. They are giving time for the Star to farm up, though. He's not going Agonims, he's going Blink mm. Dagger Daedalus. Oh, Blink Daedalus. I would have assumed that that Dispel versus the, uh... The Void Spirit was pretty valuable, plus the free initiation. Does it still dispel? Yeah. Pippi. In danger here. They're gonna get the stun in. Oh boy, two hits from Jim Park. And there goes the line. Lumpy in danger as well. Doesn't have anything to get him out of this one. A double for the Sven just TPing in to help out his friends. And that's quite a costly jump in from Beast Coast. Yeah, they need the gyro to be ready to fight, but it doesn't feel like Pike wants to fight before BKB. So, they try hard for Beast Coast to do anything about it. Does mean that they'll have to uh, maybe wait a little bit to use this Echo Slam. I don't think you want to use it without. Parker joining the fight, unless it's like, oh my god, oh, oh my, god. my god, oh they had a lot of magic resistance though, and a jump in, they actually kill the Earthshaker, plus Tiger, oh god, now Demon could die, he banishes himself, this is exactly what I mean, like yeah, there's a Sven, there's a lot of creeps, but man, a lot of those creeps have magic resistance, and it is hard to play into that, what oh a bait god. by Beast Coast. That was just a tasty echo, right? Mm -hmm. He had to do it. <laughs> his reflexes were faster than his brain, so... Mm. He didn't think for a second that was a bait. He thought like, oh, right place, right time, let's go. Mm -hmm. uh, those, those creeps constantly have a lot of amped up magic resist on them. And there is a Sven sitting behind the Roshan pit here. I don't know if they saw everything coming in. I think he's got an idea though. Got Blink BKB. Go. Gosh, that's in three seconds. Good pop it. Jump on in. Getting himself a courier delivered. Jump in. He steals the Aegis! All right from their fingers. Beast Coast is sitting in front of you. And now Parker gets himself the free Aegis. Nobody had picked it up. He just didn't expect the Sven to be right behind the Aegis or the Roshan pit. And even the Sands are coming after. Oh this was really underestimating Infinity. Yeah, they got a kill. They 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 tanked the Echo Slam, but Jairo still doesn't have BKB. This did not change. That is just next level foresight from Bim Park right there. To go in, stand behind, chamber. and he knew that they wouldn't actually grab the Aegis right away because they had they had no reason to think that there was a Sven behind the the Roshan pit. So he just waited for it to actually get picked up. Instantly blinks into steel. Oh my goodness, Parker! That means Shaker has BKB now. Suddenly they have Aegis on this van, and they are more than ready to fight. Mm -hmm. Just follow Jim Park. He's big. I, I, Unless he wants to dive fountain. You do not get that kill, that Aegis, with the Agon of Scepter. I've proven incorrect by Jim Park. Look, he sees creeps, he wants to destroy them. <laughs> Uh, it's free tormentor, free tower. Yeah, and the uh, wisdom rune. They just get everything that they want here. Parker, the one to pick it up, almost to his level three ulti. Honestly, doesn't even want to pop it until he gets that uh, level eighteen. Might have to for the tormentor though. Now Won't look be. at the difference between Gyro and this van. Oh, they banished up one, but isn't there a fight happening on the others? Right, soon, Lumpy. He is going to get big dispel, even disseminates himself on the Shadow Demon so he doesn't take as much damage. He'll dive away on Lumpy, which means on the other side of the fight, I mean, they could technically get something done, but everybody escaped, actually. It was the Tormentor yeah. fight. Who got the charge? Mm. Oh, it was Peepee. Yeah. That's it, nice for him. It is, actually. <laughs> Being able to get that even further lockdown. Now, somehow, after all of this, there is less than a 1,000 net worth lead, actually, 
Or infinity. Minus whatever gold they just got from Demon. The game is not yeah. over by any means. That's just because the Chen is very strong. Mm hmm. 8,000 net worth for the Chen right now. Holy moly. That guy is farming up a storm. What's he got? Surely Vlad's plus. Yeah, Vlad's drums. Got the mech. Some extra magic because it's just the road. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Here comes a big fight. Ooh, jumps in with the god strength on Timber. Echo as well with a heal from Chen. It's more than enough. And this is a big timing for Parker. I mean, he's got ages, but you don't come back the same. There will be no god strength. There will be a BKB. Where is his team? You got to help him out of this one. Pops a BKB trying to TP away. Looks like he'll get it, which means you can turn your sights to the rest of the team here for Beast Coast. Timber is down, but they'll trade out for Tiger. Not as much as they wanted, but taking down that Aegis is huge for Beast Coast. Yeah, not terrible for Infinity, because it was like one minute and a half on the Aegis. But every Q for Beast Coast now matters a lot. Now they can just play the map. Because mm -hmm. Sven doesn't have BKBs, Sven doesn't have OT, so we have some time to get more farm going. And the Gyro decided to not go for a BKB, he went for Sanja and Nyasha first. So he got more stats to fight. He got some damage. Mm -hmm. I really, I like everything that this they've been building so far. It does mean right now that the map is in control of Beast Coast once again. Uh, what's my voice beer cut actually? The uh, what's he stunned right now? Ooh, I like the eggs. You think that's gonna be a good addition? Yeah, eggs now. He can just jump the Shadow Demon. He can silence the Centaur as well. That's big. Yeah. Go. I think Infinity should go again. Yeah, Don't give run a lot it back. of time for Beast Coast to recover. I think the Gyro definitely has the uh, ability to itemize to win this game. He gets the the gold. You know, guys looking already. I love what he's gotten so far. The Tannic coming up next will be even better. I think the, the Kaya Sanj is one of those kind of necessary items versus the Earthshaker because it's not like you're going to get to press BKB each time, yeah. right? It's like the BKB counter. Mm-hmm. Plus, I think most of it will start out with a Fisher, so even if he did sense an, uh, an Echo coming, I don't think it would happen. Yeah, that, that that's pretty much it. You can just Fisher first. Mm -hmm. And you are screwed. Yeah. Even picking up the stride. Hey, huge cleanse. That'll be nice to drop on your Sven. Making sure that he's always healed on up. Let's see how this smoke goes. This is like a power spike for Beast Coast. Mm -hmm. Agonims of Void Spirit. Sven hey. is bottom, so they know if they find someone here, this guy's probably alone. Once again, Lumpy is taking charge, jumping on, does, oh, the blink, and the BKB, Lumpy's out of here. He's not playing. Oh, there's a large amount of creeps now, sitting up on this tower, Reaver on Pike, he's thick. He's sitting with the creeps, but without a BKB, I don't think you can actually jump in for this echo. It'd yeah, be dangerous. the shadow demon. <laughs> <laughs> His van is coming. They don't oh, care. They want to do this. Blink, and they have fissured him off of the heel. Is a lot for the gen. Can they keep it going here? An echo on the backside. They'll kill Pike. Try to rock on the backside. And Timber, he's not able to survive through all of this. They'll banish him up once. Parker, game on him, baby. They'll try to Timber onto the high ground. One more storm hammer. All it takes. It's two gone. And a beautiful setup here from the Earthshaker. He didn't have to start with the echo. He just started with the fissure and let it team do the rest of the work. The problem of not having BKB is that you can't run away. Mm. Even if you tank through all the damage, you can't run away. There's always one frostbite to hold you in place. Some harpoon play. <laughs> <laughs> it just DD kills the lion. Unfortunate. I, I did think he was going to go on the, the Chen. He didn't see it like just barely out of vision, but instead, poor lion showed on the wave. Has 
And now Parker once again is the biggest boy on the map. 13 seconds so there could be an Aegis respawn. I do believe a short spawn would heavily favor Infinity, but Beast Coast, they, they actually surprisingly wanted to go bottom. I don't think they could take a fight right now. They really don't. Parker is going to push bottom. Yeah. Beast Coast know that he TP. So, Infinity, they gotta be careful. <laughs> Wild Wing Ripper taking him back. They do force out the Centaur Stampede, but they catch him with the Remnant. Well done, Lumpy. Gets them to the kill on Tiger. Gets him a little bit of space in this game. This is what happens when your carry TPs in Vision. Mm -hmm. You need to get out. Yeah. It's, it's those small things. Like, it's not a huge tell at all, but it's definitely enough to go out on the map. Uh, ooh, Gyro. Ben, what's up, buddies? All right, they don't want to talk to each other. Oh, no, he didn't get the other room. Go back. Who has the smoke? Oh, this is in... Is this invisible room on the centaur? Uh... Yeah, yeah, it's okay. If they are... What spirit got blink dagger? Oh, huh. Huh. He wants to go in and out, in and out. Interesting. And in again. That is one mobile man. I wonder, so you don't go Arclean Blink, surely, right? I mean, Void Spirit is a universal hero. He doesn't necessarily need the int. You also just have like that lower cooldown Blink. I don't think that's really for him. I'd be interested to see if he does get enough gold where he's like upgrading Blink and goes for like a strength Blink or something. Yeah, since he has like one. Kaya Sanj, he can get the overwhelming blink later. Yeah. Roshan up. Can they take it in 30 seconds actually? The rest of Beast Coast, they're banking on it going bottom, but it's up now. Jim Park not committing the ulti for just yet. Oh, nobody's on map. It's gonna yell. No, they can, no, no, they weren't the they ones who killed hold it. Roshan there. Yeah, they're just gonna keep him here. They weren't the ones to kill Roshan first, so they never got notified of it. And they just steal Infinity! Beast Coast were gathering the bots out of the map. They wanted to be the ones to take Roach whenever it was up, but instead, they're once again just a few steps behind of Infinity. Yeah, that was a fast one. Oh, okay. come. They, they want to smoke. fight. Into... I think they'll place a ward here to fight on this side. Beast Coast probably thinks the right side of the map is safe, so. Who's going to be the first one to get broken on? Shivas gives the vision. He is surely going to fall here. Does not have oh, Bob. going to jump in from Pippi. Doesn't commit to the Echo just yet. Because Sven is on in with the BKB. Dim Park is fighting for his life here. Pike falls. And they'll just continue on to the rest of Beast Coast here. Vitaly popped his own BKB. The damage is too much from Sven. Pippi will help pick him up here. It's foregone. Only losing the Shadow Demon. And well, we might get the full on wipe. A huge ravage. But they do not catch him on the fissure. Looks like Lion is out of here. <gasps> oh, he's on. Is it? Ooh. Did he cancel it? No, oh, okay, he got back. That was close. But yeah. Yeah, man, these fights, they feel impossible for a Beast Coast if they're not the ones jumping first. Mm hmm. But at the same time, if you jump first, you only have like your Void Spirit, your Lion. You might not, ha you might not have the burst damage. Did he deny that creep? Which one? I think Parker denied one of his creeps that was in front of him. I think I think a creep wave is coming, so it doesn't matter. But ideally, they could have forded, and uh, maybe they would have been able to protect even more. But oh my god! Okay, oh my god. well, that is uh, one dead lion coming up. They get the kill, and they're gonna try to take this fight on the high ground. The buyback on the line to keep it up. They're silenced up on the Earthshaker as well, but a BKB will keep him alive and out of here. The Gyro just respawned. They can't get anything else done though. Even with the BKB down on Earthshaker, even with Echo down, I don't know if you can fight into the Sven. You really can. Jump in, ripping through. They'll take down the Shadow Demon. Tiger showing first. 
with this speed. They could get out of here, but yo, Parker! He found Pike, and Pike is out of here. He'll drag in El Misha for a good one. time. Another one, man. Who else can we find here? Vitaly in danger. Pop to BKB. That will not protect you from Parker. This man is way too much to handle. They'll get the kill. Nice BKB, Jumping bro. in low ground, but they find the Chen as well. Call it a triple for Jim Park. It is elimination Dota. They took game one, and Beast Coast, you gotta find it in you, or you will be eliminated from Dream League Season 23. They would have to, like, survive and wait for the BKBs to run out on Infinity. So you can try to fight this event, but the damage is just too high. In six seconds, he's getting, like, two heroes. Mm -hmm. This is his decision of not going eggs, going straight yes. damage against the gyro. Mm -hmm. So you are just using all the stuns your team had to just kill the gyro fast. And they have blade mail on Centaur, dealing a lot of damage on the gyro as well. Gyro doesn't have BK. No. He doesn't. Lumpy is setting up here. He wants to fight with his team here once they're all up. We got ultis. I don't know if we got BKBs, but... You're just about to lose Megas. He'll try to start something now before his team gets up. They're gonna fissure out Oscar actually, but they stunned up everybody in a huge stun on the other side, Jim Park! Eliminates El Misho. I don't think he was even trying. He didn't know he was there. Okay, okay, okay. Still got the cheats. Mm-hmm. It's the still 5v4. Is Sven building a battle here? Yes. Parker. He wants to Parker. add some spiciness. Oh, he's not that. So he disassembled, I see why. I think he disassembled for the BKB or something. So he's just uh, using the rest of the components wisely. This is, uh, you know, reduce, reuse, recycle. And uh, we're going to find a timber here. BKB trying to get back into the base, but Jim Park <laughs> is sectioning him off from it. He will not let you live. He will not let you leave. You only leave by dying. They'll get another kill, turning and on to Pike gyro. as well. They'll banish him in the midst of his satanic, so he will not heal off through this one. Another kill. Infinity are looking to finish everybody else off here. Poor Ten just trying to dive himself through the towers. Won't be able to survive, though. A huge cleave off of just one of his creeps. The boys are betraying him, and there's only Lumpy left. Stun in the base, crit down by Parker. You can just call it now. GG, game two, going to infinity. They will find themselves in the next round of the Dream League season 23 closed qualifiers. And meanwhile, Beast Coast, they will be eliminated from contention. First taken out by Boom, and now infinity. One thing I can say, Pike did not play Dota on the second game. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't really have, have a chance. chance. Yeah, yeah, there was just like so much happening in this game. The Sven took off once again. Uh, this is still possibly the best carry of the patch, guys. I know that there are some calculated nerfs to everybody around, but it wasn't enough, I think, to take this guy off of Top Dog. And I think Parker was definitely the best carry of this game. 14, 0, and 9, rounding himself off with 50,000 damage in only 35 minutes. I would say he's the MVP of the series. Mmm. To be honest, yeah, that. PP played very well, mm -hmm. but Parker was just setting the tempo, was just controlling every team fight, making the bad decisions of not being there to get ganked. He's 14, 0, and 9 on this van. He definitely played a fantastic game. His team enabled him every way that they needed to. Uh, I think Demon even had some nice saves every once in a while, but it was more like offensive. He was getting like some really nice catches to start these fights off. His sports did a great job with Vision as well. I think once we saw the Shivas come in for the Centaur, these fights got so easy for them because they just saw the entire fight area. And you could see he was really picking off the Gyrocopter anytime he showed on that. Speaking of Centaur, he was 0 and 2. And then he finished the game 2 2 22. <laughs> Stop dying. Dude, literally just stopped dying. Whenever you're, you're having a rough game, just don't die anymore. And uh, yep. pick up all the assists in the world. By far the, the leader in assists for this game. Uh, and Beast Coast, they, they got to go back to the drawing board. First off, they're, they're having troubles versus Infinity. This is a, a very respectable org. I know that they have the power to get further in these sorts of games. Uh, but as we were already talking about, they matched up with Boom in the upper bracket. They've been 0-7 in their last matchup with them, now falling to Infinity. This team definitely has to make some uh, changes to how they play the game. 
they want to keep up with this. But for Infinity, very well played for them. I didn't expect this sort of performance from them in this full series. I thought it'd be a lot closer, but they are looking very dominating in this one. I could see them taking it to boom if they match up in the grand final. Me too, man. If they keep playing like this, who knows what can happen? I was I was just checking the the, the other game, the other game, Midas Club versus Starbucks. They tried to use Meepo against Starbucks in game one, and they lost. Oh no! Game two is still going on, and Starbucks are winning. Oh. So we might have Starbucks against uh, Infinity on the next round. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be our next set of matches. I believe on this channel, we'll be handling Heroic and Boom Esports, which is going to be a fantastic series. But guys, in the yeah. interim, that game isn't happening for another two hours. So we're going to take a very, very long break. And then we are going to be going to that upper bracket final. Go ahead and check out Dota 2 Mango while you're at it. That series is happening right now, as Ace said. That's going to be uh, for who plays this Infinity team in the next round so go check that out but please be back for the upper bracket finals in about two hours guys gonna be a fantastic game we'll see you when that one's starting
It starts with this A person that you miss Mine draws a blank I wanna go back Back to the early days When life was an escape Now I just wait For better days I lost myself In your reality I lost myself
It starts with this A person that you miss Mine draws a blank I wanna go back Back to the early days When life was an escape Now I just wait For better days I lost myself In your reality I lost myself
It's not a 
that's where this a person that you miss mine draws a blank i wanna go back back to the early days when life was an escape now i just wait for better days i lost myself in your reality I lost myself
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Dream League Season 23 Closed Qualifiers. I am the Math Magician, and that is Ace. Ace, we have got the pinnacle of games ahead of us for this next one. Yeah, this is the last one, guys, so be ready for it. Mm -hmm. Last one for today. Yes, and last one for us, technically, but we can just think about today. Yeah. It's going to be a good one. We already watched Heroic once. They had the absolute 77-minute gamer time with uh, Midas Club. We loved watching that game through and through. It was with the Timbersaw. They played very well. And, uh, you know, this time, I would I would kind of expect the same thing from them. Try to shove the Timbersaw in there wherever you can. It seems like many teams have been trying to open up with that or the Gyrocopter. Yeah, man, this is openers. But I'm still trying to dig this Gyrocopter opener. Um, I think I think there is a lot of good first pick heroes. I would not favor the gyro that much, but I think this is like a team chemistry thing that you mm. can try to flex a hero. Your carry still likes it, so yeah, I I'm still trying to understand it. Yeah, no, I mean I think the flex potential you nailed it. Is that that's the kind of thing that we want to see or absolutely brokenness. We have seen, to be fair, a little bit of flex in the timber saw. We did see some people in NA. Play it position five. You want to see maybe some of that flex when we see these position uh, what position five timber saw. I think it Who was did uh, it. Uh, it was NA. I actually want to say it was Team Monkeys. It was Albino Zebra. The one with uh oh, they have players that I love and I, I can hardly remember them now. Uh, Double King and Monkeys Forever. The guy who plays like the Bat Rider only. And then ABZ Albino Zebra played the timber saw pause five. Uh, so again, yeah, a, a little bit of flex. I don't think that anybody else in their right mind would do it, but they were comfortable Man. enough. This was a Life Stealer Timber Soul Lane. Yes. I mean, I the, was a... what is happening? <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't think it's great, but they did it. They won with it. Uh, he and destroyed the game. He <laughs> did. Like seven one top KD. Oh yeah. What is? What is this? <laughs> It's a good game for it, I think. I don't know. Let's I... forget about it. <laughs> you don't want to see someone do that? If you see like a Crystal uh... Maiden Gyrocopter, you don't want to see them flex that Timber 5? I mean, I, I just don't want it to be to get popular. That's oh, all. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. For the tech. We don't want that escaping the archives. We need that one no, shoved no. all the way down there with that Faceless Void Leave it to the 5. pros. Mm -hmm. I could agree with that one. I mean, I think for Heroic, thankfully, if they pick up the Timber Saw... They're giving it to Divai Lama. He definitely played some great games with it. From behind or dominating from the lane, whatever it is. He is reminding me a little bit of how it is to watch Saberlight on like the Kunkka or the Centaur. You know, give it to him. Doesn't matter how the lane goes. His game is always going to be fantastic. So I do want to see maybe... <sighs> if I'm Boom, I might ban them out of it. But Boom is top dog right now. They may be the best team in SA. Do you think they would let it in to get some practice in beating it before they try to go over to the actual Dream League group stage? <laughs> Um, I mean, this is this is like the new El Clasico here mm. in SA, SA, like Heroic versus Boom. We saw the progression, right? First yeah. finals, trio for Heroic, then they got 3-2, now it's upper bracket final. I think to come, to finish the arc, I think Boom should be sent to the lower bracket. Ooh. Meet them in the finals, nice. yeah. angry to get the 3-2. Yeah, no, the Empire Strikes the, the Back. only storytelling yeah. The, the, the only possible here. I see, yeah, let them wallow in their self-pity for a bit. Go back and, well, to be honest, they're, they'd get a different matchup in the lower bracket here. Unfortunately, the people that they dropped down Beast Coast, we did watch them lose to Infinity already. So they are going to yeah. be, whoever loses this game will be playing the winner of Infinity and Star Backs. Uh, Star Backs definitely played some great games versus the Midas Club. They also got dropped down by Beast Coast, though. Uh, so... I don't know. I think Infinity should be winning that matchup. We'll see if that one is very close. I mean, Parker is on fire today, right? So oh, yeah. It, it's going to be an interesting game to watch as well. Mm -hmm. And by the way, that Infinity Heroic matchup happened first round. Infinity just crushed everybody else in this lower bracket. The Katsuki is like, eh, you know, that's, that's what life is. You know, that was somebody that came in through the open. Or no, that was somebody that was invited, but they did lose to Midas Club, so they were definitely on the downturn. Uh, but then you see, you know, this game versus Beast Coast, you know, like, this team is rolling. 
did it on many different heroes there for Parker. You know, he's played, but uh, it looks like he's played the Gyrocopter. He played the Lena once before in of their course. series. Played the Sven, of course, that we saw versus Beast Coast. Also played the Lena. So, as star backs, they have a lot of heroes they got to take out because we're also not even talking about his Morphling or his TA. Yeah, we, we are not putting these heroes on the equation. Uh, we saw some mm -hmm. uh, TA bans, but he played CK as well. He's uh, he's very good with CK. Mm. So, he he really improved his hero pool. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, the, 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 the standard ones, I think, you, you got to respect. Especially this Lina. He, he's playing the uh, uh, instantly good Lina. Yes. The lane dominance the hero brings is just I, I i don't think you can pick an offline hero that can just beat the lena carry so yeah yeah it, it's been hard i don't know if they exist right now you think about the things that these offlaners do that are popular uh timber dragon knight centaur mars uh even the doom like all of them are slightly melee punishing they like uh playing with heroes up in their face that's why the troll warlord has gotten back to being popular he matches up well versus then he does well versus these punishes in the offlane but whenever you pick up Alina, I think Konka, which is something they had banned out like pretty early in that draft. But I think yeah. Konka might be the only one that technically would lane well into them. Yeah, and you pair the Konka with something like Techies, yeah. and you might su succeed. Mm -hmm. But if you're drafting the Lina, you you gotta have some info on the draft. And if yeah. you can pick something like, uh, let's say, Undyne to pair with the Lina, this might be enough to survive the Konka lane. So. Yeah, th there are some techs you can do with the five just to mitigate the damage from the, the Konka as well. So, this is not a lost cause. No, not by any means. Uh, but then on the, the boom in the heroic side of things, we'll see if they have any drafting to edit up. Uh, on their side, it looks like we're still waiting on some people uh, on the heroic side to get in here. So, we can, we can check out the Dota bus actually for boom esports because... We haven't gotten to watch them play yet. I, I don't think at all you and I have actually gotten to watch them play. Yeah, I was just following their Oh, I see a lot of Mars. Here. A lot of Mars, yeah. A lot of Mars, a lot of CM. Almost all CM, actually. Uh, okay, so one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so of their last six games, five of them have a Crystal Maiden in them. <laughs> the one that doesn't, it was on Beast Coast. They're the ones that picked it up. Huh. Yeah, one thing that Panda and Pakaz always do is try to try to have a strong lane for them. Mm. They are very very aggressive, so CM brings a lot in that aspect. So yeah. yeah, I'm not surprised that they've been picking a lot of CMs. Yeah. The Mars is good too, right? Uh whenever other offlaners get banned out. In one of these games specifically, it was Magnus, Timbersaw, Dragon Knight, Doom, all banned out already. So, you know, once you have so many offlaners out of the pool. Mars is always a fantastic one to have on your side. I'm surprised that the Primal Beast has been getting picked up still. I thought that the nerfs that it got in this letter patch were actually pretty significant for a hero I didn't think was all on the map already. Your damage that you have, I believe, on your... Isn't it on your W? Got taken down. The trample. Yeah. Thing. So, like, that makes it definitely, like, harder to CS with the hero. I thought okay no it was uh oh sorry it was with his onslaught it was his Q so the nerf right yeah. yeah yep 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 his damage went down to 75 on level one it was from 90 to start so uh that was actually used to secure range creep sometimes depending on how it, uh the lane was going it's gonna be harder to do that level one it's not the worst nerf in the world now that I think about it I thought it was on the W but if it's only on the Q you're still viable uh, over eyes is still the same so the hero yeah. is the same pretty much a, a, a little yeah. bit but pretty much hmm team's ready oh my goodness heroic they have entered the lobby they're going to save us looks like a uh, boom they haven't flipped yet but i'd imagine that we're going to still see a first pick priority right that has been pretty much every team today yeah, we know Boom loves some first pick as well because they got this CM weapon that they like to use, but not as much as a first pick. But they really favor the offlaners when they have the chance. So this is going to be a, a battle from the coin toss. And amen. 
Do you <laughs> to start the game already? My eyes are almost on the verge of shutting down. You and our prod, man. We we got <laughs> sent on early, but we're still here. We're not complaining, so you can't either. Uh, but the game is about to start soon. We have everybody. We're just waiting on all to signal ready, and then I'm sure that our admin uh, will start the game here. Because we, we want to get this one underway, too. This is probably the most hype matchup that we have today, ending off on a bane to see who will get a freebie into the grand finals here. Uh, and who will have to slaughter it out versus Infinity. Talked about it before. The way the Parker's playing, I do not want to get sent down to them. If I'm heroic and boom, I want to end this one now. And boom, man, they are on a tear with their series win. So their last series loss was versus Invictus Gaming uh, in games of the future. Uh, otherwise... How many games is it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13... <laughs> 14 games in a row yeah they've been winning yeah they're they're on a Sheesh. huge winning streak and it's not you know they're they're playing a, a variety of teams uh beast coast and katsuki <laughs> and there is a lot of it in there as well but they have trampled beast coast in their recent games i mean that is something that was very surprising to me Again, I know that the org is very good, both Boom and East Coast, but I didn't realize that the matchups as of late have been that one-sided. People are just having a very hard time locking into what Boom Esports want to do. Uh, even Games of the Future, that last series that they did lose, uh, it was it was, it was was a 2-1. They didn't go all out. They even won the first game of that series, so they definitely are not down and out by any means. But Kaz has gotten a lot of praise in the last few uh, months as well. People are really starting to lock into his play. I definitely see him as one of the best carries in Dota right now. I don't think it's just a in SA type of thing anymore. He's very efficient as well. Mm. So the, the guy knows his ways. Oh, yes. I mean, that's something that the region will always have in their carries is efficient farming. I think K1 laid a lot of the groundwork for people like wanting to be the best carry, doing everything the way that he does. So farming patterns are always going to be something that people lock in on uh, as carries in South America. So do we have a coin flip? We do. And oh. we were correct. They yeah. did choose first pick uh, for Heroic. So we're just waiting on Boom Esports to choose Radiant or Dire. And then we will be into the game. I promise. Casters, we don't hold up the game, all right? We have no power here. You know, they just tell us to go on camera. Uh, they, they tell me to put on real clothes. And I oblige and I get into the cast. You know, that's it. They don't, they don't let me do anything. So Boom having this the last pick, that means that they're probably trying to get Pakai's the carry matchup. So let's see, because this might this means that he might be able to play some interesting heroes. I saw a CK buff. I see that P Parker played CK, and I really miss Pakas playing CK because he's a beast with the hero. It was just like it was a 0.1x damage, right? <laughs> For... It's a buff, okay? <laughs> Creep damage multiplier increased from 1.9x to 2x. <laughs> yeah, he'll fall faster. <laughs> well, I mean, that's all he needs. Technically, what? That's like 5% faster farming. Uh, well. Maybe that's a maybe that's the change the hero needed. I almost wonder in changes like that, like what was the what was the thought behind it? Because we did see a lot of like just random numbers in this Sometimes last letter it's, patch. It's just uh, uh, the now you have enough damage to finish the the neutral camp. Oh, maybe that so, is stuff it. Stuff like this, yeah. This is just uh, micro things that is up to be relevant. Yeah. I, it felt like there was almost like a look at what the win rate of the hero is, and like okay. He's at 48%. If we get him up to 50%, give him 5% on his one spell and hope that that makes up the other 2%. You know, like, like so much of this stuff was so wildly small for the letter patch that we were expecting. I mean, I kind of expected heroes to die in some ways. Like I was going to the Timber Saw and yeah, he got a decent nerf. Like if he did not get a chance to read the patch, uh, his last level of his Timber Chain went down Pretty significantly like 30 damage so like that sort of stuff starts to really add up when you think about like how the percentage nerfs this hero how little he's doing with each spell and it's pure damage like not yeah, mitigated it's pure 30. damage we can't forget yeah uh, it's like that sort of sort of stuff that I was kind of wanting for like every hero in the off lane that had been so good mars got a pretty big one 10 seconds to his ulti on level one instead of just that flat 90 that we were seeing 
like, I don't know. Some of these changes feel so small that, like, we're still seeing the same heroes picked. People haven't really theory crafted, like, what is really good now. Uh, I think Weaver is the only hero. We, we talked about this a little as well. Weaver, I think, should be getting a little bit more picked. If it if the game asks for, asks for it, we will definitely see some Weaver. Yeah, I mean he's got the kiting potential. He's got some big damage. I think uh, Grimstroke needs to be a little bit more in meta for it to come back. At this point, people aren't really expecting those heroes. Uh, oh my Ooh, goodness! Someone failed. Oh, uh, we tried, guys. We really tried. We almost had a game for you, <laughs> but it failed to load. So now I'm gonna go look at Grimstroke and see if he was changed. <laughs> Wait, he wasn't changed at all? <sighs> okay, well, oh, technically, man. if we're looking at a patch that is mostly nerf, is not getting nerfed a buff? Do you really do you really like the Grimstroke meta? When you get to pair the hero with a lot of offlaners, you I can even pair it with some carries. I thought it was a fun hero to watch, so I'm going to say yes, actually. He's got a fun toolkit uh, to look at. People don't even go for like the the max Q anymore, so you're always getting to see somebody like going like a madman <laughs> with the ink swell on them, try to get a fight going, have the science uh, like later. It's a really nice way to watch those sort of heroes because every time we see something newly released, it's like okay, this guy has a way to clear waves, he has some sort of stun, slow, has some sort of team fight, and there we go, we, we've got a hero again. Other heroes don't have that sort of a uh, versatility. Okay, 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 okay. But he's a, Personally, he does... yeah, I, 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 I'm not a big fan of Grimstroke, but when you can combo his OT with some good interactions, some interesting interactions, I, I find it more funny when you have the Grim meta, but this Inkswell meta, I'm not a big fan of it. It's It seems just too basic. You just Inkswell someone and he jumps and gets kills. I'm kind of tired of seeing this. <laughs> I want more. I want double Laguna. I double see. Pool, yeah. Stuff like this. That's true. We need the, the super combos. Even whenever uh, Lich was like some sort of combo oh, with yeah, it, we, yeah. didn't, we didn't see it happening very often because like so often you had two squishy supports and one of them would just die before the game started. Not a great duel. <laughs> no. It was, it was pretty hard. Uh, guys, it was there's a thing on the first days. Yeah, it's it's always something that people will like theory crafts. Plus the the revolution of Grim whenever he got released, you're like two spells, and everyone's like, we can cast two of these things. <laughs> yeah. Imagine a coconut that bounces two times. Yeah, you know, there's there's a lot going around. Yeah, but it became just Inkswell. Mm. Inkswell the Primal Beast, to Inkswell the Amber Spirit, you yeah. you Inkswell the Void Spirit, and that's the hero. We need some sort of like uh combo with you wings out your carry <laughs> you, so you need to this, nerf this the... spell should become should become his ot oh that's At an interesting point, thought yeah that's a, i feel like you just need to like you need to tune down his ink swell then or his uh what is it goodness you have two charges uh from level like... two to level three you have two charges on ink swell and that's all Let's see who is failing to load in the lobby oh no guys it's it's i'm, I'm trying I'm trying to see them. Uh, Did Dota update? So I checked whenever you had asked. My Dota was opened. My my Dota is currently fine. We don't. Oh, we're gonna create a new lobby. Oh, row, row. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Well, now we have to. Do I you restart Dota? I don't think I will do this. I mean, I'm not soon. Please carry me, sir, with you. Carry me. Did they, did they give new info? We should read the password out live on stream so that everybody knows. <laughs> Somebody there will help us get in. Then they'll have to recreate the recreation of the lobby. <laughs> okay. Make them start everything over. It's only 4.5k people here. I'm pretty sure nothing bad would happen. <laughs> yeah, how many people do you think would fit in one Dota 2 lobby? And all? I don't even know if there's a max. It's 28 people, I think. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. How many people have you tried to get in a Dota 2 lobby? Why do you know this? I just did the math. 
I see. I see, I see. With all the slots in the, uh, I see. You're taking observer slots. 34. Yeah, yeah, 34. Okay, okay. It looks like we have almost the... everybody back in. Hopefully we can get yeah. a game to you guys very, very soon. Because we want to start it up as well. I want to see them pick Weaver, man. Well, actually, oh, the other hero. This is the K1 team. I want to see Wraith King. I think they, if they win first game, I think they should pick K1's Wraith King in the second one. Oh, okay. Just for fun. I see, I see. You don't think it's actually good? Do you think they'll lose game two with it? Just for the fans. It, it might be good in certain matchups, but if you end up having to face like more flame, mm. you kind of feel miserable. So yeah, you, you still have you still need to have the matchup in your favor. I wouldn't feel it. I would just out farm him with my radiant. That can work too. <laughs> I'm not against it. I feel like the the big the gamer play is to like ban out Shadow Demon so he doesn't get your illusions. Leave the the faceless void in and like bait them into a faceless void game so you get to pick Wraith King. Then it's actually like there's a reason to play Wraith King. <laughs> The illusion heroes don't really get picked right now, so Radiance Carriers to counter illusions doesn't happen much right now. I miss the Pudge countering the illusion mm. heroes. He still does. People just don't pick him. I'm pretty sure oh the chat God. is with me. We got a game. It? Oh my goodness, we have a game. Guys, we've waited so long. Only 15 minutes after the scheduled start time. We have game number one of Boom Esports vs. Heroic. It's the upper bracket finals matchup here of the Dream League 23 South American closed qualifiers. Heroic 2 0 Infinity, 2 0 the Midas Club. They've had an exorbitantly long game number ones. Will this game be 80 minutes long? Radiant team back. Well, so they're not banning the Mars so far on Heroic side, but they oh. have the first pick. Does that mean they want to steal Bones Mars? Ah, uh, they could. They could, they could. I mean, the, the Timber actually got banned out immediately there. Definitely locking in on Divine Llama. I imagine the next step would be to try to create some sort of favorable matchup for yourself in the top lane. So, if, uh... Do you ban the Mars if you're a Boom? I think I don't think so, right? They're banning the DK, so... No, they're gonna leave it in. Which means offlaner, flex offlaner, flex offlaner, 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 offlaner. It is all offlane bans <laughs> right now. Tiny, I, I know, I'm coping a little bit. We've seen that one flex into the offlane. It's not really an offlane hero, but I'm going to count it for the sake of this point. And the Undying gets picked up here. Mm. Oh, Snap got some pretty nice bans. Or not, pretty nice buffs. Just... You, you need time to just first pick uh, Snapfire here. Ten seconds. You, you need to see how the patch develops first. Uh... Unless you're just noob, the, I'm not saying noob, but the player <laughs> noob, he loves the hero, right? So he'll first pick it. I'm pretty sure. That's a good clarification, because I did not get a noob. I was like, damn, yeah. <laughs> I am a noob. I would pick Snapfire no, no, here. Imagine, boom, pick the hero now. That doesn't mean they're noobs, right? <laughs> it means that they agree with me, which is, you know, take it as what you will. I, mean, I, I know there's a lot of heroes that do well versus the Undying. I think Marana is fine. I think Skyrath Mage actually does pretty well. Uh, they go for the Bat Riders. They're just going completely like, you pick a strong pause five, I'll pick a strong pause. Five. That's it. Okay, Bat Rider pick. Very strong laner. Very strong team fighter. Mm -hmm. Five seconds remaining. He's, uh, he's Doesn't good reveal at the game. anything. I wonder if they ban out the uh, the ABBA for K1. Hmm. I think I don't think you need to bet the the, the Abaddon. Not because you have counters to it, but because the hero depends on a lot of stuff to work, a lot of things. What things? We almost saw that Seconds. going wrong for them again. <laughs> That's true. Right? There there's some uh there was a low long game in there where many things could have gone wrong. They they won. They won that game. They won. Yeah, you're not wrong. But you, you need a lot of heroes to enable him, and you, you don't want to see a an Abaddon undying lane. That's fair. 
You probably want that. As you said, like, slows are very good with the Undying. Uh, stun's even better. That's why Drow Undying was such a popular lane, because you could just break people in that slow. Still pretty good. I think Luna Undying has been a lane that we've seen decently often. It can sometimes just get picked up as a 1-2. Yeah, I, I, I love this lane. It's a classic in SA also. Oh, okay. Crystal Maiden gets picked up. And the uh, mm. absolute tyrant, their last few matches on uh, Boom Esports, but it's five of six matches, their long run that they've gotten the Crystal Maiden. Ten seconds remaining. And they won every match, right? Yes, every single match. Even the one that they didn't have Crystal Maiden, they won. Yeah, of course. They got 14 win streaks, so... Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Rubik. Very nice. That's a... Uh, Love some Rubik. I'm interested in how the support duo will play, because you definitely depend on a very strong offlaner. Undying doesn't really offer control at all. He offers, like, a place for you to fight. So if they're able to peel out of this, then it'll be good for them. Hard to play offlaners though into the Undying, because I'm thinking like Centaur will get away from the Undying and like kind of get on top of the Rubik as well. They don't love playing that lane, that feels pretty bad. They definitely didn't need damage now on Heroic side. They That's definitely true. need some damage. I like this Centaur here for them. Provides a lot with the Rubik. Um The Mars still available. Oh, you know what? What? They could totally Slardar if they wanted to on Boomy. Now here comes Heroic picking up the Death Prophet. Denies a lot of spirits in the mid lane. A lot of mobile heroes just gone. Puck as well. So I, I like them kind of with them. Yeah, no, like really fast. Just a DP. Mm -hmm. Strong team fight with the Undying. Very hard for Boom to fight and try to punish the Tombstone. Five seconds so... Remaining. As for boom now, do they just go with something like morph? Mm. The, most, the, the obvious I, I, I have Scotty hero. You can just go for something like doom here Wait. and try to prevent the DP from using OT. Wait, it's healing. But TA is in the. Yeah, I, I'm not talking about the carries for oh. now. Oh, okay. I'm but just... it is possible that boom picks. The, the carry here. It's, I, I can't believe that it actually got left this long. That's my... Oh, what? I'm sorry, you can go back to it. I was just astonished that it was still in the pool. I feel like people have been first banning that all the time. It's hard to pick Shadow Demon now because you end up with a core batch rider. That's true. And for that to work, you need to have like a good plus four for you, like a melee hero. That's ah. not the case, so... Us? No, Mars. Oh, okay. Oh, so sure. Mars Wind, that's going to be potentially a mid-runner. Definitely going to be the offlane Mars. Yeah. Yeah, it could also be the Pakaz Wind Ranger. Let's not forget yeah. about it. No, that's a nice flex. Five seconds remaining. I love the, the flex on it. it. You, you don't mind that lane into the Death Prophet. You really do. I mean, laning into the the DP is just annoying most of the times. As yeah. Wind Ranger, you got ways from outrunning the DP when she connects into. Dire team back. Oh. Um, okay, so what is this? I... Offline Pango? Ah, uh, no, I think it's probably mid Pango with the offline DP. Do you play DP Rubik then? I think so. That doesn't sound okay. so great, but I think so. I mean, Pingo got a well-needed uh, nerf in the last Five patch. Your damage on your Q technically went up, but it's much less procs on Maelstrom, on Diffusal, on Mage Slayer, everything. Yeah. So, I, I think that has been coming for a while. Everybody said that this hero is way too good with attack modifiers. I think uh, one of them, one of my solutions was to just not let any modifiers work with your swashbuckle, but... I think Valve took the... Uh, that would just kill the hero. Right? I was expecting it. I was expecting them to put the hammer down and be like, this hero's dead. Goodbye. But I, the I hero's think the been good for good. so, so long. Yeah. All the time. 
Even whenever it, was... it has a, a bad win rate in pubs, it's still getting picked, still winning yeah, in Pro Dota. This was well deserved. They gotta do more. People are still picking Pango. I know. <laughs> We're taking it down. We're gonna get to a point where Swash only hits one time. Five seconds remaining. Then you better delete the, the hero already. If they do that. <laughs> so they're banning the Husker, so that that is telling that they wanna go with the Pango on the mid lane. And you're not seeing the Weaver here, my friend. No, at least it was banned. I'll take that. I mean, it's just weird. Also, by the way, they have a Mars. You like playing against Weaver. An interesting one. So they just banned. They basically banned Davai Lama's heroes and K1's heroes mm -hmm. on Boom. Yeah. You know, you think you're looking for a mid laner here. But I could also just see them picking up the gyrocopter on 24 pick for esports here. It hits tombstone. It will buy a BKB and stand its ground. And it uh, got some somewhat of a team fight to offer for the Mars Arena. It does mean that you would be committing to this Windrunner versus the Pango matchup. Do you maybe strive for a better matchup in mid there versus the Pango? I don't hate the gyro idea. Dire team pick. But hmm. okay, so they're banning mid laners. They think this is Pakas playing the Wind Ranger. They and might I also think, just be. Let's go ahead. I think that's it. I think last think? time I saw they play on they play the the Wind Ranger. It was Pakas. Yo, they are. Why do you ban the keeper? What? If you are planning on picking the Bloodseeker. That's crazy. That's it's actually crazy. I did I gotta not gotta tell you, that. I loved it. You love it? I love it. Remaining. Just rupture the Wind Ranger and watch the Wind Ranger suffer. Well, this is something that would happen. You can just set yourself up for a pretty nice uh, Medusa. Now they gotta choose if they wanna play it as a mid laner, which is worse than playing it as a carry now. True. I think at the end of the day, you just need something that will stand its ground. Whenever it gets ruptured, it plays the game. You could even less rack mid here, I think, uh, and that would do the job. Um, how do you kill the DB? That is also not what I expected. That's into okay, the so silence. You got the lane. Yeah, got the lane against the Pango. Yeah. Which is nice. Yeah. Pango burns less mana. It's not the, the main reason they are picking the storm, but it adds up. And they're kind of lacking on stuns. They have a lot of silences and one telekinesis. Yeah. A, uh, a BKB or a Yule Scepter will be all they need. It's something that also does get away from the Undying Tombstone if they need it. It won't care about getting ruptured. It's very offensive as well. Like, it's going to start mm -hmm. fights, hopefully, on Rubik or on Dying, which is something they needed. Anytime that there's a Rubik in the game, you need some sort of jump to get on top of him, or else he could just run the fights. And it's true. You have two cores that doesn't really care about the Tombstone. Wind Ranger moves fast on the team fight. You have the Storm Spirit against the Bloodseeker, which is very good. So, yeah, I think, boom... Did really well with this last pack. I really liked it. But I'm more I'm a fan of the Bloodseeker here. I think it was just a bold move. Last pick in the Bloodseeker against the Wind Ranger. Without uh, hey. knowing that this is a carry Wind Ranger. Uh yeah, no, I mean I think boldness is the way I put it as well. I don't know. I don't love it. I don't think this hero has proved to me that it's actually good yet. Uh, it is, it is. You think it's good? It is good. It is not tier 1 pro at the moment. I think people are still figuring out if the build is still the same. But yeah, the hero is very strong. Okay, so it got... Self-healing is now classified as lifesteal and is amplified by lifesteal amplification. Instead of healing, right? That's the difference? 
Yeah. That was the change. Only. Ace. But the, the hero was picked before the change. Yeah, by bad player. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, man. I, I am a professional hater of Bloodseeker. Uh, I think it's a bit so fragile. So you're just doing your job, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, that is. That's me. I'm an entertainer. I actually don't think any of the things that I, I say, but I, I say them so that Twitch chat gets mad at me. But when they get mad at me, they type, and ESL is happy because they have chatters. You know, that's all I want to do. But I think this yeah, hero... If you, if you think Bloodseeker is going to win, type uh, Dota 1 Bloodseeker name. <laughs> if not, don't say anything. That is cruel. That's, that's <laughs> gatekeeping people's thoughts. That's terrible. <laughs> I don't even know how to pronounce his Dota 1 name. If you can't do it, I can't. Zerg wear something like this. I think the hero, like, uh, you think of what it wants to do. You're playing PA, but worse. The hero wants to jump in and out of fights. Or even Slark. Slark, but worse. You want to jump in and out of fights, do your damage, uh, can completely cut away until there are kills on the board. And totally, like, you don't step up. You have heroes like Sven that want to step up to stay in the fights and are the bodies there. So, and Gyrocopter too. Like these heroes are not so fragile. And Bloodseeker is the most fragile of them all. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. You're not hmm, taking hmm, fights hmm, in this game if you don't have BKB as a Bloodseeker. You will get just completely focused down by this yeah, Mars, you, by this one. You need the, the BKB just because, I mean, not just because, but Mainly because of the arena. You yeah. can't get arena. Mm -hmm. That's all. So you just go Maelstrom BKB. Or oh. you can go like Yonir BKB if you have a free game. Oh. And then Pretty, you can uh... just get something like Aghanims. Who have won the game? They got three runes. Okay, that's almost 1k for them. Mm-hmm. Oh, huge. D ward from the undying he placed that sentry on the high ground as well which is pretty creative honestly that means if they do go to reblock it with the sentry he's gonna have to walk the whole way up the high ground to try to get it again that, that's only because we see a lot of these batch riders trying to snap some couriers mm, okay. the bag so sometimes they place a ward there huge deny from k1 this hero is so broken <laughs> Wait for it. <laughs> He'll get boots. And then I sure hope gonna so. It's going to become interesting. Let's just hope that he doesn't run into, into a leech tower. Yeah. With the help of a spear. <gasps> you know, KJ is doing a good job stepping in front of this lane. It is really hard for Mars. And you're just losing attack damage every time you get decayed. Lord. Yeah, and Bloodseeker enjoys it. Uh huh. Has that passive. Really nicely done. They don't have. The one thing is, they don't have a, another slow to keep people in the tombstone area. So you would have to, like, kind of catch people really far out. And, like, you either get hit by the blood right or you get hit by the tomb. Which one do you want? This is where the blood grenade comes into play. Mm, true. And Batrider is doing what he loves to do. Go behind the tower, capturing the creep wave, walking oh, so the dragon. camp. Oh, yeah. Oh, you have to drag in this lane at this point. Oh, he brings over a single creep to link it up. And then K1 Stop will it. take the boys. Oh, my lord. <laughs> and now we're just back to the lane in a slightly different area. Oh, oh, he's killing the courier anyway. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. Yo! What a deny. Master of denies. Mm -hmm. Oh, almost. Uh, some fantastic CS in front of the poor Batrider. What is happening on the mid? Ah, eh, probably nothing fun. Five denies actually from bottoms. Yeah, this is kind of rough for the Pango. Having to fight the storm on the lane. Mm -hmm. but yeah, it's not the end of the world. He'll survive. And storm is a uh, probably gonna go for an orchid in this one. That feels like a pretty decent orchid game for him. Oh, 
Okay, still got the... Almost actually lost that range creep. He thought he had more damage on it. Yeah. If you go Orchid, you can't miss this timing. You'll need to make it work. True. Because you're going too offensive. If you get hit by a random silence, you just die. I, I do say this uh, Windrunner lane into the Death Prophet has got to be pretty favorable still for the win. I think the only thing that's weird is that like the Crystal Maiden doesn't synergize crazy well with it. It's just the Frostbite with the power shot. That's yeah. the lane. Then you have a lot of slows mm -hmm. on the power shot. And for the sampler on Panda as well. Yeah, it's a hidden synergy. Hidden. You gotta like play it, thing. understand. Oh, yeah, a little bit of... Is there no... Okay, he still hasn't leveled yet. I see. I would have thought that he just tried to, like, bird down the Undyne or something. But Knight comes into the mid lane, steals a water rune, steals a bounty rune. Pretty good for him. Anytime you can create a 1v1 with your Mars and Bloodseeker, you're so happy because, like, I don't know if Mars is necessarily losing this one to a Bloodseeker. He's been losing this one to an Undyne, though. Yeah, but now Bloodseeker is just ahead, so it's easier for K1 mm. to solo this lane. True. There are people who actually know this. Sure, we're... <laughs> <laughs> Told you. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> That's Thank a, you, that a real, the real Dota 2 nerd there. I think someone hided the channel. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, so, oh, dude, seven denies on the win right now. Okay, I didn't realize the lane was back. AJ is really forcing the Bat Rider to stay on the lane. He pretends he's leaving, but he always comes back. Mm. And Mars can't fight the two of those heroes alone. No. So Bat Rider cannot stack, can't be always trolling the runes. Storm is walking base, but he got six first. Oh, wow, well, yeah. He doesn't just want to hold out for the rune? I guess he just wants to get a full bottle and then fight on rune. Yeah, but no, nobody's dying no. to refill the bottle, so he can't lane without mana. Yeah, but I mean... He's, he can just TP know. and OT on the rune. Or you have to, but he has... Right. Okay. TPing in. Mountain region. There's a ward up. Rune is top. Swash through. It looks like Batrider is just gonna deny it. <sighs> Didn't even give him a chance. That yeah, doesn't mean the should. tomb is used for nothing. Just gave vision. But yeah, that's Vision all. Tomb. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta use the Vision Tomb. True. That's like the uh, the pause five uh, faces void. You gotta chrono that high ground to make sure there's not a ward there. Yeah. Okay, so no rune for these guys. No, no, he no. Wants to kill the march so bad. I mean, he's. This is a hard one. And Mars is another hero that could just stand his ground if they do end up trying to kill him. You know what I think is going to happen? Bloodseeker is, is gonna hit 6, he'll get Rupture, and he'll go bottom to kill the Wind Ranger. Oh, with the that would be nice. Canceling the TP. But yeah. that can't be obvious. So if the lane's pushed, you gotta be careful. Oh. D-Ward, but on dying. Trapped oh, on the high ground, a free kill maybe for the sorcerer here, and oh man, they're protecting him, but he gets the first blood at seven minutes. By the way, rolling in, oh no, they get the hit. Slotums, he barely has any mana to work with. He will die, and now Illit's coming in just to stare at this one because brother, you're not level six and you do not have gold. Walk back to the lane. Yeah, so he's not using the first rupture of the Wind Ranger. It seems. <laughs> True, no, but that was a, an unexpected fight on a high ground there that, in the end, did still benefit K1 here. And it was a very good reward as well. Mm -hmm. Waiting for the 8 minutes rune. 
top again? Wow. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah, this time Analog will actually pick it up here. DD for him. He could go bully the Mars again, but that would be rude. He's, this guy is not having a great lane. 2600 net worth. I mean, I guess neither is the Death Prophet, but... Eh. I don't know if you can kill the Windrunner. I have Rupture in 25 seconds, so... It could TP bottom, so they can use the Axo and take the tower afterwards. And I, I'm not sure about this Pango going thing, because he doesn't have OT. Can't Mars just TP out? Yes. Is they go on him? Yes, he can. Unless this is like a free kill on the Batch Rider. Mm. That's not a bad kill. Yeah, otherwise I don't see a good reason of just going top with the Pango now. But let's see. I think you can kill this level 3 Batch Rider before he TPs out. Uh, I don't think so. I think with the DD rune. Big yes. They have to start like fighting before the Pango shows, so the Batch Rider is too low to consider tipping out. Go Panda. Quit that. Be careful. <laughs> Panda Saiyan. <laughs> Why saying Lil Panda? Little Panda? Little Panda. Oh, that's cute. So let's see what analogs up to. He gave up. Okay. <laughs> that makes more sense. What's my uh what's my windrunner? Oh guy? he's coming back. Oh no, he's he coming back. Know. Oh. <laughs> oh, they want him. CM's around. Woo! That was close. And Sonos is pretty deep. He is not the one with the DD rune. Gonna jump up. You wanna kill KJ? Finds KJ, yeah. Drops the tombstone. I don't think you have the damage for this. Yeah, Panda. Poor he Panda. Is... Yeah, he's not able to leave from this one. Little panda. Little, little panda. Yeah, but now they pop DD. Do you just TP bottom? Do you just farm? Still waiting for the rupture rotation. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the. Plus, you carry a hero that you do want to use your ult, like, off cooldown. Even if you don't get a kill out of it. It's such a low CD that, like, even just the possibility of a kill is pretty nice for you. You just need one hero with you. Usually a stun is, like, all it is. Yeah. That's why Rubik has to be bought on if they go for this play, but Rubik was oh. getting XP mid. He's doing a little bit of dancing around. We'll end up using the Rupture, and now the roll. Analog coming through. Hey, they're dragging everybody away from this one. This might actually be the split fight that they need. They'll bring in the Rubik because they're actually a little worried about it here on Heroic with Sodoms. I think oh. they will reconnect. He might come back, yeah. Because came in as well. I think he he just doesn't have focus fire yet, actually. They'll go on to the Pangolier here. Silence, no, it connects on all of them. Can he get away from this? I don't think so. Another kill. Because will want to run forward for a little bit more, but they will not. Test the waters. They'll just take this tower. All four are here anyways. Saw him, so he wants to go home. Okay, they were the ones making the first move with the Winged Ranger then. And the TP on the storm as well. Top tower is under attack. Heroic still needs six on Rubik. Mm -hmm. He's trying his best to get it. He was mid, trying to get some XP. CM has six now due to this Pango kill. Ooh, yeah, a Scepter just... on the DP. Wait, what? I mean, the, the Athos. Athos on oh, the DP. Oh, okay, okay. Atos DP. That's now they uh, might not need the Rubik there. That's an interesting one. I would have thought that, you know, with the Windrunner, Yules would have been like top dog. They just stun with the Atos. It's fine too. I suppose. Either way, it'll go through a B or go through without a BKB. I hear CM OT. Oh. Oh, is right. that for stacks? Yeah, uh, we'll take a few ancient caps for the team here. Bringing in the Mars, get him involved, get a little bit more gold. Most of it still went to the Storm Spirit. 
Do we have a confirmation on the the first storm spirit item? Is that gonna be Witchblade, Orchid, Witchblade? Okay. Yeah, Witchblade. Get That's some blade. armor. And attack speed Always so we can get Tombstone. <laughs> Technically. Oh, they wanna rotate with the DP. So they won't try to kill the Winged Ranger. But they, they will go for the mid lane, it seems. Yeah, dude, I, Knight is actually gonna get a decent BKB here. Atos down on the Storm Spirit, layering in with the Silence. Now turning the roll back on to Panda as well. Very well done with this move from Heroic, as they will use the rest of this exorcism to take a tier one tower in the mid lane. Will they to the tower? I'm still not sure. Yeah, no, no. nobody's showing up to defend. I don't think, yeah. I mean, to slow down the push, so. I don't think their tower defense is crazy with the Mars at such low net worth right now. Yeah, it is not. Maybe once the Blink Dagger is out from the Batrider, because he is farming really well. <laughs> the Blink Dagger is not too far away. He's been farming a lot. Got a lot of farm on the bat rider. It's kind of what happens in this game state. There's only been six kills, 12 minutes. We've had some uh, real, real battles in the SA region, but this one is a little bit uh, calmer. But this is going to be good for K1. He's actually going to go for a Yasha before he even thinks about the BKB. So even more farming potential, even more move speed for him around the map. Uh, yeah. and he, he's going to be able to be pretty far and top dog by the end of this if it keeps up. He's got that Manta queued up as well. Gotta be something like Menta, BKB, Agnims. With the Menta, you can just Radiant dispel the Frostbite. Very good item. Ooh, That's level pretty. 4 Frostbite on Rubik. That's big. Right. That would be really big versus the Star Spirit, actually. He's like immediately pinning them out, like, we can take this now. Can't get Arena then. Oh, big swash through. Trying to get away now on Storm. They'll take the tower, throwing down the blood right and the arena. Poor old Mars. Yeah, uh, you're not trapped in there. Oh, he <laughs> oh walks my out. god. No! He's able to get the kill still. Very well tried, at least, from Illich. Panda will sit down with the ult. He wanted to kill KJ. Can't do it himself. They'll trade a tower for two of their own here on Boom. Uh, not sure if they really got the better of that trade. They didn't defend the towers, it was just the kills and the rupture oh, usage. He got the regen rune on the sorcerer, actually turning back onto the Pangolier. Analog will fall. The team just isn't in time to save him. Amazing. Free kill, regen rune, now you farm, or you gank the DP. Look. Mm. Oh, pretty huge here. Has the focus fire as well. They want to catch up to her. Jumping forward, Slot is not going to let her get away that easy. Silence coming through. K1, no ulti just yet. The spirit siphons are not enough of the silence. Could it spell doom for Pakaz? No. He's going to be able to run himself right on out of there. It looks like Slotums as well. Oh, he's still in danger though. Ooh. Doesn't have mana left. No, he's got. Where's the cooldown on Rupture? Uh, it's got to be close. It Maybe connects. It. Walking up, bounce around by Roshan. Then what a huge escape! He timed it so he bounced off of Roshan exactly like he wanted to, so he could live. Unfortunately, Bakaz wasn't able to do the same. They'll finally come back in on Illich, though. A little bit more going on. They'll spear plus the God's rebuke right away. And it's been so long, guys. The tombstone is back up and available. Frostbite is doing so much for the Rubik. Securing the kill on the Range Ranger. So nice. They'll get the tower now. Mm -hmm. And they still have Exo. Yeah, the, the Exo could still... I don't know. Maybe you go portal and go topside for that tower. Doesn't seem like there's anything else can, on the map you can do. Yeah, you, can, you can try to gank. You can TP mid, try to invade the triangle. And see what you find. I thought... DP was gonna go for something like Blade Mail here, just mm. to be able to out sustain the Wind Ranger. But he went for the Veil, which is okay, gives some armor, but doesn't help much against the Wind Ranger. Yeah. He 
He's very far armed. He's, he's feeling good. Going for the Agno Scepter next, actually. Uh, I like. I, I feel like we've seen a lot of BKB first on the win. That oh, Dubai Llama. That was just with the Witchblade. And the fire. That is... I feel like that shouldn't be a lot of damage. He's paying for wards. There, there's no wards there, buddy. Mm -hmm. They just found you. Level 4 Firefly, Witchblade, Lasso, a lot of damage. Rubik now has Power Shot. Oh, jumping in, completely whipping on the spear. Able to get the roll off now, but the Focus Fire is still on Analog. He'll die. The rest of the team, though, eh, not so shy. They might still want a part of this. K1 going to use the Rupture on Illich. will stop him in his tracks, and he gets to collect that kill. Poor old Batrider stuck in the river. He'll die as well. There's no Tier 1 mid here, so the cause and crew, they have nowhere else to run safely to, actually. They have to escape back to their own jungle. Yeah, that, that was a very good thump stun. That's the only reason Heroic was able to take the fight after losing the Pango. And the TP on the Bloodseeker was delayed, I think. Mm-hmm. So they get some nice kills for the Windrunner at least. And uh, this is another one of those teams where they will pump some gold into that carry and uh, hope the Pakaz will just, you know, put them in the backpack and take them to victory. <laughs> he is the kind of player that can do that. It has the farm. You're trying to get the Aghanims on the Pango before doing crazy movements on Heroic. Mm. Their hope is that they don't get roached before that. Mm. That yeah. would be terrible. I think Boom should be trying to sneak out a Roche. Oh, oh. Bottoms in danger here. Has the zip, has the TP. No other stuns. And he'll fall. Yeah, no frostbite anymore. Going for the a lot full of man. ancients. Yeah, full manta. I thought that he would just go Yasha and then into the BKB. Hey, good for him. If he's able to play this one just with the manta, I'll be impressed. Yeah, because he doesn't have to be clicking a lot during the fights. Dead. If only he had a manta. <laughs> oh, not even BKB would <laughs> save him there. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, no, no, nothing. He wasn't getting out of that one. Even the late press of the BKB. Well done from Picasso and the Bat Rider uh, to get him and take him out there. Because if he did get the Manta really early, they could have actually just thrown it down waves, get some more space, and then this Roshan becomes a lot easier. Now he's down on the map. If anybody has some, uh, some elite game sense, they might know this map. Did, did they go through the wave? Because Bomb have a lane ward on top lane. Hmm. Good question. I don't know. But yeah, it doesn't seem like boom, no. Because they have the arena, they just don't have the lasso. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, at this point, I don't think this is a really good fight for you to take with the full exo going. Potential of the Rolling Thunder as well. Your team just isn't equipped to fight like that yet. They're still just going for these, like, side lane pickoffs. But now boom knows that Heroic doesn't have exo. Mm. So they might or two, be probably. Uh. Yeah, the, the lasso is coming uh, off cooldown. They can just go again. Panda is already buying the smoke, so mm. they really want to fight. And Zlatims is getting closer to the BKB. It's 400 gold away only. So this is a big first spike for them. It could be very important in this one, of course, versus the Pangolier. And even versus the Death Prophet. The Atos into the stun is becoming quite a problem for him. But guys will have Aghanim soon as well. Yeah, Boom is getting ready. 200 gold more for Pakaz, and he's happy. But I think Heroic is gonna make a play. They got mm. some smokes on the Undying, they have the Aghanim Scepter on the Pango. Still 45 seconds though on the Exo, so... Yeah, they, they're just yeah, taking that's... the Tormentor. I like, the, uh, I feel like you got yourself a good timing, right? You know, K1 just got his Mantis style. Ooh. Got a shard, shard on for KJ. KJ. Like, yeah, make sure that you're at full strength when you do this. Really make the most of the Sages. He 
They are getting the Eternal Shroud as well in the Death Prophet. That will be a nice power spike as well. Even versus the Windrunner, because it will mitigate some of those, at least, uh, Maelstrom Fox. You have it soon. 200 gold more. Mm -hmm. They just need to make sure that they don't get picked off before that. Yeah. Agnos after completed on Picaz here. Going for the Lincolns next. At that point, you'll be... Pretty strong, Sodom's getting out of the silence there. You'll be okay. But it seems like the rupture, as you said, rupture to hold the Windrunner in place is probably the only thing that scares him. And as Windrunner, you're allowed to do this. It's stats. It's actually still really nice damage for you to build that Lincoln Sphere. They they kind they gotta need to all win on the Windranger. Problem is mm, if they have okay. to use a lot on Pakas, and Storm is just free to play on the fights. Oh, he won. What did he just send? Why did he leave a single can creep in there? Oh, look at he the saw night. somebody. He immediately leaves. It goes to greener pastures over there. Heroic is coming. But Batrider is already there. Okay, one about to show on the wave here, but the rest of the team is behind him. You go on this Bloodseeker, you'll catch hands. A huge They're not board, going yeah. for a smoke play. They're just casually walking. Face checking. Oh, yeah. Oh, Blood they TP'd away out. on Bloodseeker. They saw and this. They, they, they see this on the ward. Crystal Maiden in a bit of danger here, trying to walk around the ward. Gofield gonna find him first. We'll lift him up to the high ground, maybe, but no. They don't need to. They'll just get the kill. It almost felt like Heroic were the ones having the vision there. Yeah. I mean, kills like that aren't the worst thing to expend if it means that they're not on your towers as Heroic. They still have this yeah. Aegis for another, what, minute and a half? So, if they're not using it, I know Tier 2s have gone down. It no, I'm not even a Tier 1 top. Bottom tower is under attack. Yo, what's up, man? How you doing? Nah. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, a little, but yeah, it's... Do you need to restart your PC? We've had a lot of pauses in these games. I mean, what's one more? <laughs> I'm back. Watch through. Hey, let's gonna get the diffusal bladed up. Oh, the blink! For the twin. Way to go, Illich. Way to go. Yeah, they still have BKB. Yeah, this yeah. was a failed attempt. Hey, Almost this is gonna be. It. We're cutting the Aegis out, right? Thirty seconds left. They're not making a move on it. Heroic. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like this is a bit of a disaster to get this free BKB on you, or free Aegis on you and never use it. Yeah, the fact that they just used it for form. Mmm, bringing back the Death Prophet here. Spear as well. Silence will come out from K1, even rupturing up this Mars. But what are you gonna do? You gonna fight him? I don't think so. Sodom's jumping on the background, trying to make some more happen, but he will not have the mana nor the heart to do so. Yeah, KJ was not in position to save him with the tombstone. That would be that would be sick. Mm -hmm. Roik would be able to turn the fight. But yeah, a lot of farming. That means that Pakaz is getting closer to a Lincoln's sphere, mm -hmm. and that's gonna hey. make Heroic's life difficult. I think his hero is the one that will scale out of this world in this game. I mean, I know that there's like a two charge rupture or something that could be a lot, but this one runner, universal hero with a talent that literally makes her E undispellable. I mean, I don't see this hero faltering once we get into the late game. She doesn't have problems of fighting late game against what Heroic has. Especially because Batch Rider is shining this game. Mm hmm. Being the he's getting a lot of gold so too. Far. Yeah, he almost has but... BKB. I mean, not almost, but he's getting there. Greedy supports win late games, I'll be honest, guys. They they are trash early game. They lose a lot of them. But hey, late game, they'll win. He's got bots. <laughs> it was like, BKB? Yep. I don't think so. Bro, this is scam from the Radiant side. Catching the smoke. Yeah. Finding the storm as well here. Silence. He has BKB. Can pop if he wants. Huge force up onto the high ground. Zipping through on Schofield. Wants to find a little bit more to start this fight with. But they've expertly kited this one away. Except for Pekaz. Pekaz somewhat kited this away. And that was cheap for Boom, considering that Storm got Telekinesis 
silenced. Right off, mm -hmm. ate those. He didn't die there. No, Yet not at all. Even used to. Yeah. yeah. They, they could at least try to force the BKB, but they had to spend resources to do that, like Bango Roll. It was just uh, one four stuff up the high ground. Storm lives. I mean, well done there from uh, Boom to not really expend anything for that one. Crystal Maiden will be up soon. I think at this point, the way that this game is going, where we have 20 kills in 26 minutes, I'm sure that for Boom, they just want to wait for Roche. They want to make sure that they're set up for it, get that extra life, and they'll take down some powers. The Roche timer is bugged for me. Oh yeah, because you had to reconnect. 37 yeah. seconds left, buddy, I got you. I see. Thank you. No problem, no problem. And we'll see if it's a lawn spawn once we get the timer for ourselves. It is an Orchid now for the Storm Spirit. I like this build a lot. I don't think they have many dispels. Yeah, no, Death Prophet doesn't have a single one. He has to find a way to not die when he gets jumped on the DP. I think the answer is Yules, but he didn't want it. The Lincolns could work too. Dyer's courier has been is he getting lassoed all the time? Oh, 20 seconds believe... spawn. Woo! Yeah, I can't believe that ward lasted so long. Yeah. He just spent up pretending he's not seeing the enemy when he died there last time. <laughs> what are you trying to find, Heroic? Everybody stop. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, go back, go back! <laughs> oh, TPing into Bloodseeker as well. Smoked up. They see a courier. They know somebody's up. Kill it. They actually go on the Bloodseeker. Could knock him down here with the focus fire. They tombstone him to save. Slaughter's is beating it down. He really wants that Bloodseeker. K1 will escape, it seems. He even gets to use the Rupture on the march, but they're going to heal him up and maybe TP him out of this one. They don't have the stun. He's out of here. He will silence up the Star Silence. Spirit, though. Yeah, no, he can't get away from this one. They will TP out on everybody else, but Kaz seems to have escaped. Schofield wants him, but they don't have the vision Bro. to do so. I don't know how that went so wrong for Boom Esports. The supports on Heroic destroyed the fight. It was just KJ using Tombstone on K1. And then Storm was waiting for the BKB on Bloodseeker to wear off so he could reconnect in QK1, but Rubik used Telekinesis on the Storm into the uh. Blood Ride. So ah. Storm, Silenced, and dead. See. I could have swore they would have had the damage with the focus fire to kill Bloodseeker, but it just did not have enough. Akaz is lucky to be alive. He doesn't have, I think, um, enough sentries or dusts. Hmm. Dude, Roshan is, he is not giving up. He is fighting this one to the death. A lot of low heroes there. We will give Aegis over to K1, which they need. I mean, I feel like these fights were winnable by them, like, just really running down and 100%ing the Bloodseeker. But now, I don't know if you have a really easy way to win these fights anymore, and boom. Yeah, it got to a point where I think Heroic should just itemize to survive the Batrider jump. K1 is buying Lincolns. We see Schofield getting Glimmer Cape to mitigate some of the damage. So yeah, if they survive the first jump, they're okay to keep fighting. Seemed like the tombstone was almost enough to do that on its own. Yeah, yeah. That did a very good job, but K1 almost died. That man that means that he can't go and try to find the Wind Ranger. Mm. He's too low. <laughs> oh Ghost Scepter out from the Undying. He'll dance on him, KJ. And the Dew Ward. He's been mm -hmm. on point with the Dew Wards this game. Halbert on the DP. Some stats resistance, some regen, some evasion. Yeah. That might help against the Lasso. With no Dispel though, a Bloodthorn would still do the job. <laughs> yeah. Can't have everything. You, wait, wait, wait. All right. What? Can we can we check to see if cheats are enabled? I need to see some dash golds in there. That's the only way <laughs> I believe that this happened. Big. What? I mean, he's been I, stuck with this, at this point? Just go refresh. for a while. 
I, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't think you screw around with the seals at all. I think you just go refresher and complete the build. This is the pinnacle Mars late game build. It's blink, refresher, BKB, scythe. So, double scythe, double arena. I don't think a Yul's really compares to the power of that. Uh, it also doesn't compare in cost, but at this point, man, if you just waited so long to get yourself a scythe, go ahead, wait on and get a refresher too. Problem is, it needs the mana. Mm-hmm. Use Scepter helps a lot with that. Hey, Refresher gives you mana. A little bit. Yeah, but this is a Mars. It struggles a lot with this. That's why it has a Soul Ring. You refresh Soul Ring. Okay, that's why. Yeah. I don't know. I hope he changes this. And it's not like this is just some like crackpot me thing. Like in DPC, we also saw a lot of Marses whenever this was popular go for that Refresher. BKB Hex. With this, he can get the uh, Wind Raker later and save his allies. True. But maybe he just goes for like... I don't know. Maybe he ends up getting rid of his phase boots for a refresher later. Since he'll, we will have the move speed from Wind Raker. We'll see. We'll see. Top tower is under They're actually doing uh, objectives with the Sages now on Heroic, which is nice. Got themselves a, a really deep kill on a Crystal Maiden. Going down to tier 2. Still uh, two tier 2's left on the map. And K1 is bringing the Gleipnir. More catch for them. He'll go Silver Edge after. But he didn't finish the Gleipnir. What did he buy? Oh, the full Lincoln's okay. Mm, okay. Yo, sent back on K1, and we'll actually pop the BKB on Illich. He's gonna stand his ground for this one. He is not too healthy yet. He's gotta bounce on out of there. But this does mean that we've used the arena for not a whole lot. And BKB. Mm -hmm. Bloodseeker still have BKB. He'll have rupture in 40 seconds. Oh, did he cut wait? Unfortunately. I think so. <laughs> okay, tried yeah, to but gonna get the quickest duels in the West, unfortunately the only one who was there was <laughs> This Batch Rider is really messing with heroics timings. Is there the a creeping How on earth are they hitting them? There was. There were grips. Oh okay. Oh Radiant's middle tower has fallen. Almost. Well, that's all tier 2's off the map now for Boom Esports. They have a streak that is meant to be broken here. What did we say? 14 games? 13 games? 14 games. 14 games that they've won in a row here. It's crazy how Boom still got 2k advantage. <laughs> I mean, it's the Batch Rider effect, we all know that, but it's just crazy. Seven, thirty. Not so bad, we call that winnable. Yep. They're smoking. They see that no one's showing up on the bottom lane to defend. KJ has Wait. Blink Dagger so he can save people. Nice pickup. It'll see Kuriers. No breaks. By Lama gonna get hexed up first here. Where's the Blink Thumpstone? Yeah, forcing him through. They have Lasso now on the Rubik though. Could be a bit dangerous depending on who they find. They're gonna focus fire up the Rubik, but he actually uses himself away. Gets the oh no, the Lasso onto the Windrunner. It lasts a while now. Can they commit to the kill? He's ruptured! Oh stop running! God. He even steals the zip, so he's alive. Rubik, how much more can you do in these fights? Schoolfield. Oh my goodness. Stop it. Stop it, Schofield, please. Bro. He played Storm better than Slimes this fight. I <laughs> uh, had the lasso to start it all off that lasted an eternity, it feels. And then with the rupture on the crystal or er, with the rupture on the Windrunner, she really wanted that kill on the Rubik, but he zipped away. He got the perfect spell for the fight. Yeah, you can't do the catapults with this, sir. Sorry. Yeah, but now you can. Okay. You won. <laughs> Has to kill the next wave, though. 
Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. They they gotta wait for the last soul. At this point, they gotta wait for the Ring Ranger. Wait until she's like five seconds to respawn and you start the fight. Rupture. Rupture. Thankfully he does have a Yules now. He'll run away. They're using the fortification. They have a Windrunner in about 10 seconds. They might have yeah. actually forced Heroic away. Yeah, yeah. This is how you throw if you just stay there. You gotta chill. You wait for the next Rupture. You wait for the Axo. And then you go again. You don't mm -hmm. have to go high ground, but you can find another fight. Yeah. Hey, I mean, Roshan's gonna be... Revealed the spawn in about 20 seconds. So it'll be about time for people to uh, gather towards top. So it looks like Roche will probably be dire. They're smoking on, boom. Did they find anything? Oh. Oh, they may have found another. Okay, they used the hex on Bloodseeker, it looks like, but he has a Lincoln Sphere. They may have to run away from this completely. I would not continue this fight if you're boom. Oh, uh -oh. they found the Wind Ranger? I think they've continued, yeah. She runs away, still disarmed right now. Popping the BKB, wants to get on top of the Rubik, but as soon as she sees the zip away this time, she'll stay away. Schofield wanted to get the lift afterwards, but they're just gonna get away from this fight. Schofield is gaming, man. Yeah, problem of playing Wind Ranger carry is that you, you kind of need some easy targets to go on, but mm. this Rubik with the ball lightning is not the hero you want to go. You can't kill the Undying because he has Ghost Scepter. So who Press. are you kidding? I feel like you should still be able to kill the Rubik, but you just start with a Shackle. She's used Shackle before she's gone in on these backline heroes. And you see that? Heroic is not trying to do crazy things. They know that Bakas doesn't have BKB, but they are still chilling. You kinda seeing how the map will move. Okay, one's invisible top. It's all about the rush now. They don't wanna mess up. He's still on the death profit here. It's very hard all in for them. So let's just gonna show on the wave and then back out, but they still know Roshan, it could be up any moment. But it looks like at this point. I don't know if they can kill it in 30 seconds on the Heroic. They may actually have to go bottom for it. Yeah, they're already considering this. See how different the Vailama's posture is now? He's not afraid of frontlining and finding the enemy because he knows that KJ can just <laughs> save him. The they have stone. gone bottom to secure Roshan, but Roshan is currently sitting top. Uh, looks like we may still have a fight bottom, though, for the Roshan. Windrunner will slightly show on the wave here. They know she's around. And with Bro. the power shot, it looks like they have some vision up top. It is Roshan that is late to the party. The fight's going to start oh, now. Oh, they want this. Silenced up, fuelsing himself on the march here. They've shackled up the DP, but she is now Lincoln's thanks to the Bloodseeker. Looks like they'll okay. still roll in, focusing down the march. He's able to put the BKB, turning back onto the Rubik here. Illich will fall, but it looks like they'll trade out for a support. No, he's still alive. They don't even get it. Now the focus fire, Picasso is being dragged back and forth all over this game. K1 is just eating whoever's in front of him. And the Crystal Maiden will try to get away from this one. I don't think she can. And poor Bro, look at Skull in. Has the BKB, could TP out of this one, it seems. And she'll get out. I just want to point on one thing here. DP did not want to use the Axel on the fight. Mm. He thought that the fight is just too easy. I don't have to press Axel. He was right. Damn, he was right. They, if you're jumping on a hero that you can't kill on boom, I, I don't know. You're not yeah, winning fights like this. They're they jumping the DP, damage. but they're just stunning the DP. They're not even pressing other spells. They're not even right-clicking the DP. So why jump the DP then? Yeah, I mean, you almost need like a... Gotti? Or I mean, maybe we go with like a full crit or something. Windrunner, but... Because needs a lot now. He's actually going to try to finish out the Hurricane Pike. 
which is so sad. I you need more damage, but she also feels like she can't get knee deep in these fights because she doesn't have that mobility. Rough. It's just a lot on Pakaz now. He can't do much with this hero. It's a single target hero. This is the problem of going late game with the Wing Ranger if not if you are not ahead. So they gotta find a way to win a fight. They, they gotta find the perfect jump. But Undying is being a big problem. So they might have to jump on the Undying. I mean, like, he wouldn't be a bad one. He's a save. Yeah. Almost to the Agno Scepter on Knight here. I mean, that's something. I don't think this is the answer, but it's going to help. Three minutes on the Aegis. Oh, Rupture? Uh oh, uh oh. You're just very. De oh my god, oh that force my goodness. Okay, no. Just dead. D E D dead. And no buyback. Mm -hmm. through. Huge axe jump actually from the Storm Spirit. It's the reveal for it. They use the focus wire, but can you keep these heroes in? They're gonna pop the BKB. She's now used on the Death Prophet. Another big heal. K1 running forward has the Aegis. He won't care if he goes down once. He finally does it, but you haven't gotten anything of value just yet from Boom. Because is getting gone on. It's another axe jump with the Storm Spirit, but they can't protect the Windrunner. She's gone. It's a BKB zip out of here from Storm, but Analog with the DD. He feels impossible to go on. His team feels no shame whatsoever. And although, yeah, 5,000 damage done to the Vi Lama, he did his job. Yeah, I mean, KJ held the Thompson for so long just to save the DP that he could not use it in the end. He still has the Thompson. Good. Oh, poor Seth. Not enough to avoid the science, but I think enough to avoid death. I bet this was like a weird moment on the comms. The Vi Lama. Just waiting for the tombstone save. <laughs> and it's never coming. It just never happened. Still 46 seconds on Pakas. I mean, they did get some kills that make this network lead not look so bad. Uh, the Divine Llama kill was about 600 gold going to Sodoms, 800 going to everybody else. So, like, they got a lot there, but still. Uh, that was your only kill during that fight. Some people would say Heroic are a bunch of noobs by not going bottom lane since Pakaz is dead for like 40 seconds. Some say they would be like a ma mature team, mm. but just respecting the enemy, not throwing the game. They're not noobs. Yeah, I kind of wanted them to go bottom and see if Pakaz would buy back. But yeah. I get it that they're just playing safe. They can't be new. Didn't pick. Yeah, but we know how the chat is. <laughs> when they see things uh, like no. this. Come on, guys. The carry is dead. Why don't you just go finish the game? Uh, there's, a, there's a hankering for violence. How about it, too? I wish they tried to end. It would have been the more fun thing to see. We also have a uh, Rubik sitting here with the potential Eon disc. Uh, he's able to leave it unlocked and relock and uh, activate it whenever he wants. He also has a shackle shot, which will last for 10 seconds if he lasts it to a tree. Yeah, you don't want to get shackled. So he's kind of going bottom now, but do they want to go high ground? That's the question. Uh, I mean, now Mars, he has the Wind Waker. Yeah. Let's see the impact of the item. Uh, <laughs> I think it will be good when he gets ruptured. Yeah. Otherwise. Look, Davalam just doesn't care. Yeah. Forward. Lincoln's popped already. They have to be careful. One of them is going to get shackled and they will not like it here. Crystal Maiden going to get yulsed up by the Mars actually, but it only take a little bit of damage to take her down afterwards. Divine Llama will pick it up here. They have actually locked on with the shackle onto the Storm Spirit. He didn't expect it. Divine Llama will get a double kill bye actually back. here. And we Analog back, with sir. the question mark. Holy moly. Storm jumping back through. They wouldn't do it to me twice. 
BKB pops here, still wanting to take down this DP, but has to back on out of this. He won't refresh it. Hey, Ooh! They... Are they Where's going my to steal team? him? Yeah, where's the tombstone? It's Don't a focus fire. Are they focus firing each other here? They do have the death prophet Look locked and die. loaded. <laughs> Easy kill. And now KJ. Yeah, couldn't get the tombstone saved. Sodom still wants something. But you've lost Megas and oh no, now you've gotten... Oh god, the rupture. So he gets four step. No, stop moving him. Oh god. Oh my god, dying to a telekinesis rapture <laughs> is the worst. Uh, it's not fun. Shackle completely misses. Huge blink away from the Rubik there. Schofield is putting on a show. I think they gotta ban this Rubik next time. We saw his shiny with the hero earlier today. Who got the jam on heroic side, by the way? Oh, this is not good. Oh, can't believe. They called... They called GG. Uh, uh. What is this? I don't think the cause is ready me, to be done yet. I would say that this question mark WTF from Analog just got into their minds. This GG coming out of nowhere? Interesting. This is going to add some spiciness for the next one. I think it will. The mid matchup. I think we can just chill and watch the mid matchup for like <laughs> five to ten minutes. Yeah. I don't care. We'll just uh, we'll see a few huskars and meepos maybe in the next one. Really Ooh. want to cheese and get some spicy mid action. Uh, yeah. I mean, next this game could just be one v one. True. We, we don't even just need make it a one v one. That would we be have nice. Yes, right. We do these things. Everybody just huddles up now. around the mid lane, just watches one v one. That could be pretty nice. Uh, I mean, this is uh, that game was in Boom's hand. They they had a decent lead, good net worth, and it just completely turned around for them. Uh, maybe this nerf wasn't enough to the Pangolier. The roll was still doing some awesome work in the fight. The Vi Lama came back from a pretty rough lane, and to really performing for the team. And of course, Rubik Man just made it impossible for Kaz to get these free kills that he wanted. Yeah, they just had to have some sort of cover for the strong initiation that Boom had. And that was the Tombstone. Yeah. They killed the Tormentor. They got the Tombstone with the Shard on the Undying. They went to the fight top. Tombstone save. And everything's good for Heroic. And solid gameplay overall as well. Mm -hmm. Very well done from them here. Uh, bringing the first loss to Boom Esports in 14 games. Uh, so that's going to be... Something that Boom Esports is not used to here. They're going to have to try to come back. We're going to go to a break here for about 5 to 10 minutes. Uh, I'm Math Magician 10 by the way, and that's Ace. I heard a lot of uh, what or who are the casters in chat. That's us. I appreciate you guys watching. We'll go to a 5 or 10 minute break here and be back with game number 2. So stick around. There's more Dota on the way.
And he's just so demanding. He's like, get us into the game. Get there now. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming back, guys. Tree League Season 23 closed qualifiers. I know you saw the graphics said that Boom won that 1-0, but uh, we did look at that all chat. The question mark uh, WTF. Uh, that wasn't very nice, so we decided to give uh, the win to Boomy. That, that <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> So, uh, Heroic does have the 1-0 victory, guys. Graphics, you know, it's it's fine. Uh, we Almost are seeing... got me. Oh, yeah. That would be elite. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen an eSports do that at, like, a competitive level, but that would be funny if it's like, hey, any all chat, and you just lose. No, none of that. <laughs> what? Be bad. Too real bad. That would erase some of the Dota history. True, it would. You revision uh, another set of a, a lot of offlane band. Well, not as many as the last time, I think. We saw slightly more. We do see the Batrider band out now from Heroic. It was a pretty pretty farm Batrider by the end there. I don't just... team pick. And the Undying band. Radiant Much team. respect. Mm. Oni. Okay, so boom. Win streak got broken with one loss. Or was it only for series one. Ah, uh, was games or was, series? I was thinking game. Uh, I think it was games as well. Plus, I can go there real. So they had. If it was games. This is insane. They had one, two, three, four, five, six, Ten seven, eight, remaining. ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay, so it was thirteen game win streak. Okay, that was thirteen. Yeah, so it's not impressive anymore. It's not 14, it was 13. 13, oh, okay. they stuck. That, that was... Dire team ban. So they're banning the Pango. Why they don't just ban the Bloodseeker and the uh, DP oh. as well? I don't know. I think the Undyne is what made that Bloodseeker. They really enabled them. I think that K1 still played a fantastic team. Not going to stay. Let's see. Oh, that. the DP ban. <laughs> but... Uh, I think that the Undying definitely made that one happen. I'm honestly surprised that the Rubik made And first pick, Rubik. So Schofield is confident. Mm -hmm. Ten seconds yeah, I mean, that's a hell of a hero to pick up so early. Especially now that there are other much more meta heroes on the board. Even just this tiny. I mean, you're looking at a 2-3-4 flex. Rubik is only staying in one spot. Tiny will murder Rubik if found. Enchantress. And it'll mur murder the Enchantress as well. So, so far, this is a pretty nice start for Boom Esports. Yeah, they're a solid time force pick. They've done that in the past. Ten seconds remaining. They played on Zlatem's hand. Five seconds remaining. Always a good hand to put it in. Yeah. I wonder what they do here to combo with it. You could do some extra nuke damage on Cause 5 if you'd like. Uh, Gyrocopter banned out, unfortunately. I think that would have been a good pick. Nice target from Heroic. I think it's okay to go with the CM here on Boom. Mm. Oh, nuke damage. I like. I like, I like. And the break. Mm -hmm. So far, quite nice. I think we could get a, a lane maybe with it. Itself uh, an offlaner. Mars still in pool. Doom still in pool. Ten seconds remaining. We don't wanna give Centaurs. too many Five good spells remaining. to this Rubik. I think Centaur would probably be fine. Awkward. I think you need to pick Mars. Mm. If you pick Centaur here, Heroic just goes for Mars. So since you are picking first, you gotta go with the Mars. Yeah, Mars Hoodwing sounds like a solid lane. Oh yeah. Radiant Doesn't lose much. Picked. Oh my. Well, okay, if that so just doesn't it, give it away. That's just uh, the cover. Similar to what we had last game with the Undying Tombstone. This is just, I'm gonna play with your Decrypt on the frontline thing. I'm gonna re rely on your heal, on your grab. But Enchantress can dispel it. 
True. That feels like a really rough spot to pick that in. Brewmaster gets picked up. That gets picked up. Okay, this is the easiest Doom pick of my life. Scorfield's saying, do it. Big yeah. Doom. Run Just it, do man. it. You can Doom and Scorched Earth pretty quick. Ten seconds <laughs> you can Doom the Rube. Well, I think whenever we saw it was the Arlington Major, I think. Brewmaster is crazy popular, and Doom was one of the most popular heroes to pick against it. What's the best way to make sure you fight in Brewmaster? Don't fight into control. Just the problem of playing Doom against the Brewmaster is the stat resistance from the from the pandas. They gotta have ways to kill this Brewmaster. Mm -hmm. Or to just outfight it if you can't prevent him from pressing R. Yeah. Dire team back. Slug. Oh my. Fish hero? Yeah, not a lot of AoE damage on this lore. Yeah. Now you just bend the lash, because analog plays it. Oh yeah. Remaining. I think it's just uh, you can leave the pango in. Stark actually doesn't bad match. Five seconds remaining. Definitely lash track plus big huh? Ban the Lash and... Apparently oh, Lush is like an auto ban. There's no way you're thinking about any other ban. Running through valuable reserve pack. Ember! Ember? Do you want to pick up the Lush track? Where are you putting it? So why Ember? Because Analog loves the hero? Could be. Five seconds be remaining. Oh, they, they gotta. They, they're taking their time to think about this Ember Band. They have a lot of spare time, two minutes. So why would they ban the Ember? They still gotta pick their mid lane. It feels like because Zlatim's place tiny on this team. Oh, wait. Yeah. Sorry? I don't, I don't think that... No, sorry, I just didn't think about it like that. I don't think that Ember really... counters off like Ten seconds remain. Yeah, right? So I think you're... Clearly, Especially they're just looking from at... the off lane. Yeah. They're surely just thinking about matchups in the mid lane. Which, again, I have no idea why they wouldn't just ban off the left track. There's no way you're playing Clark. Into a less track. There's no way you want to play tiny into a less track either. Huh. Interesting. Unless they. I don't know. They're planning on picking something like. I don't know. Beastmaster. Uh, the Ember could help to clear the summons. Not a bad thing, but then you get. Wait. Before I say this, didn't they change the uh, Enchantress card in the patch? The shard? The little... Or sorry, the, the Agamus have friends. Little friends. It's on the... On the Agamus. Oh no, they didn't change it at all. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you could you could uh, get your Agonist Scepter versus the Beastmaster. It's a long, long journey to get this item. But yeah, you can definitely <laughs> get there. Remaining. So if they're not banning Lash, Five that means they are remaining. picking Lash, right? <laughs> I, I'm thinking about just that too. Move your tiny to the off lane. Oh, okay. thank God. Ooh. Okay. You spent all your reserve time. <laughs> to eventually bend out the last record. So what's up with the Amber? Do you wanna... Do you wanna pick like... I don't know. You, you gotta have something. Remaining. That's done. 
I think it's not related to their last pick. It's just a comfortable hero for analog. You gotta be it. Sure. Unless this Pugna is a core, I don't know. Uh, it doesn't feel like a Pugna core. They could technically magnet, but there's a Rubik. I wouldn't magnet. Omni? Omni's not great either. Okay, it's just Centaur. It's just that hero. I don't... You just took them three picks to get the Centaur. I don't want to blame them for this, but I really feel like the Centaur should have been Pugna is another hero. Than where is this Pugna royally makes this draft weird. As we said, like the Enchantress makes it so that any time you try to decrypt someone, it don't matter. It don't matter. Five seconds remaining. Draft is wide open for Heroic now. Give me a damage at dealing mid laner. I like Lena. like Quap. I like Quap. One of my favorites here. I like Invoker as well. It'd be really cool and good for uh, Viper. Viper? Don't say this. Hey, I wouldn't love the pick. I think it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> I think more realistically, yeah, Invoker Quap. Uh, maybe they go back for the Pango. I think that's a bit weird to do. You could no, potentially. The banned. You could potentially Huskar them, actually. I don't think you have to. No. Not with the nuke from the Oh my god. All right. Now they have a save. Bye bye, Tiny. Good. Get yourself out of the game. Can we flex anybody else into the mid lane? How's your hoodwink mid there, buddy? I mean, you can play the lane. It's annoying. You would rather go against, like, I don't know, DK. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, OD against Slark, against Stampede with the Astro. I really like this OD pick, but they don't hit towers. True. They, I, uh... they have like the Brulings and some Enchantress scripts to do that. Ten seconds remaining. I'm imagining this as like it's a, an outer world absolute like disaster in the mid lane. Sodoms has no gold. His team has to rotate. His side lanes are already losing, and like they just get stomped. Maybe, maybe they get a really nice lane on. Ill Right, he's they're able to send their sports med, they're able to kill the outer world despair. Tiny has a game and he's murdering Schofield. Yeah, maybe they, that they, they, they gotta do something like this a really rotation on the mid lane. He can bait out the astral, then they go. Um, yeah, but I can definitely see KJ going mid as well when he at five minutes, at six minutes, he, you get a crypt, you go there. I know KJ loves to get to go with the impetus build, mm. but it's not easy to defend towers on boom side early. So if you have like three points on the enchant, you can definitely threaten some towers. Mm -hmm. This might be one of those uh, enchant heal games. Because if you're around, whenever the tiny try to get some kills, you can fight people away with crates. Yeah, awesome. I guess the bug that makes sense as well, right? Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think Enchant, no matter what, please level W. <laughs> it's up in the air whether or not you go for Q or your E with it, but... Yeah, just... Alright, chat, are you ready? Uh, this is, is Vent versus Slark. I want the Slark to do well. I would like to see, just just for my own uh, selfish reason, because I wanted to pick Slark and everybody. <laughs> it was into an Abaddon, and they said that hero is just bad. You can't pick that hero. And it made me sad, because I think that Slark is, uh, he's playable. So, I want Boom to own. Yeah, I like some Slark gameplay myself. But I do prefer some Ruby gameplay. True. Can we have both? Your future is grim. I think we could have both. Would be a weird one, but I, I think that I could see Schofield maybe stealing some bushwhacks and stealing some <laughs> avalanches, but Slark just murders everybody around. Thirty seconds to battle. Thirty seconds. Showtime, folks. 
And we haven't seen any huge rune fights just yet. It's been uh, smooth sailing for everybody involved so far. It's about time we had some wild play. So are they really going for this top rune? The Watch out. I don't like but... One thing. No, I'm <laughs> Still somehow... They get themselves three rune because somebody went around the backside. Are they dying for it right now? All like five heroes of Boom grouped up for the first rune. And the then Divai the Lama? Same. Yeah, Divai Lama snuck behind and grabbed the rune from out behind them. Damn. I think last game they got three as well, right? Yep. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Ignite the fire of the brewmaster. Oh, panda, blast. baby. A double blast. Yeah. This is a very good plus five here to play. You just hit people, you blast them if you if they go on you. You get five damage per level. Life's Dude, good. Panda. And is actually just stepping up. He's like, I know you cannot win this. Yeah, you can't out-trade the bug, nah. No. What's happening on our loved mid lane? Yeah, true. Any question marks yet? Dyer's not yet. Not yet. Been... They're just farming. I heard some Astros here and there. But not many denies. Right, yeah. I guess it's all been mostly like hearing the What on earth is that? <laughs> the hell baton. He's fine. Never. He's farming. He's bringing his bottle. I mean, this is going to pop off whenever you just get continually clicked. Cuz I think uh you could max your Q in this lane uh, as analog. I haven't seen many of the recent ODs to see what they're trying to do. I, that is weird. I don't like that. ODs? Yes. Dunbeetle. Weird. It's just a hard hero to balance. If you buff him, it, it, it's just OP. Mm -hmm. If you nerf him, People just don't fake it. I, mean, I don't like the hero, so I'm, I'm down for picking. <laughs> okay with me. I'm down for a last rework. Mm. Right. Looks like Dyer's getting a lot of CS up in here. They're definitely owning it up. Spark being one of the ones to watch out for as well. If he gets off in the lane, then they could just kind of take over this brewmaster's game you are someone that's able to just kind of like force the ulti and then pounce away and all of a sudden the master is left one this lane oh very nice pull probably no they didn't kill the creep in time oh yeah it's just too hard to make this pull work Thank you. lane's fine for the brewmaster it's kind of hard to play against these pugna so he's getting decent amount of CS. Problem is you're not able to uh, slow down Pakas at the moment. When they hit three, let's see if that changes. He wants the deny on this. If it, I can't believe he's waited around for this. Okay, he gets the deny on it. Let's get lifted back into a clap. Trying to turn around, actually, Pakaz has the pounce Still if he wants bounce. it, but is blocked by the Brewmaster. Now they're in danger here. High fives all around. Schofield needs another fairy fire to work this one through. Pakaz, can he get away from this one? I think the last hit's going to be here. Divai Lama with the winning right click in the matchup gets first blood. And well done. That'll propel his game even further. He got outplayed hard by Davai Lama. <gasps> oh, no. The bounce play. Oh, okay. He does end up getting the kill, but he doesn't get any XP for it. Oh no. 
This is the start of a disaster for Bruma on the top lane. Lane was just fine. Now Brewmaster is up there with his Lark CS. Okay, yeah, go somewhere else. Analog and Dage here. This is exactly what I said needs to happen for them to somehow win this lane. They need to bring somebody in to help out the Tiny after winning their other lanes. Uh, unfortunately, they are losing the other lanes. Yeah. They'll try to make it happen. I mean, Centaur is getting some decent CS on the bottom lane. Ooh, Knight in danger. KJ will get the kill. As they throw the tower in. Oh, I mean, Bro. that's uh, that's the Enchantress gaming. KJ's level four. He's... Oh my goodness. He's going for the Enchant and the Ampetus. Okay. Wow, okay. So damage, damage, damage. The heals. <laughs> he wants to get five and go mid. They'll get another kill on Panda here. A big dive Bakazi's in. Mad. Trying to get... Slotums here, but Slotums, he actually misses the Brewmaster. He just runs on away. Schofield actually ends up getting the Centaur creep as well. You can tell by his body language that Pakaz is mad. He's trying to hit people, get kills. No, Slotums. Okay, he's trying to toss back so he gets the room. Oh, he just barely got it, but here's a hit squad. There's an Acorn, an Enchantress, a Divine Llama, and an Analog here. Slotums will just die. Uh, which means Red. this isn't a real mid lane. We don't know if the OD is actually a better laner than Tiny. They're slowly crumbling. Mm -hmm. Zlatims is rotating level 5 to the top lane on a Brewmaster that has full HP. Mm -hmm. They are failing with the game. Now he's just dying. It's only 6 minutes in. Yeah, no, there's not been a ton of game played here. We are still seeing a large lead in for Heroic. Uh, this is a dive in half. Yeah, Catapult is dead. Almost. We just mess with the creep aggro and yeah. Is KJ still waiting? <laughs> Alright, okay. Easy creeps. Illich there. Oh, yeah, you can see Centaur is the only one that's having a decent game. I suppose the Slark system's so bad, but Tiny is very bad. Look at they're this. Gonna, Schofield pretty, TP. Everybody around. Double Stormhammer will connect. Big stun in from the Sven, but I don't know. I don't think Illich can turn this one around. Big Double Edge doesn't get the kill that he wants, and now Knight getting ran down once again here. Avalanche will take down Schofield. They will still trade for Knight, though. And the Free throw away. That'll be all he can do on Sodom's. AJ will. Oh. Ole. <laughs> he is seen by creeps. Yeah, but his dribbling the enemies. And finally, his light thumbs find something. What did he find? Three? A kill on the bottom lane. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The three of a kill. I see. Okay. Stop. Bottoms will not have any part of it. And uh, Slark up here. What are the, uh, we're going for an Echo Quick. How about that? A little bit of HP. Good mana region for the farming. Especially that Void Stone. He'll get some HP as well. Which is nice against this high damage OD. And the Vailama is going straight for a Radiance. Oh! Yeah, I mean, Divine Llama's having a pretty good game. I think he can afford it. It was a needed kill on the Enchantress, but still hefty net worth lead right now for Heroic. Every lane is going well for them. You need to get the Tiny back in this one somehow. More kills like he had on the bottom lane will help out, but just how much can he do without really letting this OD get out of control? This is a big wave coming bottom, and K1 doesn't feel comfortable going there. Very good yeah, I mean, ward. Yeah, they, can they do anything with it? I'm not sure. KJ goes down once Again? more. Bottom's getting the kill. This is the sort of stuff that'll get him back in this game. 200 gold for him. Almost 300. They'll try to make need something to happen. Bring the they need to bring one more. They need to TP with the Brewmaster. Oh. 
Gets only stomp. Well done. Didn't let him steal the ulti there from the centaur. But a nice save from Analog. Dropping the hammer as well. Can they kill Sven as he comes back off as a big stun? And he gets decrypt. What? He's actually not dying from this one. Panda trying to go into the tower. He's not able to collect on the kill. And they'll get another one here for Analog. Sven lives. And he might die. Does he turn around on night? Oh my oh goodness. One more hit. No. Now he'll go back to farm. Oh my goodness. Throw the three. Throw the three. Uh, yeah, he won't have time to use the fate bolt. Oh, that is. Man, this a analog disaster. TP was clutch with the astro. Uh huh. I only thought that was a delay. I had no idea that was going to be a save. And the Vailama is pretending it's not with him. <laughs> it's not Dude, his team getting dived. He's, he's played his own game here. You know, it's farming up with Panda here. I think Panda took a few more than he expected, but he'll still get a good amount of gold on the Centaur as he needs. We're starting to level it out here on the cores, but Tiny is still the one that has fallen well behind. Top tower is under attack. Don't want to give this good start to this van. Ooh, Look at analog. the skellies. Just thanking for the catapult. A1 do be hitting up them creeps. Get more stacks. Oh, the nice. wild wing ripper sending him on back. Panda taunting Sodoms. Decrept his creep. But looks like they will get away. This is a feels bad for Boom. Mm -hmm. If you have to use the Stampede like this, you are not happy at all. Oh. Brewmaster still has OT ready. I wonder if they're not, they're not planning on just pressing R on the Vailama. <laughs> I on feel like some at this lane. point, he's like looking at everything and he's like, I just don't want to mess it up. I see everything that's happening around the map. My team is winning. I'm getting a Radiance. I don't want to upset them. I see, I see. Akaz has Echo Saber. In three minutes, oh. we're gonna hit night time, so he might consider moving. Speaking of moving, the Velom is bottom now. Yeah, I know, they actually uh, they made him show up. Unfortunate. This will hurt the Radiance timing, but he has to make sacrifices for the team sometimes. Who's farming top now then with Pakaz? Is it just gonna be Sven moving his way over? I mean, since Brewmaster is just farming, makes sense that he goes to the safe lane, right? Mm-hmm. He'll just hit grips anyway. True. I like how KJ is starting to take those aggressive creeps again. That's farm that is leaving the mouth of Pakaz. Unless he feeds the entire crew into him, then it's... Well, oh, still going back. Now he's back top. He's moving a lot. Oh, yeah. Those Brewmasters are, uh... Pickle beans. <laughs> You never know one place to stay. Looks like they'll Avatas up on Enchantress. No points in the heal. She won't live through that one. Huge sharpshooter if somebody was there, but the Violama expertly walks away. Yeah, KJ keeps tanking these ganks for his team. Yeah. It was a big rotation from Boom. The Raindrops alone heroes. almost got five. What does Rubik have? Oh, wow. Got the life drain, eh? They're just, like, they're getting more farm. Every time that they have the enchantress on the map, they're just farming more. And even the Rubik is getting a decent amount of farm. He has a lot of farm in the Rubik. I don't know where it's come from. Oh, nice toss. Huh? Not for now. He has a lot of CS on the Rubik. <laughs> yeah, More he's just hitting creeps, I guess. <laughs> huh. I wonder if he like stole another blast whenever we weren't looking. We just got a lot of creeps. I feel like that's the only way. It's the classic Rubik, just fade bolting waves. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, so far, the Lama has been allowed to just bank up 3,500 net for no reason because he is not feeling pressured at all in this lane. Illich has to run away, actually. They're going to run back on the Pugna here. Stun connects. They could dispel him if they want, and it looks like they will, just to make sure there is no decrep for him. Big blast from Schofield means he's going to get the pressure towers OD? without himself, actually. But OD in the mid lane. Knight decides that's his kill. They'll pick it up there with the sharpshooter. And that's OD down for the first time this game, I believe. This is a nice prize for them. Mm -hmm. A lot of gold, a lot of XP. Tiny has dagger now. I think they're finally starting to feel the effects of their unlimited farming with no real uh, purchased items. <laughs> but that's about to change. We have the relic completed on the Brewmaster. Once he has Radiance, he is going to be a nightmare to deal with because that's Slark. I don't know how you get in and out of these fights. This is gonna be hard indeed. Good part. Oh, okay, Jay. A little bit of danger here. They'll decrep up. No ulti, they know. But they might want to turn this one back around. Illich will take a ton of damage here. Sonos as well. Just getting prepared to take this fight. Panda will get the hammer dropped right on top of him. A huge orb in from Analog. K1 is starting to fight. K2 is like, stop! Please! Stop kidding! Hitting each other! We're all friends! Oh no. This is weird Zlark is ulted he has diffusal blade he's very strong does analog have astro in three seconds only so they will bring sven low here i think because tiny has blink and the combo so i think k1 is dead i would agree with that they didn't drop the hammer on him they dropped it on pugna so oh, theoretically big I don't know, steals Avalanche and buys time for the Astro to come in and play, but I think they can just burst K1. He might actually be happier just keeping the Nether Blast. For how much damage? I don't know if I want to cancel Zlatem's Blink Dagger. That's the question. I don't think he can. He... Oh boy, this is gonna be interesting. Okay, big avalanche in. They will get the kill on Schofield to turn around on it. Finally, the Astro comes in on the Sven. They're not able to kill him. A lot of damage actually done to Bacaz, but a nice Acorn actually will slow them in their tracks from Knight. So and they overall, didn't got the kill on this Sven. The yeah. Sharpshooter missed. Mm-hmm. And the Avatars didn't do as much damage as I thought it would. Oh. I didn't see if he met the combo, but yeah. Invisibility. Uh, I mean, I, I'm not sure. I, I think even if he did commit everything, it still would have been really, really difficult. I think the Avatars was on a different hero. There it is. Rain is complete. Bailama will see a new world of farm coming his way. Now he just needs the shard. Radiance bottom and he will be attack. a happy boy. Uh I suppose. Yeah, the cancel early is nice. I feel like the cancel early isn't as great anymore now that you can't just choose which Radiance panda to go to. I don't know if he'll actually prioritize it that much. Still very good. This is Boom's timing, because it's night time, you have the fusion on the Zlark. Yeah. So you are really trying to make the plays happening. But you see that ward spotting Pakas. Yeah. He's he not knows there's a ward somewhere. Any sentries. I've actually I've rarely seen it on that side uh, of that little mountain top. I've seen it on the other side that faces towards the room. But not often see it on the full top of it. And that it's on the on the top of the top of the cliff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Making Can't the word even more you. effective now by taking a tree that was beside <laughs> it. Thank you. Top tower Says Roy. See how boom they, they really wanna use this Lark nighttime advantage. Mm. Are they use it to break some spokes because getting burned a bit here. Going to get wait, K1? Uh -huh. How? Okay, well, what? K1 is just dead. Because it's trying to get on top of Analog here. There's no banish for a bit here. 
Mikasa's got to be careful. He's already so low, and now on the other side, they'll finally use the ulti here at Divine Llama. Panda won't last very long on this one. He'll get this spell sent on the way back, and they'll get another kill. I have no earthly idea how Sven could have even died here, and it yes. was from Tiny, Centaur, and the Hoodwink. Okay, they just murdered him. Yeah, now the Sharp Shooter connected. And he was close to BKB. Oh, he has yeah. BKB now. I think it was flying to him. That, that's close. Yeah, that's close. Not close enough. <laughs> no, not close enough for him to live, unfortunately. <laughs> so close. I'm just surprised. It feels like you uh, you have this much of an advantage on the map. And for you to be able to like dig down and kill the carry on the other side of the map while not like losing your other rest of your heroes horrifically is pretty well done. So, nighttime is about to end. Heroic will feel more comfortable fighting. Yeah. We have shard on the Dava, on the brewmaster. I mean, they're gonna feel comfortable fighting once they have whatever this plus one item is for whoever they're waiting for on the team. I'm sure they're waiting for something. Okay, so which place is about to get finished on OP? I guess that's it. Yeah, you are not and waiting for the Dragon Lance on the Enchanters, right? Right. <laughs> yeah, she's bringing four staff. Maybe the BKB was what they were waiting for, and now they feel okay for it. There's also just a raw timing of everything. Like, okay, at 20 minutes, we're going to get our Tormentor. We'll get a Shard for someone that's really cool. Then we can go top and Roche. Or no, sorry, go bottom Roche, because it'll be down there. That's asking too much. Maybe. I mean, at this point, they're just farming so much of the map again. Like... The entire top half of the jungle, you can see Sark does not feel comfortable running up there right now. They just aren't getting near as much farm as Heroic are, and Heroic that. are easy to keep this game. They, they really slowed down Zlatem's item progression, so they're not on a rush now. They can still wait for the next God Strength to make a play. Only 50 seconds away. Yeah, I mean... You literally just use it to take the Tormentor. There's no reason for you to force a fight. KJ is once again taking farm and couriers out from the enemy's jungle. And oh no. What did he get that was so good? He got tossed. Unfortunately, he will just die for his sins on Schofield. This hasn't been as uh, perfect as a game as he had last time. So they gotta chill. Where's that ulti from? Who were they saving? It was, was it just, just to save the... I think it was the Tiny. Or himself. I think it was to save himself, yeah. Hmm. I think it's G time for them on Heroic side. It's been that way. I feel like as soon as the BKB flew out, it's been G time, but... They're just... They know. They know exactly the position they're in. It is up to Boom Esports to make something happen on this map. But they're just waiting for whatever next item they have to hopefully take a fight. I mean, what, what's my Slark got? Has he got a, a magical game-winning item? Dag's even completed yet? Yeah, yeah he not has the, the gold. The, the other... His career died. Yeah. I think uh, if he were to disassemble his Echo, he could have like now and go over. Yeah, but there's no reason to. You can just get both. Yeah, Your Echo is too much just damage. Just get it now. And you go fight. Because your tiny is not getting BKB anytime soon, so. Oh. Gotta do something. So Roshan is gonna be the next objective here. Those Latims is, is low on display. Doesn't have Blink Dagger, so. Smoke's not is not gonna connect the way they were expecting. They do find Panda though. A huge stomp in connects onto the Rubik here, plus the Avalanche. The toss is enough, but they will finally get him. Now the OD is in danger. No BKB. So I don't will get a double kill actually. And here comes Mikaz jumping onto the Brew Panda here. He'll end up getting his ulti off. They're trying to turn this one back around for Heroic, but you're missing a significant sort of source of damage in your OD. He'll buy back on the Rubik here. Pekaz trying to get on top of K1. He'll have to back out of this one with the buyback of Schofield, and he'll get sent into the air. 
If they play this one correctly, maybe they could take him out, but it looks like they don't want to fight under the Boom Esports ward. They have a net worth lead, but still a great fight, honestly, here from Boom Esports. Yeah, having to force the buyback on the Rubik is big already. And they just found the perfect targets. They killed the OD and they instantly killed the Rubik with the sharpshooter. He forced staffed into the sharpshooter. What? The Rubik. Oh, they want to find this van. Actually, I don't know. Did they have any vision around? I think they... They could be here. When it was not. They know the creep's still here. Oh, the he scan. Might around. Did they hit it? Avalanche up. Finding the OD here. Gonna banish himself for a second. Get on out, boys. I don't think you want to stay here any longer. They're gonna jump onto the high ground here, but Kaz finds the Rubik here. This is dieback if they're able to get him. He'll steal just the dispel. Unfortunately, Darkback will not keep him safe in this instance. That is dieback on the Rubik here at a whopping 24 minutes into the game. And Sonos once more tossing back the Sven into the bushwhack, into the stomp. They have some chain stun, but where's the damage here? He gets off. The war cry gets away with a little bit of extra armor, but it's not going to keep them away. BKB finally popped here from K1. The Zampede runs forward. They won't kill the Sven, but then they made him use pretty much everything to get out of there. Yeah, it feels like Heroic doesn't want to fight until an ally has BKB. They're not ready yet. So the team just tanks it. And it's night time. The aggression will be even more now. Yeah, you asked for his lore game. I did. I'm, just, I'm trying to figure out how does he win this game. I mean, we've seen do decent fights. He's dipping and diving. But how do we get these kills? I don't... BKB is cool. I think that's the right thing to do. But, like, there's got to be a plus one item after that that genuinely puts him on top of the spent. Oh, my gotta lord. Be something like... Uh, <laughs> Rubik is not oh, having a great game on the second one. Dude, no, this is not the same Rubik game. Boomer has a very back. good position. Ooh. Agnes Scepter completed on K1 here. Tossing him away. Avalanche as well to keep him at bay. This does mean he will not be able to contest Roach, but there's another blink in from Slotums. He just wants to be beaten. He's a glutton for punishment. He likes the pain. Didn't cast any spells. He just blinked in and got hit. He doesn't want to use BKB because he knows that Sven used OT, so they just gotta wait. Wait and go. How's the BKB on OD? Analog can even leave the base due to this night time. Uh, this is a hard place to be as an OD then because he's got to finish this BKB. He's got damage. I mean, Hurricane Pike is exactly what he needs versus Clark. Get yourself out of that pounce. But the BKB is that like next important moment for him because it's stuff like this. The sharpshooter will connect, they get the kill, the banishment was not enough, there's a jump in for Sven, popping the BKB on Sonos because he saved it on the earlier fight, this is no gosh that's on Sven any longer, Sonos wanted to get the toss away, but they couldn't connect on it, they still get the acorn, it's an avalanche in, he'll toss back, maybe just the enchantress instead, Done. no it doesn't connect, only the bushwhack does, and K1, he'll finish the job actually on the tiny, one kill for him right there, and the rest of boom, they've actually got to escape from this one now. Okay, okay, Zlark was trying to chase Rubik, so the fight is disconnected for Boom. Oh lord, another huge hit with the sun. Night in danger. Finally, we have the God Strength. K1 wants to beat somebody down. Illich will be the next victim, it seems. Getting hit by the impetus as well. Pakaz trying to turn back onto K1. He doesn't have much HP, but will actually jump forward into Illich to get himself out away from the Sark. Now he's going to back out of this one. Stolen oh, pounce, Schofield. but Schofield... Oh, I'm sorry, brother, but your pounce is just slightly smaller than Pakaz's. It's okay. Yeah, and they want to fight without the OD, pretty much. They need to remove these wards, man. They, they got to buy a jam. It's impossible to play like this. Yeah, and a huge word right there. Yep. Since Pakaz just tried to kill this Rubik on the back line for so long and didn't accomplish it, Heroic oh, had a lot of time to just kill the others. I didn't realize 
that he was actually like I, I just thought he wasn't around the fight i didn't realize he was actually ended up not doing yeah he was <laughs> scofield was just juking him with the award on the cliff <laughs> and he had the stomp from the center on top of that oh tp top is it about rush time the next objective we are way past first oh Silenced up. You still have Rubik. four staff. He could, it but better. easy pounds. <laughs> How many permanent adagy do we have on the uh the Slark here? Only two. Only two permanent adagy? Damn. Yeah, he didn't have a great start. Oh hey, oh hey, who are we What's up guys? Why are we running so fast? They're not going Roche. They know that their Roche is not that fast, so... They can't just go unless they team wipe the enemy. How's the BKB on OD? Not ready yet. Still needs 800 gold. Uh... They see a Slark. Dodge and Fuse. The cause. Popping the ulti here. Trying to turn this slightly, but... Yeah, you can't kill this guy. Radiant That's a uh, God's Strength for a... I believe a... Shadow Dance? Not too bad. They will go again. K1? It seems like he didn't want to. He's gonna bait on the wave. He won't have ulti for this fight. Oh, somebody popped here. Roshan is mm. coming on in. I think now that you know that K1 doesn't have OT, you are free to play the map. Yep. I think also that you saw the OD do. TP top. Oh, Illich. He gets tossed up actually by his friend. Thankfully, it didn't matter. The avalanche was enough with the tree toss to get that kill. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. There's the BKB on OD. 100 gold away. Hmm. Let's see if that will change anything. Alright, they lose this tower. They almost lose their right to Roche. Radiant's bottom tower has fallen. And now Which they still got up, it. 31 minutes. Yeah. Not a single Roche on. Damn, this Hojoink is strong. It He's gotten a lot of kills actually on uh on spends. I think on OD as well. Got the maelstrom. We're we're a bit of a farming hoodwink here, going for the glight near in total. When he hit 18, he would just steal a lot of damage. Look how fast he kills the camps. Mm-hmm. Alright, maelstrom's no joke. What about the nerf? True. He was so bad. Is it safe to take Roshan yet? I, I guess they just... Like, neither team has fantastic damage. I, OD is great damage. Sven is great damage. Never mind, they do have Roche. Why, why aren't they Roche? Oh, Sven just showed top half H, half mana. Jeez, now they can do it. Oh, this is like a name vibe for Bone to just go Roche. Yeah. Yeah, going right on in for it. Looks like they will likely give this Aegis 2 because I think they can still only take tier 2s right now. I don't think they can go high ground unless they get a really favorable fight. Yeah, their high grounds like Bugna blasting and tiny hitting. So it's not that fast. But the defense from Heroic, I mean, it's okay. We got the Telekinesis, Enchantress is annoying. Do they have a smoke? Could they used a lot of smokes these games. Let really at see. this point you just want to methodically run down some powers, you know. Get this uh this triangle and control on the radiant side and just push on top wave, push on mid wave, get yourself two towers. Radiant's top tower you don't have to do anything fancy. Bro, you're gonna smoke don't. up into the ages. Yeah, because they know that Bones kinda spread on the map. 
They are going for the, the hero that's farming his own jungle. 5,000 net worth lead right now. They're going to try to use a jump in with the stun onto the centaur here. They don't have the subsequent stuns. He's actually able to run away from this one. Four staff low, gets the glimmer as well. He's not dead just yet. And the rest of the team will try to turn this one back in. He even tried to get the kill with the enchantress. It's not enough. A ghost shift to now in Sodoms. They just haven't been able to kill anyone. Finally, they take down Schofield. Everybody's so low. Panda is just keeping everybody alive! He'll turn this one finally, it seems they found the culprit, they will take down the Pugna after all these heals, but now, oh boy, the Hurricane Pike! Does he keep on with the hits? Oh, you don't want oh, that. Oh, <laughs> he had to destroy with the Depth Shroud. You can't dispel these, my friend. Mm. But he still wants it. Stun in, now with the Pounce. As the Silence, he'll try to force staff away, but it's not going to keep him alive. Illich will pick up the kill. And finally, Boom have something to show for the Sages. Yeah, they, they were so close on Heroic to win the fight, but the Pugna just did a great job at keeping the heroes alive. Oh boy. I don't know if he's gonna get his ulti off for this one. The Silence and Manta leashed up still. He doesn't even have an ulti to use. The okay. evasion is too much, but he'll keep on going for Pekaz. Dispels the slow and oh, he doesn't have a blink. But there it is. Huge avalanche toss in as well. The six kill streak of the Brewmaster will finally go down. He's going to get lifted, but not actually onto the cliff. Oh no, Schofield goes down too because. This is a chain feed. Mm -hmm. Did this Van die? I think he was the only one not dying there, right? He I believe so, died. yeah. A1, he he's just trying to get that far. So farm. close of killing the Centaur. Then they were so close of killing the Tiny. Mm -hmm. The heal and the kite is just very well done from Heroic. It feels like they're playing these almost as good as they can, but there's just some targets they're not able to take down right away. That centaur lived for way too long. Yeah. Tiny's getting there. Has the Kanda. Now Boom is ready to play Dota. They have good vision on the enemy triangle. Oh, Avalanche connects. Constant 12, pop to BKB there. A lot of damage already, look at that. He loses so much, he gets the four step onto the high ground actually. Do they have any more damage to pound through? It's just barely enough from Pekaz! He only needed two hits. Boom Esports are bringing this one back. They don't want to go down without a fight. This is a fortification for a tier two. There is no tier two bottom, so the fort won't refresh. If they felt inclined to hit high ground, they technically could on Boom, but I don't think they would hit that. Oh boy. Yeah, this, uh, this Enchantress on the high ground is annoying. Mm -hmm. They still have some time with on the Aegis and a BKB on the backpack. So Pakaz is feeling good now. Mm. He's going for MKB next. I like it. There's a lot of evasion running around. First off on just the passive of the Brewmaster, mm -hmm. but then you also have it on the Radiance. It's good versus the uh, the Warcry as well. So, they're right. They are stuck on their base. 15 seconds on the Aegis, so they might go out for a play, but I still think they need the jam. Oh, they have a DD on Tiny, who could find a huge start. Popping it right away. Waiting for the right moment to strike. Sven's going back in on Ailich, able to pop the BKB himself, using the Stampede to get on in even further. And there's the Avatoss. It eliminates KJ, just completely out of the fight. But now, as the Brew ulti coming on in, they want to take the rest of this fight on their own terms for Heroic. But after losing your pause five, uh, this just feels like a Clark. shell that it could have been. Clark on the backside, hammer gets dropped. K1's able to take one down, but Rubik, I think he'll pop to the Orchid. Yes, he will. Now they're on top of Analog. Gonna banish himself for now. Shadow Dance committed here from the Slark. And with the four staff away, the Analog, he actually dodges out the pounce as well from Pekaz, but not the second one. BKB in. He needs to kill. He will. K1 trying to fight, but there are a lot of stacks of Agi on Pekaz. He just keeps getting bigger. Oh Run my away god. From him, brother. You cannot take this fight. Pull back in from the harpoon so like this is your fight because he's done it a double kill for him the spin is gone but unfortunately the rest of his team died as he was taking down k1 whoever used dust that on this van is the mvp of this team fight and what is is van career doing that 
I don't know. He got blood torn now. He gave oh, up on the MKB the idea. Breaker. Oh man. Bro, they need to address this Lark somehow. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. You are in danger, oh, sir. He didn't even get the D ward. The map is his. 49 Agi. He is level 27. He has just completely sprouted a new hero. And this is the kind of Slark that I like to see. Yeah, and the matchup against this van is good for him. It's very good for this Lark. The OD is not being able to do much on the fights. No, oh, he's... Is that by, I don't know, Hex? Uh, it feels like these BKB timings haven't even been impactful. You think about the OD and it's like, yo, BKB, pump those orbs and like, at some point you'll have enough to drop a hammer and just murder some supports. It just hasn't had the impact that we expect, especially out of this last pick. Yeah, because the kite is real. There's this Lark, you can't really touch him. There's the Stampede, always on point. The Tiny with the BKB. Going in and out. Hold they really need to go and finish the supports first. This, uh, I see now why he went for only the Blood Bone. Because you have that natural already evasion pierce uh, from the item. You get 40% yeah. uh, evasion pierce from it. Which is, it's not an MKB. MKB is all the way up there to 80. It's like literally half. But uh, with everything else that it provides, as long as you're okay with 40% evasion <laughs> pierce, I'm okay with it too. Seems to have been working. Only way they kill the centaur is if they just blow him before BKB. They don't really have the hero to do that until they have Hex on OD. Five man smoke. Ooh, Moving this tiny is gonna hurt. Dyer. Has Let's the see. Aghanims. Oh, Ag and the Conda complete now. He's gonna beat somebody up. Yo, tossing the streets out of the high ground. Feels like somebody is there. They had the silence. He already used the Manta, actually. If they can burst him down, there will be no brew pandas around, but he finally gets out of this one just barely in the nick of time. They've locked up Pecan, but he's able to put the BKB. He's back on top of Analog. Analog doesn't have a BKB to use. He's trying to get the force type away, but Pecan wouldn't let him go for free. Finally has the palace. He lands on the high ground. They're gonna dispel him, it seems. But an Avatar toss up. BKB popped as well on the tiny. Tossing the trees around, though. Kill Schofield. And K1 can't actually stick around on the tiny. Nobody's dying. They just don't have enough resources on Heroic to keep fighting. <gasps> oh my goodness, this is the real panda. Avalanche, toss on in. The man to the dodge, the toss damage, but it's not enough. They still jump in. The cause to get the kill. Two are gone. Roshan will spawn in 50 seconds. It's a great fight for Boom, but it did not seal the deal. These fights look impossible for Heroic. They just don't have a good jump. It's very hard to get into the back line when you the Slark is always on your face, the Centaur is always on your face. You can't ignore this. How do you jump the back lines? Yeah. This is rough. I don't know man. You are stuck with a Rubik Enchantress on your front line. Those guys are not starting fights for you. I think everything is on K1 right now. Now that man's got some broad shoulders. Uh, there's a lot on them right now. First set of Rex, at the very least, 230 seconds on the Brewmaster. Mm. 13,000 net worth speed. They get themselves in prime position to take Roche now that it is up. And it is bottom. They have all control down here for Boom. K1 did pump the God Strength. Which means it's going to be down, actually, by the time that they go to find this Roshan. I don't think they have any place to try to contest. They don't really want to go there. I think they should just need to focus on farming the site of Ice. But OD has no creeps. Are they really trying to fight again? Is this like the GG fight? There's if we no lose, way. we call it. Or is it the, the last fight outside of the base? If we uh, lose this one, we just 
Go for another there... one inside the base, and then we call it if we lose. You don't even have caution. Is it about to be up? You'll have it soon. Uh, somebody's getting burned by a Radiance. I think they know. Stun up. They could murder the Centaur. The hammer's dropped. He's so low and he's broken for the kick of the kill. Then they turn back on the analog. The meek maybe was way too late. Now they're just going to turn everything in for Pakaz. He will get everything that he wants out of this fight. You have to just run away. He's way too large. Thottos will get a nice avatar. up. Pakaz is owning once again. It's a double for him so far. Sven decides that he wants to die too. We'll jump back in on Slanos, but look at this. The trees are getting thrown. They'll try to Shadow Blade away. Almost got on top of the Pugna. We'll drag him back with the it's Harpoon, over. but that means that Pakaz will take him down. 100 seconds gone for him. There are buybacks available. It's very hard to be a believer now. Mm -hmm. They find the almost perfect initiation on the centaur and he's still alive because <gasps> you can't okay. deal with the this Lark shard. I don't... There was just no reason to take that fight. I don't know what they saw in it. If they were trying to catch somebody off guard, they thought somebody would TP I, away. I, I can see why. Because you place a good ward on the high ground and then you can see the back lines. And you can try to jump them before because if they're going on your high ground, it's impossible to go on the back line. Okay. They didn't start on the back line, right? They they went for the centaur. Yeah, because they felt like they could kill it because it was before BKB. If you stun him Dude. from the fog, you can get a kill. But short on the slard and centaur is alive. Mm -hmm. They get themselves Megas now, boom. After losing one game, and game number one, they will come back <laughs> and potentially win this one. It looks like they will. Aegis on the Slark, Ten is in buying back, and Pikaz is gonna try to force them away. Avalanche, he's gonna get banished very <laughs> high. Very high. But looks like as he drops back down, Pikaz will get the kill. K1 is saving buyback for next game. DG is called. And game number two will go in the hands of Boom Esports. Yeah, well played, well, well played. This was a slur game. Mm -hmm. In the I end, like it. everybody did their job on this game. We saw a very good fight on top where Panda just saved the fight by delaying it, healing the cores, the crafting everyone. And yeah, they just ran out of resources on mm. Heroic. They just could not handle a long fight. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, a lot went right for them uh, where it shouldn't have. I think we also had a really good game going for Heroic. And then something happened. I think we started to feel why this OD uh, wasn't having a great time. Didn't go for a BKB for a long, long time. And uh, that ended up hurting them greatly. They got a lot of gold back from him. He wasn't able to keep up with these fights. He wasn't doing out damage. And that advantage that he had grown just got completely thrown over to Slark. And Oz, man, he did everything correctly. One death the entire time. Tons of damage. Focusing the right targets. This was a Slark. You said. He really knew what to do on this game. MVP. I'd agree with that, man. MVP. Yeah. Uh, he had a great game. And he's going to have to have a game like that. If they want a chance in game number three here, uh, we're going to go to about a 10 minute break and then we'll be back with game number three here. Winner goes on to the winner's final or sorry, yeah, the winner's final and then losers. Uh, will they go down to possibly face Kennedy or Estar back? So guys, stick around in 10 minutes. We'll be back with the last game of this best of three.
It starts with this A person that you miss Mine draws a blank I wanna go back, back to the early days When life was an escape Now I just wait for better days I lost myself in your reality I lost myself Thank you. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Dream League Season 23 Closed Qualifiers. We've got ourselves a Game 3 here. It's Boom Esports versus uh, the Heroic side. And uh, Heroic, they came back. They gave us a really good Game Number 1, and then all of a sudden, uh, Boom just murdered them in Game 2. So I'm not sure who I prefer in this Game Number 3, because Boom has been rolling like absolutely on a tear historically, but Rook did, you know, take a chunk out of their armor. So do you think that anybody has the advantage going into this game number three? Um, I don't know if anybody has the advantage here, but boom, definitely they got some momentum go momentum going. So That's yeah, they advantage. might use it for the next one. 
Yeah, but we're not sure how heroic is is dealing with this loss. You could probably cope I, it up. Like, they, hey, might, they might consider it like, oh, okay, maybe this was a draft issue because we had right. to play on the BKB on OD timing, but we never really could get there. So, yeah, they might know what to do next. To totally improve. cope it up. Yeah. Guys, I, I said that I should pick OD, and we picked OD, and it was wrong. <laughs> That game doesn't matter. Go next. Yeah. Let's keep the momentum of the first game. And it's not... Yeah, it's not even like they got trashed game two. Heroic had the game in their hands. We get all the way up to 30 minutes. I, I think it's all of them. I just think there were some issues with Roche fights. Uh, all of a sudden, Picasso is like owning the rest of the game. He's way too strong. So I don't think this is even one that you can... You have to completely throw away like a disaster from Heroic. We'll see if they come back uh, in game number three. It's gonna be a lot of a, a draft change, I think, because for Boom Esports, they think they figured it out, right? Like, they're assuming that whatever they did last time was exactly what they needed to do to win the game. But for Heroic, they're gonna have to make some changes. Analog has to play here that goes online. That was the main issue of the last game. The OD was cool and all in the first few fights, but later on, without BKB, he didn't do much. Now we get into the, the real meta of this uh, drafting phase here. Heroic, in game one, they banned out Primal Beast, Magnet, two, they banned out Batrider, because they got burned by a Batrider in game one. Uh, Life yeah. Stealer, Primal again, Kunkka. This time, they take away Primal Beast. That hero is still in pull. We'll see if Boom Esports are going to try to get a line up with it. I think if I'm Boom, I might eventually uh, ban out the CM and pick up the Primal Beast. Yeah, there's the Primal Beast, there's the Santor as well. They did mm. a good job with the hero. They did, but the Primal Beast has been banned out versus Radiant Surely now. Okay. Yeah. Primal Beast picked up here for Esports Heroic. Definitely brave leaving that hero back in the pool for them. Yeah, you, you can't ban everyone. Since you gotta ban this Batch Rider, Ten you can't really ban the Primal. But the... Life's the first ban life seconds remaining. They discussed that. I'm pretty sure they were expecting this primal pick. So Robic is already good against the primal, but yes. they definitely need more. They need to protect this guy. They get a, a few strong boys in front of him because this is a hero that can struggle. Uh, if there is some sort of jump into the back line. And Primal Beast already fulfills more of that, but Rubik is kind of just playing off of his timing, making sure he can feel the pulverize and get it for himself. So they're banning the Brio Master and the Undying to heroes that Herak did a good job using, and they gotta go back to the DP ban. Lava Loma just played it very well in the first game. Let's see if Heroic are looking to ban more heroes that Boom brought on the second game. Hmm. Like this Lark. Ten seconds I think it's a hard call, but uh, if they don't want to deal with it. Five seconds remaining. Mm. Maybe the Pugna? It was a very good pick as well on Boom side. Radiant team pick. Oh, oh this one is hot. The... Played very well on night. <gasps> oh, you, you keep oh. asking for this guy. Oh, baby. Does this mean I'm going to get to see my Weaver? <laughs> I think it was Bone that banned the Weaver. Was it Bone? Uh... Plus. 10 seconds remaining. Yes, I Boom think... did ban the Weaver. Okay. Five seconds remaining. So does that mean they gotta ban it again? Uh, they might not get a chance to. They might pick that up. 
And that's a fine 16, 17. Weaver plus an offlaner. Did have to get a lot of stuns on Boom to deal with this Weaver. Primal is decent already. You get disarmed when you're on trample mode. So yeah. that means you can't kill the bug. Plus, that means we're going to get a Link double pulverize. Because Rubik will definitely <laughs> steal that. I see. Is CM bad here, Panda? Do you go Pugna? Do you go CM? What's your hero here? Oh, okay. Sky Wrath Mage. Oh! <laughs> All right. That hero has some great spells for everybody to steal. That's kind of unfortunate, but uh, it does come really well with the Primal Beast if that's what you want to do. I still think you could go Gyro or Weaver is here. Uh, I think Gyro is good into Sven. I think there's guys, Jesus. Gyro is good into Sven. Sven is also good into Sven if you want that raw AoE. But you do, you, you need to go... start to get something with AoE. Yeah, you can also go Lash Sven. Then you mm. prevent the Slark. Yeah. Because they, they like to use the Chan against the Chan. I mean, the Sven against the Chan. Yeah. But you need to protect your Sven against the Slark. Unless the Viloma has a good hero against Slark. Which yeah. I think it's hard. With Timber not in pool, the meta offlaners don't yeah. all do great for But do you want to pick Sven and the Lash now? Because <sighs> Pakas can still play like Razor. Yeah, I was gonna say like with Razor and TA in pool, you do have to be careful. Radiant team pick. Lash. Okay. Where's this van? You're picking the lash, so <laughs> this means you want to protect your van, right? Uh, I think it could also mean that we found an answer to the chat. It might not mean they want to protect the van so far because if you are heroic, uh, giving remaining. your carry that last. End all be all pick here. Could be exactly what they need. I mean, K1 is a hell of a carry. Giving him 24, whatever he wants, not a bad idea. Does mean they have to pick up an off lane here for Divi Llama, not knowing what he's playing in Parker. He could get something that needs responded to. But what is left for the Llama? Really? Like Centaur? Mars? Yeah, both are good heroes, but. You could. You could hide because right. You could what? Aaron. Your voice just cut. Oh, sorry. You you auto dispel. You'll you know if you get oh. pulverized and take too much damage. Dying crack and shell we're, we're off. That also that does it. That does the same exact thing. You cannot burst that guy. Mm. And this that is could a could just be the K one hero. Yeah, this is K one hero. I think because this is like. Yo, do you really want to pick Slark now? It's very good against the Abaddon, right? Do you want to pick yep. it against our Lash? Our Ink Swelled Lash? Okay, do it. Pick it. I dare you. Yeah, they're not buying this. I like Lina against the Lash. Outranges the Lash with damage and right clicks. You can out nuke the Abaddon. Do you think we'll see another one hit Abba? Oh, I'd like to see one of these insta kills. <laughs> I mean, not insta kill, but I have a fantastic. It feels like an insta kill. I have a fantastic question for Pat that I need to ask. Mm. Is that your real hair? You have fantastic flow with them. Five seconds remaining. Who are you talking to? Me? You? No, My not hair? The fish? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you have fantastic flow. Thank you, Ace. That's all I needed. <laughs> okay, okay. Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's nice to see the, the nice messages in the chat, I'll be honest. We got a lot of chatters in here, guys. I think we have uh, eight or 9,000. We'd love to see the positive feedback in there. I hope you guys are enjoying these games. That's our first three-game series I think we've seen together. So this is definitely an exciting one for us. We've seen some close games all over. We, of course, had the 80-minute slap fest uh, with Heroic and Midas Club. This one has had its own fun given to us, and well, it's all coming to a head here. The K1 Abaddon 
getting picked up at the very last moment. Well, almost last moment. But we still have yet to see what is Divine Llama playing into the potential Lena carry. Gotcha. I'd like to see a Lena carry. But yeah, I think Slatims can also play the hero. Especially if you think about the lane against the, the Lash. Ten seconds remain. Hmm, they're banning the TB and the Wind Ranger. So they're not really buying this Lina carry. I can get that. I mean, there's not a whole lot left that lanes well into the Flash Racks. Lina just like the, the goat. Yeah, if you have the Lina ready, you just play the lane on the mid. There's no reason to not do that. I suppose you could pick something else that's a, a mid carry flex. I like the ban out of the corner, I suppose, because it does kind of go to different places. But at this point, the only other mid and carry flexes left are going to do the exact same thing as Alina. So I don't think you're really diversifying yourself. Isn't still Razor the pick here for Boom? Ah! Uh... It's, it's weird to imagine Pakas playing Razor, but yeah, I kind of like the idea. Dude, they drafting off to. Oh no, he's always been drafting. Damn. Yeah. He's just clicking the buttons. We don't know if he's the real captain. He deafened everybody else on the team. He's the only one that's making the decision. Dire team pick. If they wanted to have input in the draft, they would have become captain. Razor. Hey, good call, Ace. Razor on okay, board. Okay, okay. Now just pick the butt seeker. Let's go. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, so that would be an interesting one, I'm sure. Do you want to play the Abaddon as a carry Ten here? Because okay, if you put it as an off lane, he might get trashed by the Razor Five on the direct three. matchup, lane matchup. And if you play it as a carry during the game, you might not enjoy yourself too much. So. It'd be a drow pick. That hero got buffed. I think. Oh, Magnus! But who's Whoa. playing the Magnus? Davai Lama? It's not K1. Davai Lama okay. is playing the Magnus. Magnus here. Abaddon. Okay, you empowered the Abaddon to yeah. offset the damage stolen from the Razor. Okay, okay, okay. True. I think the biggest part is that now you have something to stop once Pekaz does get on top of ABBA, because it's going to happen. You go in with the RP, you stop it dead in its tracks, uh, and, and that is going to be well needed in fights. You can steal the static link on Rubik and take the damage back. True. <laughs> okay, man, this is going to be an interesting one. Pakaz playing Razor, at least he got a pretty set. It's not like that <laughs> ugly razor. I thought I know, a lot of different razor. ways to say of saying this. It looks like a bionicle. Yeah, I love the mm -hmm. The sword. This is still a fine lane. Uh, since they do have the gen here, if you have the movement speed on razor, sometimes you can get yourself in a position by where Magnus either. Goes back towards his tower and like still takes the link and you get damage, or he like dives towards your tower and breaks the link, but <laughs> then he still has lost some of his damage and he's nowhere safe. So and it's not a great matchup, of course. This is still something that is playable for the madness, why they did by long. But I think Razor will still have the opportunity to come. Through. So I think they really need to just block some camps so the chant can't get good grips. Mm. As long as Chan doesn't have good creeps, I think Magnus can play with the Shockwave. Rubik can drag some creeps here and there. Good point, because last, last time we saw survive. this, there was double Harpies, right? Like, that guy ran down with the double taser. That was Don't insane. mention this. <laughs> double Harpies should not be a thing. That was so disgusting. Yeah, okay, we'll sip it out. Zero... It didn't get the craziest nerfs on Chen. Uh, I believe it was nerfs to his E. Yeah, so the bonus armor is less, and it has a mana cost, which those two things are definitely, like, big. And then the also movement speed slow. 
uh, also. That's pretty much it, though. So I don't think this so hero had drastic changes. It was definitely the way that you move your creeps around the map uh, that would made this hero. Hello, Pandita. Love your name. What's the best way to win against the Sven? <laughs> Just kill him instantly. Don't give him a chance. Play this a game. Chance. Analog gets the first blood. It's going to be huge for the lane. I see a courier moving already. I wonder the if this is analogs. <laughs> oh, there we go. Completing the wand. Bring yourself into this mid lane. Yeah, that, that, good. that's good. Against Alina, you know that she's gonna be spamming some spells to secure Eclipse. They will block the wave, they will push into the Razor Tower. Are they gonna get the. Yeah, okay, they get the oh. range creep. Nice damage. They've done this a few times. Afraid. And Heroic is one of the teams I've seen do this the most, where they either try to kill the first wave before it even hits the tower, or they want to block the wave underneath the enemy tower. Of course, yeah. on Dire's side, very hard to block the wave tower. Killing the ranged creep is just a better way uh, instead of just blocking the camp, because the, the wave is going to push, because there's yep. no ranged creep. This way just mm. secures... Oh, he's gonna drag waves, yeah. Oh, penitence. The melee creeps, they want it. <laughs> Look at the Valoma, making sure yeah. that the camp is gonna be blocked. Dyer's top tower is under attack. So. Panda is. <laughs> he's just this right clicking. So much of this damage has been the right clicks from him. Scoville has to step up now. He's not winning this trade. He's only doing this and trading so much HP just so it doesn't happen to the Vyalama. And look at the gigantic plasma field as well. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, that's level 2 mag, but without HP now. Mm. At least the lane is coming to his tower. And Chan doesn't have a camp to pull. At least for now. Rubik is going to steal another one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he is. He's late, though. Oh. He wants to block the camp. There we go. <laughs> uh. If you keep the Chen out of the lane, the mag can, can find some farm. Oh, yeah. This keeps keep happening. Drawing do aggro, fun. getting some CS. <gasps> we didn't see a question mark WTF. After the last game. Oh, that I happened again? No, we didn't. Ooh. We should have. We should have seen it. I'm petty. I would have done it. Ah, oh, I can't believe. Yeah, that was kind of predictable. We, we, just, we just didn't think about it. No. Oh. My bad chat. My bad chat. Yeah, we, we should have typed it for them. We're actually in the lobby. Yeah. That would They're definitely get us on other games now. in the future. I'm all in for a question marks now. Mm -hmm. I won't miss any question marks <laughs> from now. Well, there, there wasn't any last game. I think there should have been, but there wasn't. This, this is going to be the only game where we may get some redemption and revenge all chat. Dire structures are fortified. Ooh, what's happening in the mid lane? What was that Ford? Oh. Okay, analog is just getting kind of beat up. I mean, the CS is once again pretty good for Radiant. Uh, probably Beast is getting a little work <laughs> down here. Flash Track is definitely getting worked as well. But it's more on the HP. This is Lina doing Lina things. Applying pressure. Honestly, Mag is top 2 CS in a lane where I don't think he has a great time. Yeah, because this is the only time he's laning. Now, he was just getting crypts under the tower. What on earth? Blood Grenade. Man. He thinks he has the damage. I mean, he's got a Wraith Band and a Bracer. He gets the kill. This is the most aggressive move I've seen in a bit. And uh, it works out. Wave under tower as well for Pekaz. And it feels like he's got to be a little careful. People keep underestimating this skewer damage. If you are a pro mag. Oh, nice. Oh boy, LSA connects, but here comes 
It's the Diabolic Edict. Schofield, yes, thank you. Takes the kill right out from Analog. Look, he got the first blood, okay? He doesn't need any more kill gold. Oh, Analog, you need help to win the lane? I see. <laughs> Dude, the absolute worst. Your support does nothing to help you get a kill in the mid lane and then takes the kill. <laughs> so sad. Long ink swell chase. Nice hero. Boss 5 Grimstroke. This is a pretty good game for him. He's got both the mag, ABBA that can go in. Even the Lesh track is, you know, he's up with people. Wait. A lot of fantastic small targets for him. Did Chen just send a creep bottom lane? Did he give somebody armor or something? Okay, yeah, he literally gave Knight armor. That is like the top, Ooh. like, Ooh. issue. Oh my goodness. What is this? Just, uh, Just an extra few armor from the other side of the map. Okay. I guess. Oh, this is good. No, this is... I, I, I think this is one of the most, like, not game-changing, I guess, but lane-changing that I've seen from Chen's, where you just have so much armor on these heroes. Very hard to step up to them, especially in physical damage lanes. K1 is just getting ran on down. Now the Harpy came in to no, help how, out. Of course. It's as if he's in the lane with you. Yeah, this is just a very nice ward from Boom. They knew that Grim Shirok was going mid, so... This was the perfect time of jumping the Abaddon. Mm -hmm. We've seen a little bit of this lineup before. We, we've seen the uh, Abba and the Lesh and the Chen. Unfortunately, they were all on the same team the last time we saw them, but... Uh, we do know if lanes continue like this, you could end up losing a good amount of towers uh, on that Shen lineup. I kind of want to go. It does connect, but... I mean, you certainly see the Lena doing that. Maybe they don't. Oh, he can't die. He can't afford to die again. Uh, I don't think any of the songs really caught him. Finally, the concussive shot will land, but it's going to be well too late. We're going to TP Lena back into the mid game. The DD doesn't really get anything accomplished for them. Yeah, this is the speedy Abaddon. Lash is running top. They have six on the rate. Oh! The... Divide? He doesn't Hours have TP on the Razor. Oh, the lightning! They get the kill. Divide actually gets it with all. 60 of his damage? Well done, Divine Llama. <laughs> that was a max range RP. Mm -hmm. I was not expecting that to hit. But it did. And now he's almost one level ahead of the Razor on full level. Uh, this is a pretty drastic change for the heroic side. I thought this lane was going to be much worse. They're making it work tremendously. And hey, Mag with a quick blink. Could be all you need to really protect your heroes from this Razor. Yeah. You, you kind of want to draw the attention from the away from the bottom lane, because the Abaddon is suffering. He's only level 5. This hero really needs time to go to go online. But look at this. Oh, there he is. Now with the Penitence, still level 5. No ulti. <laughs> Easy kill for Pakaz. Can't catch a break, man. At least they got the mid tower, but uh, yeah. this is not doing anything to the Abaddon. Yeah. He needs in power. He does need a power by his team. Words of affirmation. Mag went for the classic 2-2-2 two, two, two build. So only two points, oh! only power. The double sampler. Like that. Yeah, Lina just there to make sure the tower is not falling for free. Okay, where Hector is trying to get farm. I'm the mid laner now, guys, but he can't really be there because there is no tower. Mm -hmm. what? Where does he go? The right side, there's a lot of boom heroes. What really matters is, yeah, where... Where is this Chen? This Chen is going to farm up all your camps. Panda will continue to take the aggressive farm with it. 
And uh, even though on Radiant you got some very, very farmed players here, your uh, Leshrac and Divine Llama, it's the rich getting richer because your Abba is still struggling and he won't be able to fight, I feel, for a long time. Yeah, he needs at least the Echo Saber. He's going... AJ holding the creeps on the mid lane. Sure what for, but who's doing it? Oh, Rubik dumped right on through. Easy kill for Slottoms here with the Laguna Blade. Yeah, Lina is all over the place. And 10 oh. minutes ruined. Oh! Denied. My God. He's going right for place, a real right good time. BKB. Holy. Yeah, if you have BKB on Razor. There's not much Heroic can do, because they don't have physical damage just yet. Huh. Right now, I'm very surprised by the game state, but if we keep farming at this level... I don't know, I feel like Picaz could actually come back with the BKB and really work through one fight. I think they're just waiting for the dagger on the Vailama. To have it now, you can start looking for the place. You can go top first, get the tower kill, try to catch the Lina if she stay or stays around. Now they're gonna show the Skyrath lane instead. She is going for the right click on Sodom, so best build, in my opinion. Ah, uh, yeah. No, I, I like that as well. I think the nuke damage would have been kind of cool in this game. Uh, especially with the control that it provides. But I don't think it's necessary. You're going to have this, like, front-lining Primal Beast and Razor. No shame in taking it to that back line space. Radiant structures are fortified. So this tower is for free. Yeah, Boom do so. not want to contest to, to defend it. I mean, it's Abolesrak, man. I mean, you don't really have a say in these towers. This is a oh, good kill. RP dragged back into the Grimstro. Big kill. KJ actually picking up the kill. Analog wasn't able to get it for himself. But hey, you know, that's some shard money for KJ. We love that. Yeah, this is the game punishing you from playing. From your team from playing the Inkswell Grimstro. You just give him all the kills. No golds for the Lash. <laughs> uh, now, okay. now I get it. I was confused. What is happening there? Why is that creep running away? Oh, that's funny. I don't even know if that's like worth because you don't have any of the auras or like abilities beside you to keep those creeps. Like, sure, you take one away, but very weak scout. compared to the gen. I Yeah, no, that's true. Ooh. Oh, the silence. Oh. <laughs> They're just farming, man. They just be farming. I feel like the other yeah, SAGs we Magnus had were... Lineup. Well, like, they're both content. They're both content to keep on farming. Are scanning. Boom. Yeah, for now. But when they have... As soon as they have BKB on Razor, they just want to go. Because they will get outfarmed hard. Mm-hmm. Oh, and what? Oh, he doesn't know. Stunned up, double stunned up. Inkswell as well. Now linked. Now with the double lightning, look at that. That's a good amount of damage here. So use the Mystic Flare to try to take down Analog, but Knight still dodging around. I think he now knows that there is a ward. No. <laughs> they didn't see him. It's his. Oh, it's his? Yeah. I it's thought that was KJ who said that ward. Huh. Oh. That would be way more. That would be easier for them for us from heroic. Are scanning. Oh, they end up getting a D ward at least, plus the kill on the uh, the problem. I thought that double lightning would do a lot more, but I guess it was only the two of them, so it was literally just double lightning. Oh, 
Echo Saber complete. He needs a lot more. But he deals some damage now. He does, and he's got a lot to come back, like, really well. Yeah, he has to get the Manta, so he will silence people faster. I really like that build. Dude, Rubik is actually, he's building his own. My god. He, uh, he has his own army. Has two centaurs. He will keep sending one to the enemy triangle. Oh, okay, can you steal it again? Oh, give it! Give me the next level! Ah, don't kill him yet! Oh no, he doesn't want it. Oh, that's so sad. I wanted to see him get more. And yeah, it looks like he'll die because he didn't get another point. Oh no, he might live actually. Getting dragged on in. Divine Lama really wants this. The Dragon Blade will finally take him down. Laguna used already, but wasn't able to get any other kills out of it. So just taking down Killfield so They far. have RP. So I feel, yeah, no, I mean... They're just turning back onto Illich. The Vyloma doesn't even need to use the RP. Turn this around. Three gone yes. for only the Rubik here on Heroic. They wanted to get the Lina kill, but she ran out of vision. And he's going for the Brown Boots Glaive near. Mm hmm. They did not for the bots but later. It it's going to be a good one. They do need some extra control, it feels, but. Uh, you're looking at a team that will have a Manta on the ABBA and his shield. So even if you do manage to catch some good heroes, uh, two of them will probably get this build right away. So... What are the timings here for Boom? Because they will have BKB on Razor, but there's the RP. And Lina doesn't have BKB, she has Gleipnir, so she dies to the magic damage on the Lash. Mm, yeah. Feels like, boom, they are vulnerable. They need to, like, start a fight and kill a hero right away with the Primal Beast. And see what happens. Yeah. Then, just like this, you see Dovai Loma, oh. you find a way to just kill him. Bottoms. Started up with the Gleipnir, didn't want to toss out the LSA, actually didn't... He had the, a lot of his team behind him, but something spooked him. Yeah, both teams had a lot of teammates around. Analog blinked away. Schofield. Thanking for the boys. Again. Yeah, looks Found like them. it. Easy kill. But could be a tower or could be Roche. Mm. So... Eroic really want to give this for free? Like they want to, I don't think they know. But at some <laughs> point, you just lost a hero. They didn't come at your tier 1 tower, where else could they be? Only onto the wave, he's okay, just so farming. They don't know. This is a sneaky Roche. Sneaky snake. They definitely had ways to fight this with RP and Link Swell. Yes, they do, but they're not going to. Aegis to Slottoms. Well played for Boom. Well, Rogue are still trying to make something. They don't think that they're quite strong with the Aegis. They just think they have an extra life on Lena. That can't be so bad. Yeah, only if Boom spreads too much. Oh. Getting him with the trample. Like now, the Vile Lama did a lot of damage to himself with it, but they do end <laughs> up still getting the kill on the Primal Beast. Yeah, this is a common mistake. You get Roche, then you go separate ways, mm. and one of the heroes die. Happens every time. It's all about the uh, the individual confidence. You think you're safe, and honestly, I, I guess I wouldn't have expected a, a five-man smoke after we just got Aegis either. Yeah, like, why are they here? That's true. Who walks like that? It's the, the common Dota player cope. Oh, the power. Yeah, good stuff. I mean, he's farming quite well. Looks like Laguna in the mid lane here. Divine Llama will fall. After the nice abduction he had on Illich, getting some revenge here. Schofield in danger now. We'll try to toss back Illich, but uh, yeah, eventually he is just going to go down. Pulverize connects. Double kill for Slottoms. And boom, they are making work of the Aegis here. They'll even get themselves a mid-tower, it looks like. 
That was a Glipner Light Strike Array kill on the Magnus. Didn't need this BKB on the Vailama to play the fights. It's far away from the item, so they, they gotta find ways of fighting without, the, uh, without this. But yeah, Boom got the Aegis, so they should be the ones owning the map. Hey, get some tempo. Get out there. Let's uh, get some D.